This is the 2024 Hoosier Racing Tire SCCA Super Tour, the premier amateur road racing series bringing together the top sports car club of America racers from around the country. This weekend, for rounds 9 and 10, we head to the final resting place of the Confederacy and the birthplace of Wendell Scott, the first African-American NASCAR driver. We're just outside of Danville, Virginia, at the 3.27-mile, 17-turn circuit that Paul Newman coined Heaven on Earth. Welcome, everybody, to Virginia International Raceway. I'm Greg Ginsburg with Brian Bolanski, and we're going to bring you all the coverage here this weekend on Driver's Eye Live, as well as 89.9 on your FM dial here at the racetrack. And good morning, Brian, to a very, very chilly Virginia International Raceway. Good morning, Greg. Good morning, everybody out there from beautiful Southern California. Talking to you all live arguably the most important motorsports event happening in Virginia this weekend is, or actually close to Virginia, I guess technically you're in, in are we technically in North Carolina? We are about 30 feet in the North Carolina. <laughs> got it, got it, got it. But anyway, we are the most important race in the region this weekend. Forget about that thing that's happening over in Martinsville. We're having a great time this weekend and it is gonna be a great race. Starting out with our first race of the weekend, or our first race of the day, Formula 6. Formula 6. Uh, for Formula V and Formula F. And here is our racetrack. Here is where we are racing. This That's weekend. right, Brian. Let's take a look here as we jump out of the airplane, don our parachutes, and head down to Virginia International Raceway. Heaven on Earth, 17 turns, 3.27 miles. And it is a track which has absolutely amazing flow. One of my favorite racetracks uh, to not only lap, but also to race. Uh, you've got tight, challenging sections for smaller, low horsepower momentum cars better handling cars coming through the horseshoe at one and through snake also with the final corner down at hog pen and a steep drop and an off camber drop that you need to carry speed onto the front straight you also have the iconic now what i call oak treeless turn uh, <laughs> over at turn 12 uh, an incredibly important turn very similar to turn seven at michelin raceway road atlanta where we were a few weeks ago where you have to be able to carry speed because we've got the very long back straight the uphill back straight here that brings you to the roller coaster at turn 14. Uh, a very challenging racetrack for all cars, whether it be low horsepower momentum cars, high horsepower GT cars, you name it, this track has something for everyone. Yeah, and Oak Tree proved to be challenging last uh, yesterday for a lot of our drivers. We had a number of cars go off there for varying reasons and purposes. Uh, Whatever the reason and purpose, though, it was not the fast way around Oak Tree. Okay. So, all right, let's get to our starting lineup, Greg. We've got uh, two pace laps this morning because it's a little bit chilly in the area. It is. So they're giving everyone a chance to get their tires up to speed with one extra pace lap. But that gives us a time to leisurely tell you which order they're that's, starting. That's right. And by the way, I just I, I was just already my first gaff of the morning updated by uh, uh, by Ben Tyler, flag chief here, who told me that we're about 30 feet into uh, – into Virginia, not North Carolina. Okay. All right, let's run down the starting order. We've got the Formula Vs and a 10-car uh, Formula V field, uh, and then four cars in Formula F and Formula 6. We've got, uh, we're gonna go over the Formula Vs first. Starting 10th in Formula V uh, is uh, the number four machine of Brian Farnham. He's out of Medina, Ohio. Medina, Ohio, pardon me. Jeff Filipkowski is going to start ninth. Uh, he is uh, Jeff Filipkowski, and he is out of Mount Bethel, Pennsylvania. Starting eighth is going to be Mark Farnham. He starts seventh. He's in the number three machine, also from Medina, Ohio, driving a silver bullet. Then we've got Stephen Davis. Stephen's driving the number 80 Vortec. He's out of Danielsville, Virginia. And he then has Ray Carmody. Uh, Ray will be starting in seventh position. He is in the number 81 Mysterian. Then we've got starting six, Jonathan Weishite. He's in the JK Technologies XP1. He's out of Baltimore, Maryland. Then we've got Trevor Carmody. He is driving the number seven Zebra Paint Job Protoform. He's out of Horseheads, New York, representing the Glen region of the SCCA. Starting fourth is the number 52 machine of Mitchell Ferguson. He's out of Moore, South Carolina, driving a Porsche GB4. Donnie Isley starts third today. He is in the number 30 agitator. He's out of Fletcher, North Carolina, and your front row in Formula V starting second on the outside of the front row, driving the number 36 protoform out of Charlotte, North Carolina, Mike Lawrence, and your pole sitter today with a qualifying time of 2 minutes, 18.537 seconds. Driving the Silver Bullet FR5 from Medina, Ohio, it's Brian Farnham. 
Now let's take a look at the first four cars in the field. And Brian, as they go up through the S's, I only see three cars well, in the field. Because the fourth car is actually behind the Formula Vs oh. for some reason. Well, that should make things very interesting. Well, it let's, should. If, if they were all grouped together, let me tell you who it would be. Start, <laughs> starting fourth, driving the number 67 Formula 6 Scorpion from St. Louis, Missouri, Jack Walburn. Kevin Brumbaugh starting third. He's in the number 86 Formula F Van Diemen RFO2 from Gilbert, South Carolina. Then we've got Chris Smith starting on the outside, scheduled to start on the outside of the front row. He's in the number 57 Formula F Van Diemen RF. Double zero. He's from Lexington, South Carolina, and your pole sitter for the front group, and he is there in that uh, that orangish number 58 Formula Six Red Devil Arrow. It's actually a red car. Uh, you don't want an orange Red Devil. Uh, he is Corey McLeod. Hails from Charlotte, North Carolina. He had a qualifying time of two minutes, two seconds, 0.894. And getting word that the reason why we've got our other Formula F, or probably our other Formula 600 at the back of the field, Jack Walburn, is he, he spun on the opening pace lap. And the reason for the two pace laps here, Brian, were so these drivers could get their tires up the temperature yeah. in these very chilly degree, uh, very chilly temperatures here at VIR. Yeah, so, so the car in the back, though, is yesterday's Formula F race winner. That's the Chris Smith car. That's the white Formula F all the way in the back. Mm, so the, okay. the, the 600s are, are Oh, yeah, are the, yeah up both front. of the 600s are up there. Yeah, there they so, are. Um, I'm not quite sure if he just left the grid late, possibly. No, he uh, got, word, got word from the flag that he spun the car. Okay, so he spun the car. Well, that, that makes perfect sense. So yeah. uh, he'll have to work his way through the Formula V field. He shouldn't have any problem doing that pretty quickly. But uh, that is the situation here as we get ready to get this race underway as the first pack and, and the second pack, which is not too far behind, starts coming down through hog pen here. And uh, we are going to do 35 minute or 14 lap races today. So a little bit longer feature races today. And it's about ready to get underway here. First, yeah, and, oh, go, go ahead, Brian. I say first of eight races here for the race weekend or for the Sunday round 10 of the Hoosier Racing Tire SCCA Super Tour. It's about to get underway. Next time we see them, they'll be on the front straight. We'll have our start stand there. We'll be looking for a potential green flag. And there it is. It's in the air and already getting a little racy up front as they head down too wide, going down towards turn one for the first time. And here comes that second yeah. star party to talk about racy coming up over the over the the, the hill out of hog pen we had the formula v's already three wide it was pretty amazing started we've got a lot of brake lock up there going into turn one yeah definitely some brake lock up from one of the formula v's as they get through horseshoe heading down towards nascar now and that uh chris uh the chris davis i'm sorry the chris smith car being real uh, cautious here early on, not getting involved too quickly, but he'll make his way through that Formula V field really fast. Well, when you spin the car on the pace lap, Brian, I think the best thing you can be is cautious <laughs> here because, you know, there's that small chance you just don't have uh, the car up to speed. Yes, and we can see the uh, the Smith machine. Now, uh, Chris was our overall winner yesterday in that number 57 uh, Van Diemen RF00. And, uh, yeah, he's definitely taking his time, letting the Formula Vs uh, get in line as they are wont to do. I'm going to try to get past as many of them on the run uh, down to uh, the uphill S's. And we can see here he gets past two of them. Uh, he's going to have a much better opportunity as he goes into uh, or goes onto the back straight out of out of uh, the oak tree turn. And, uh, you know, in the, that move that he made, he actually, as he slotted right in between a couple of the Formula Vs, you know, he basically acts as the same little drafting partner that the other Vs do to, to kind of pull those uh, final two cars along. So we'll see here as uh, they get out, but already um, up at the front of the, the field here. It looks like the Formula Vs got a, a, a pretty quick start through the uh, the early portion of the course. They're actually pretty, still in pretty close proximity to our uh, overall leaders, uh, to Corey McLeod, to Kevin Brumbaugh, and uh, our, other 40, our other Formula 6 driver, Jack Walburn. Right about 40 degrees at VIR this morning. Gription is the story of the morning. Who has the grip? Who doesn't have the grip in these early laps? And uh, it will be the difference, at least early, once the tires get up to speed or get up to temperature. Uh, should not be too many issues here. You can see Corey McLeod pulling away just a little bit already in that Formula 600. It was McLeod and Smith yesterday up front all day in this group. 
yeah, and a great battle between the two of them. And Smith has now cleared his way, Brian, of the entire Formula V field. That is the, now the second place car overall as uh, Smith gets by his, uh, his in-class competitor, Kevin Brumbaugh. So move Brumbaugh now back to third overall, second in Formula F. And interesting to see there on that opening lap, even as Smith was being you know, very um, uh, gentlemanly, we'll say, uh, in working with the Formula V racers through the first half of the field, he was still your fastest car on course. Uh, yesterday, uh, we mentioned that Smith took the win in Formula F, and he did have a great battle on track, not for class position, but uh, for overall with Corey McLeod in Formula V yesterday. Uh, Donnie Isley was your winner, took the win over Mitchell Ferguson with Mike Lawrence rounding out the uh, rounding out the podium. And uh, already we're seeing Mitchell Ferguson looking to uh, to move up in the order. He's currently your leader in Formula V. Now, what did happen, though, as Smith came up through Formula V, he did split them up just a little bit, it looked like. Yeah. But it, now it looks like the front four or five cars in Formula V have been able to get themselves back together here. And uh, there is a, you know, the, the whole front of the Formula V field is now together. So it wasn't any harm or foul as he no. came through the field. And we're now back to what we hope will be as good a Formula V race today as we had yesterday. That's right. So, and uh, we're seeing now as uh, Chris Smith takes over the, uh, the overall lead with McLeod. So you'll notice there that most of the Formula Vs, Brian, also as they come through the oak tree turn, are avoiding that exit curbing as much as possible. The painted Why is that? curbing, well, because the painted curbing still has a lot of morning dew yeah. on it and frost on it, and it's probably the the most slippery portion of the racetrack. Uh, here as we see some brake lock up and I think we're going to see a lot of that as uh, drivers are just trying to judge how to best modulate the brakes on what is still a very cold racetrack uh, here at VIR early on this morning as uh, that was Kevin Brumbaugh in that number 86 Van Diemen uh, right. locking the brakes up a little bit. Yeah, you know, the track could also be a little dewy as well. I yeah. mean, it, it got cold last night and I don't know if it froze last night. I don't see any frost on the pumpkin there. Well, like there, there was quite there was quite a bit on uh, on the track surface okay. and, and certainly on the grass uh, about an hour ago, and a lot of it just with the sun having uh, having risen uh, has melted some of that off. But right. still, again, very very slick if you go off course. Yeah, I was going to say that's going to really make it important to keep people on the racetrack because if you get off onto that grass, you have the opportunity to slide, 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 and those guardrails come up really fast when you have no way to slow the race car down. That, that is right, and I think we just saw that going down in the turn one. Thankfully, no guardrails. It's just the Dan River about 300 feet <laughs> over the over the end of turn number one, but I think one of our Formula 500, uh, pardon me, Formula 6 machines, they're uh, very, very late on the brakes. And uh, I think we actually, or actually that might have been, that might have been Brumbaugh in the 86 car, uh, judging by which car we see at the back of the field. We'll, uh, we'll track that here. Yeah, this is, you know, it's funny. We've got the Dan River down there. So when you get in the car, you take your helmet, you take your gloves, and you take your snorkel with you just in case yes. you have to get down that far. <laughs> so uh, we hope that that doesn't happen this weekend. 12 laps to go here of this, uh, of this 14 lap scheduled race. And uh, this is the slowest race group out here this weekend, but uh, but it should have no problem getting to that 14 lap marker as long as we don't have to see any full course yellows here. And you can see that Formula V pack's actually starting to catch up to the, the slower Formula 600 car of Jack Walbrand there. Just keeping ahead. This is one of those split starts we had, Greg, where the, the Formula Vs actually were a little tighter to the field than maybe they would have liked to be because yeah. they could still catch the back here, but I don't think they'll catch them. It looks like Walbrand's keeping a good pace there. There's your Formula V field coming through right there. It's Weishite and Heisley first and second right now. Weishite wasn't really part of the discussion much yesterday. He had a problem early on, right? That is, that is correct, uh, Jonathan Weishite. He spun on the very first lap yesterday, uh, dropped him back. He ended up finishing fifth in class. And uh, yeah, just simply, I mean, he had lost the draft very early right. on. It was just wasn't in a position uh, to work his way back up through the field. Yeah, draft incredibly important. If you want to stay in that front pack, once you lose it, you're basically toast for the rest of the day. 
and that is what happened there. So he is leading the way right now with uh, actually Michael Mitchell Ferguson came across first this time by Ferguson, Isley, and Weishite. Mike Lawrence is in fourth in Formula V, and then Stephen Davis is in fifth. Didn't take long, uh, Greg, for Chris Smith to make his way through the field. He is now your overall race leader. He's got a nine-tenths of a second lead over Corey McLeod. Kevin Brumbaugh is in third overall, second in Formula F. And then we talked about Jack Walbrand. He is in second place in Formula 6. Yeah, and we'll see because uh, McLeod just ran the fastest lap so far. And again, we're only working lap number three right now. He, uh, he ended up gaining back about uh, just about a half second on McLeod. The gap had been about a second and a half, actually, 1.45 seconds on the previous lap. And uh, we're starting to see, again, both of these racers, I think, uh, uh, get to grips with uh, the, uh, with the conditions grip. of the race course. Yes, <laughs> get, get, getting to grip with the lack of grip uh, here on the race course. And we can see again where uh, the, the 58 machine starting to close things down a little bit. But let's, uh, let's uh, try to get a better view at the front end of this Formula V field, Brian, as they're coming out of uh, Oak Tree now. And uh, you see here that uh, pretty much the entire V field from Ferguson, Isley, Weishite, Lawrence, uh, Stephen Davis back to that uh, white number seven machine, the the seven of Trevor Carmody. He's you know back about 10, 15 car lengths now, probably just on the the outer edges of the draft. We'll see if he can get back uh, back up there. He yesterday had fallen out of the draft and was uh, after the the front of the pack had started battling. He was able to work his way uh, back up. Ended up finishing fourth just off the podium yesterday. And we'll see if he can. Uh, repeat that again today is uh, everything everybody here seems to be very closely matched although Carmody wow big wiggle from Carmody as he pushed wide through hog pen you know and that is I I always found Brian that last corner hog pen to be probably the most challenging one on the fourth here I mean I oh there are always issues you know with I'd say guts and the line you take going through the uphill S's for example or coming through South Bend but coming down through hog pen there is a small compression at the apex, uh, and uh, you get the, a small bit of camber, and then it flattens out on you. And if you miss the apex, or if you fail to get on the throttle, it's very hard uh, to carry speed onto what is still a very long front straight here. Long front straight and very important front straight because it gets you down to that, that horseshoe corner, and you need to set up right for that. And of course, we see lots of brake lock up there throughout the early stages of this race. Here comes our Formula V field here, up through Snake. Then they hit to the uphill S's. They're not careful. Mitchell Ferguson's gonna start to pull away just enough or he's gonna be out of the draft. He is not quite that far out front yet, but he seems to be pulling forward just a little bit more each lap and then they catch him here going through the uphill S's. So it's a kind of a accordion type thing going on here. Some cars faster in some sections, other cars faster in other sections. But like we had yesterday, the four, for, first four or five cars all nice and packed up together. So if we can keep that packed together, Greg, the last few laps of this race could be really, really interesting. Very interesting indeed. So, you know, of course, yesterday we only had a 25 minute timed race today you know, that those extra 10 minutes can, well, frankly, given uh, the pace that we're at here, can seem like an eternity, especially if you are trying to, uh, you know, in Formula V, trying to uh, calculate when you are going to make your moves, when you are going to challenge for positions here, because you, again, in Formula V, I think the racing is a little different. Again, you, you make these uncontested passes because you don't want to give up momentum, uh, knowing that you probably want to be in second or third or maybe even fourth going into the roller coaster on the last lap, you know, but we still have almost 25 minutes to go here. We've been at it now for about 12, and it's, it's very difficult to think that far ahead in a race like this. 
Yeah, it seems like you know sprint racing. It's a short race. Nobody, you know, it's not. But but it's it's not short when you're in the race car, Greg. Right. <laughs> it seems like it can be an eternity, especially if you're in the lead and trying to keep everybody off your off the your back bumper there. Now we're two by two going into turn three, and now they string back out the single file before they get there again. Yeah, so Weishite ran a little bit wide coming through turn one, Brian, and there are many different ways through the horseshoe uh, there, what is you know essentially a double apex turn, and uh, you can either go turn in early, push wide coming out of two, and then straighten things up to go to NASCAR. Maybe turn in a little bit, uh, turn in a little bit later, and kind of square off the exit. And we saw Weishite push all the way out there, uh, and uh, Mitchell Ferguson in the black number 52 car for a moment, uh, as he turned in a little bit later, was able to pull right up alongside him. Uh, but uh, but we saw Weishite with the position as they went into NASCAR. Three cars not with us this week. Uh, this race we had yesterday. Jeff Flipkowski uh, blew a motor yesterday, so he's not here. And both of the Farm Farnham cars had some damage yesterday. So a few fewer cars today, but we still have that nice pack up front to make things really interesting here. Nine to go here in our first race of the day. Corey McLeod, now your race leader overall. Chris Smith is in second. Kevin Grumbaugh is in third. He is in second place in Formula F. And then Jack Walbrand still out there doing his thing in Formula 6. He's in fourth place overall. Two by two up the hill of Madison Avenue. And Brian, as they're coming up, thing, uh, we just noticed going into the Oak Tree turn, we talked about how all the drivers were avoiding that curbing on the exit. They're now starting to use that a little bit more, able to open up that corner, carry more speed on exit. And we saw this time by uh, Mitchell Ferguson, Donnie Isley, carrying maybe a little bit more speed out of that uh, very important corner than our leader, Jonathan Weishait. And as they came through uh, the top of the roller coaster, I believe we just saw Donnie Isley in that number 30 machine jump to the lead. Not that it's going to matter much because they are all bottled up here, Brian, as they come onto the front straight. Yeah, it does look like it was Isley coming down the hill. Is it still Isley across the line? No, it is uh, Mitchell Ferguson across the line in first place. And now they're four packed up, two by two, five cars. So it's it's just kind of roll the dice and see which number pops up every time yes. they come across the start-finish line. Yeah, in, indeed. And and that time coming out of uh, uh, coming out of Hogpen, out of the final corner, they were three wide coming down the front straight. And, of course, they get things straightened out. Uh, as they go into turn one here. But uh, as they continue to do that and as they continue to jockey for position, uh, that is uh, going to be a big help to Trevor Carmody, the trailing car in this group. And Brian, you can see he's now made up the bulk of that, say, 12 to 15 car lengths that he uh, was behind the lead pack now. He's coming right up behind Stephen Davis in the number 80 machine that even, you know, as the cars go three wide, you know, a couple hundred, uh, maybe a hundred feet up the road, it puts a big enough hole in the air that the uh, the cars behind should be able to uh, to use that to their advantage and suck up. Right, and Stephen Davis actually probably needs Trevor Carmody right now to catch him, so the two Agreed. of them can work together and catch up the back and, and continue having that be a five car pack. So. That's good news for Stephen Davis. Maybe not good news for all the guys up front, uh, but here they come through the oak tree again. And you were absolutely right, though, Greg. They are starting to track out a little bit more there. They got to stay off the mud, though, because that mud can be really slick this morning. Well, well, in the with the Formula Vs with those very narrow little tires, they don't want to go and uh, extend past the uh, the little no. apron on the outside of the paint curbing. There, uh, it will uh, it will suck that car right in. It, it's a, it's a guaranteed way to lose any kind of momentum onto the back straight. Yeah, we've had seemingly a lead change almost every lap here uh, at some point in time with this Formula V field. So they are enjoying their their race here with all five, six cars now in that pack. We're at seven to go, Greg. I think this is the perfect time, halfway, to do a call to grid and take our first break of the day. Absolutely, Brian. And real quick, before I uh, make the call to the grid, I wanted to remind everybody that is here at Virginia International Raceway uh, that if you'd like to take your streetcar out on track today, we can definitely accommodate that for you at lunchtime today. We are going to have uh, touring laps for charity, that charity being the North Carolina Region Scholarship Foundation uh, that is uh, has been created in order to help uh, high school students moving on to college that want a career in motorsports. It is a tax-deductible 
donation required to get on track. And you can find out more at ncrsccasf.org. Attention in the paddock, attention to the paddock. First call to the grid for Spec Miata. Spec Miata racers, please head to the grid. Your race is next. Spec Miata racers, please start heading to the grid. All right, so we're going to take a quick break. We'll be back here in just a few moments with more racing action from Virginia International Raceway. Hoosier Racing Tire is proud to be the presenting sponsor of SCCA Super Tour. Hoosier's mission is to be the dominant customer-driven provider of tires to race teams domestically and internationally. At Hoosier, we know that our success is dependent on how well we meet our customers' expectations by providing the safest, most reliable, high-quality race tires that put you in the winner's circle. For more information, see our trackside support personnel or the local Hoosier Racing Tire dealer near you. Or contact us at HoosierTire.com. Hoosier Racing Tires, truly tires designed for champions. Haggerty is the official and exclusive insurance partner for SCCA and provides affordable off-track insurance protection for motorsports vehicles while in the paddock, in transit, in storage, and at the shop. Haggerty also provides guaranteed value coverage and even has protection for your trailer. And did you know that SCCA members can save 5% on insurance through Haggerty? Haggerty, let's drive together. Learn more at Haggerty.com. Bravo Trailers is the exclusive trailer partner of the SCCA. Owned by longtime SCCA racers, Bravo Trailers work better, load easier, and tow better because we build them with racers in mind. Visit BravoTrailers.com to see your new trailer in aluminum or steel. For over 25 years, championship winning drivers and teams have demanded Hawk Performance Motorsports brake pads. Now you can have their advanced technology on your daily car, truck, or SUV with Hawk Performance Street products. With the improved HP Plus pad for the hybrid street and track field or Super Duty pads for tow vehicles, their all-new ER brake pad designed to take on even the longest race, and their all-new high-performance brake fluid. Hawk has all your braking needs covered. Visit hawkperformance.com and like them on Facebook or Instagram to learn more about the Hawk Performance Advantage. Hawk Performance, what's stopping you? It's the 2024 Hoosier yeah. Racing Tire SCCA Super Tour. The premier amateur road racing series bringing together top SCCA road racers from around the country. The Hoosier Super Tour visits some of the greatest tracks in North America, showcasing each of our 28 car classes. From production to GT cars, prototype to formula cars, the Hoosier SCCA Super Tour packs a ton of wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing action into every event. Back here at Virginia International Raceway for the Hoosier Racing Tire SCCA Super Tour. That's the Formula V race you're looking at right there. Up front is Mitchell Ferguson and Mike Lawrence pulling away a little bit from the four cars behind them. Those cars, Jonathan Weishite, Donnie Isley, Stephen Davis, and Trevor Carmody. Of course, it's really helpful, Greg. We've got one blue car and four black cars. So yes. that, makes, that makes our life just wonderfully simple here as we try to call these cars as they come yeah. around. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And, anyway. and it wasn't yesterday. I thought one was orange. The one was, actually the orange yeah. car. The orange car is the one that I think blew the motor. And so yeah. well, whatever. Anyway, uh, yeah. So <laughs> now we're finally seeing uh, eight laps. Uh, now nine laps into this race, that uh, Ferguson and Lawrence starting to separate out and maybe don't need to concern themselves themselves as much with that second pack of Whiteside, Isley, Davis. Uh, and also Trevor Carmody as well. And we just saw there where Mike Lawrence took a quick look to the inside on Mitchell Ferguson. And I think now is when the games might start beginning. Um, you know, although, you know, again, we're just past halfway in this race. We're now working lap number nine. Uh, we've got uh, five laps remaining. And the, the Ferguson and Lawrence, they have to be careful. As strong as the draft is in Formula V, they don't want that second pack to be able to engage again with two or three laps remaining. Well, and Isley, if you saw, also made a move going up the hill to get into third place, and he, I think he also realizes that those front two cars are checking out, and he, he needs he to wants do whatever to go. he can to go and go now to catch up, and so he's like, I'm not wasting any more time here in fourth place. I got to get around and try to catch up, and I think he also sees those two cars dicing a little bit and realizes that is an opportunity for him to get back up to that pack and maybe drag the other four cars with him so 
four to go, Greg, and this will start to get interesting here very quickly. Corey McLeod is our race leader in Formula 6. Chris Smith is our race leader in Formula F, uh, followed by Kevin uh, Brumbaugh and Jack Walbrand. That's the part of the race that we're not really watching, although right there you see McLeod and Start watching Smith it. <laughs> coming up behind the Formula V field. This could also make things interesting as these two cars try to get through the what is slower for them cars, but still all cars racing for podium positions. Yeah, and it, you know, we saw what Chris Smith did at the start of the race as he started from the very back of the pack and was uh, uh, very kind to the Formula V racers, let them get their race underway, and was very careful in where he picked the spots to pass. I think as he and Corey McLeod are going to be coming through, he's probably going to be a little bit less concerned about it, although they may come up on a lot of this Formula V field at perhaps the perfect time and the per perfect place as they're coming out of the final corner, not the final corner, you call it the final corner, out of <laughs> out of uh, Oak Tree. And uh, as and uh, we already see the two of them making a pass. It was very interesting though, watching Corey McLeod who turned in very, very late for uh, Oak Tree to try to exit on the inside of the track as far away from the Formula Vs as possible. And uh, it looks like there they clear the entire Formula V field and I think cause very few problems for our two V leaders, Mike Lawrence and Mitchell Ferguson. Well, and you also have to remember that neither of those cars are really racing each other. Right. Because uh, they're in separate classes and they're 57 seconds ahead of their closest competition in class. So so they had the, the luxury of being able to do that without having to worry about their particular races. So good on them. Coming across the line this time, Mike Lawrence in first in Formula V, followed by Mitchell Ferguson. So. That hasn't changed. Those two guys still up front, swapping around a little bit, but those, Indeed. those are still your two guys up front. Yeah, and, and Brian, I think the, the 14 hundredths of a second uh, separating Ferguson and Lawrence at the line kind of belies what's going on because those two drivers were basically side by side as they came out of Hawk Bend and worked their way down the front straight. It was indeed a drag race to get down to the front straight. Uh, we had Ferguson uh, to the outside, so he actually had a little bit longer distance to run because there is a little kink here in the uh, front straight just ahead of the start finish line. And for these lower horsepower, higher momentum cars, if you can straighten out that uh, that run down to turn one and knock a couple feet off, it could be worth a tenth or maybe even 15 hundredths of a second. Yeah, but then that the slower, the lower horsepower cars with this big trudge up the hill of the climbing S's, and then they get a little bit of a reprieve when they come over the top of the hill with a little downhill towards the oak tree there. So, and there are your race leaders just having basically a beautiful Sunday drive, Greg, as they. Uh, they're going to be at the coffee and, and cafeteria here in about 15 minutes, able to have a little breakfast, and it'll be, uh, you know, it's like it's like coffee with cars here at VIR. That's, that's right, hard parking. All there right. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm still waiting to see the hydraulics. All right, so uh, here we go as uh, we, we see our two, uh, two overall leaders, our Formula 6 and Formula F leaders, uh, crest the top of turn 13 going into turn 14. And uh, let's stay on this for one second. I'd love to see how uh, Corey McLeod handles the oak, or probably the hog pen turn, the final corner there. And you see they're both kind of a, avoiding the apex. And I think, and it's not maybe not so much an avoidance, but very difficult at times, depending on how you turn the car in, to get the car all the way down to the apex. It does somewhat drift out a little bit there. Well, look at how much of a gap they've already gotten yes. past the front of that Formula V field. They are absolutely hauling the mail here with uh, three to go. And McLeod still pretty wide open. Now he's pulling away also from the um, from that uh, from the Chris Smith car as well. So. Yeah, and Brian, the next time our leaders come by, Corey McLeod and Chris Smith, they should see the white flag with one to go. Hey, wanted to uh, to uh, point over to our associate producers in the chat today, and this is really neat to see. Uh, Greg Reeves, who uh, said he had a great day yesterday, sounds like he's going to be going to uh, one of our SCCA competition licensing schools uh, nice. next week and plans on racing with the SCCA next year. So uh, thanks so much for uh, sitting in and enjoying your Sunday, hopefully enjoying your Sunday 
here with us, Greg, and uh, of course all the other other folks. We've got our our regulars here. We got Brian Straczynski. We've got the uh, uh, Jeff Vallejo. Jeff Vallejo is here. He was also a Formula V racer. Good to see him as well. Saw him up at uh, Summit Point Raceway uh, for the majors last week. Uh, Michael Berger here as well. So uh, thanks everybody for joining us here early on this morning. All right, Mitchell Ferguson popped out to try to make a pass going from Snake to the Climbing S's. I'm not sure if it was completed. We'll take a look here, and it does look like he was able to make that pass. You can tell those two cars are part. The, uh, the Lawrence car is the dark-colored car with the meatball number plate. So that's how I'm trying to find and talk about the two being a little bit different here. Attention in the pad, attention in the pad. Expect me auto racers. Please head to the grid. Your race is next. Spec Miata racers, please head to the grid. And now another pass for the lead. It looks like Ferguson, uh, Lawrence was able to come back at Ferguson here going up the hill. These guys are having a hoot up front. I'm sure oh, yeah. they're going to get done. And as long as they keep it clean, they'll high five at the end of this race and talk about this one for quite some time. Well, and it looks like, you know, this battle for uh, the last step on the podium in Formula yep. V, uh, pretty darn exciting as well between Weishite Isley and Steven Davis. You know, again, Isley and Davis, such long-time long Formula V racers, both here from the southeast and have put in many a lap uh, racing against one another. I think they probably know each other's strategies backwards and forwards as we see the white flag in the air for our Formula V leaders. That's right, Formula V across the line. This time, Ferguson is your race leader going into the final lap. And then right behind him is Mike Lawrence, Donnie Isley at the moment in third place. But Jonathan Weishite, uh, Jonathan Weishite's right there as well with Stephen Davis. Yeah, big break lock up there going in the, into a turn one, or Brian, as uh, we had that, uh, I don't want to call it a last gasp attempt because there are a couple other places where these Formula Vs uh, can Could set gasp. up passes here, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, you know, but what that has done now is we can see there it has opened up a pretty yeah. big chasm uh, from third back to now what is unfortunately a battle for fourth and for fourth and no longer a three-car battle for third. As uh, we're going to check out here, that is, so I think that is Donnie Isley now sitting up in third position. Uh, in the number 30 machine. I think it's Weishite and Steven Davis there that uh, uh, one of them outbroke themselves there going into turn one, tried to go a little, a little bit deeper than the other. Yeah. Here comes your Formula V cars and, and I'm sorry, Formula 600 cars. There is your race leader, McLeod, and then right behind him, Chris Smith, as they come down for the final time through hog pen for the weekend. And the checkered flag will be in the air now, and it will start to wave. And Corey McLeod's going to take the win. Jack Walbrand's going to be in I'm sorry, Chris Smith will be in second. Now let's take a look at this Formula V race as they come to the finish line up Madison Avenue now. About five more corners they have to negotiate before they come on to the front straight for the final time. Not a whole lot of space, not a whole lot of really good passing opportunities here. It comes to the point where it's going to be a drag race here at some point. And right, oh, there they are coming through roller coaster now down hog pen. That car in front, I believe that's Mitchell Ferguson with Lawrence right behind him for the final time. Donnie Isley looks to be in third place. Checkered flag is in the air. Here they come to the line for the final time. Let's see who is it going to be. Is it going to be Ferguson or is it going to be Mitchell across the line? It is Ferguson first, uh, Lawrence second. And it looks like Jonathan Weishite will have a great recovery from yesterday to come back to take the last spot on the podium. And not only a great recovery from yesterday, Brian, but a great recovery on the last lap as uh, he works his way back up. As they came to the top of the roller coaster, Weishite had gotten back up to the rear of the number 30 machine of Isley and was able to outdrag him 
down the front straight, got a better run out of the final corner, out of Hogpen, and was able to take the last step on the podium. That moves Donnie Isley to fourth. Stephen Davis will finish fifth. Trevor Carmody will finish in sixth. Ray Carmody will round out the Formula V field in seventh. In Formula Six, of course, our overall winner, Corey McLeod. Jack Walbrin will finish second, a lap down. And in Formula F, it's Smith taking the win, Kevin Brumbaugh finishing second. Well, that is going to do it for our first race of the day. We've got seven more ahead of us. Uh, it's uh, four races before lunch, four races after lunch. We've got a great day of racing ahead. Let's take a little break. When we come back, race number two. This is always a good one, Greg. Spec Miata's next. Congratulations to all of our top finishers at this weekend's Hoosier Racing Tire SCCA Super Tour. Your results earn you a place in our podium celebrations with trophies and Mazda sparkling wine. And since top results also earn contingency payouts, now's the time to file. Contingencies through SCCA are now digital. Visit my.scca.com to begin your claim. Brands like Hawk Performance offer significant amounts to drivers and pay through fifth position.
You're looking live at Virginia International Raceway, Alton, Virginia. We are in round 10 of the Hoosier Racing Tire SCCA Super Tour. Round 10, race two, spec me out of Greg. You've got the starting lineup. That's right, and if you if you look closely enough, Brian, you can probably see me waving out one of those windows over there in the <laughs> North Tower. All right, let's run down the starting order here for Spec Miata. We had 31 driver set qualifying times this weekend. Here it goes. Starting 31st, driving the number 77 Miata from Hilton Head Island, South Carolina, in the Salty Dog Cafe machine, it's Ellie Gossett. Edward Zemek it will start 30th. Edward's driving the number 38 machine. He's from Schenectady, New York. Then we've got Tom Gone. Tom is driving the number 49 Spec Miata. He's from Winmore, Pennsylvania, representing Reliable Racing. Then we've got Robert Garrison. Robert is starting 28th. He drives the number 06 Sports Car, Sports Car Parts Limited machine from Knoxville, Tennessee. Zachariah Rosenberg starts 27th. He's driving the number 171 machine. He is from Englewood, North Carolina. Brad Williams starts 26th. He's in the number 71 car. He is from Harrisonburg, Virginia, driving the peak environmental Mazda Miata. Bob Mueller starts 25th. He's in the number 99 machine. He's from Marco Island, Florida, driving the street side classics car. Brad Childs, dude bro racing, man. Dude bro <laughs> racing. He will start 24th today in the number 87 machine. He's from Jupiter, Florida. David Henderson's going to start 23rd. He's driving the number 28 machine the bdl motorsports car from falmouth virginia statesville north carolina brings us the qhs roofing mazda miata of eric gerchak he starts 22nd jeremy butts is going to start 21st he's in the number 69 cvet west windsor customs machine from darnstown maryland amy mills starts 20th she's in the number 14 flat out motorsports mazda miata with aaron wilhelm starting 19th he's in the number 97 AC Autosports Machine, he's from Burlington, Connecticut. Then we've got Joseph Tobin, starting 18th. He's in the number 18 car, the Monroney Labels Machine from Hilton Head, Hilton Head Island, South Carolina. Noah Harmon's going to start 17th. Noah's in the number 192 Autotech Machine. He's from Orlando, Florida. Bobby Gossett will start 16th. He's in the number 44 Salty Dog Cafe Mazda. He's from Hilton Head Island, South Carolina. Ethan Ayers starts 15th in the number 78 Machine. He's from Weatherby Lake, Missouri. Starting 14th in the number 148 IAG Aero Group machine out of Miami Springs, Florida. Frankie Barroso, Max Ehrlich, he's from New York, New York. He's going to start 13th in the 81 machine. Olivier Piatek in the Tiles Max car. He's from Duluth, Georgia. He starts 12th. Starting 11th in the number 176. Spec Miata, the Dirks Motorsports machine. It's Matthew Dirks. Starting 10th, driving the number 6. Nick Bruni Racing, E Street Racing, Mazda Miata from Arlington, Virginia. He's your co-national champion this year. It's Nick Bruni, starting ninth, driving the number 92. Flat Out Motorsports, a Mazda Miata from Mended, Massachusetts, Nick Leveroni. Zach Ehrlich will start eighth. He's in the number 180 machine. He's from New York, New York. Skip Brock Jr. starts seventh. He's in the number 61 Mazda Miata, the OPM Autosports machine. He's from Birmingham, Alabama. Stuart McAleer is starting sixth. He's in the number 143 Flat Out Motorsports car. Hails from Glasgow, Scotland. Chuck McTutis starts fifth. Chuck's in the number 66 OPM Auto Sports Machine from Little Mountain, South Carolina. Brendan Henderson, Brian Henderson's going to start on the outside of row number two. He's driving the number nine BDL Motorsports Mazda Miatis from Fredericksburg, Maryland. Fredericksburg, Virginia, pardon me. Ethan Goulart starts third today in the number 80 SCDA Track Days Crook Speed Mazda Miatis from Shelton, Connecticut with your front row. Yesterday's winner, Danny Stain, driving the number 39 Danny's Angels Mazda Miata. He hails from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And your pole sitter today, driving the Tech Sport G-Lock Brakes Mazda Miata from Arlington, Virginia, with a qualifying time of 2 minutes, 15.722 seconds, Rob Hines. I love how we get into our systems of doing things, Greg, and you're reading off the starting grids, and you keep mentioning that these are Mi Mazda Miatas, and then I keep reminding myself, they're all Mazda Miatas. That's correct. <laughs> That's why it's Spec Miata. We've got 30-some cars here getting ready to take the green flag here for 14 laps of racing, some extreme talent on the front row of this group with Rob Hines and Danny Stain, two of the best we've got out here, and a whole bunch of talented cars right behind them as well. So this ought to be interesting, Greg. It was a good one yesterday. I don't imagine that it will not be a good one today. So Yeah, indeed, Brian, as we get ready for the start here at VIR. All right, here they come down for the green flag. It is in the air, 31 cars side by side going down towards Horseshoe. 
for the first time. Will 31 go in and 31 come out? Well, we will know here. Oh, big brake lock, lock up there going into turn one. We'll see if 31 cars go in and 31 come out. It appears that at this moment it all looks good. Still side by side going through one, heading now towards two. Side by side, it looks like Rob Hines able to take a little bit of a lead out here early. And it is the blue car out front. The second place car behind him, or the third place car behind him, looks like was able to slot in. And then, and then there's Danny Stain right behind him. So that looks like it's Ethan Goulart in second and Danny Stain in third. Yeah, and Brian, an amazing race yesterday here in Spec Miata. All came down to the last couple of inches as Danny Stain takes the win by just a couple thousands of a second over Ethan Goulart. Uh, Rob Hines trying to push Goulart to the win yesterday finishes in third and I think he ran his fastest lap of the race and enough to put him on the pole for today's race uh, here on the last lap of yesterday's race as uh, the entire field works through. It looks like uh, Robert Garrison in the 06 car did not make the grid today so I think we've got probably 30 racers out there today. So here's the dynamic though you've got uh, you've got Heinz and Goulart who are teammates. Oh there's a car that went off on the left there into the I don't know if they made it all the way to the tire wall, but definitely one no, up on the and, left. There. And they've actually rejoined as well, Brian, nice. and uh, made it back out on track, coming down uh, driver's left here, uh, down the front straight. It's a very difficult entry there, especially on cold tires, coming up over the rise through turn uh, 11, going into turn 12, as you've got a little bit of camber, and then the track flattens out and then actually goes off camber slightly before you turn in for Oak Tree. But uh, no harm, no foul there, except uh, well, the harm is a loss of about eight positions. The difference between yesterday and today, Greg, is that Hines and Goulart teammates, Danny Stain didn't have his teammate with him yesterday, but today, different story. Chuck Matutis is now up into that pack there working with Stain. All right, and uh, looks like some big changes there at the front uh, with uh, Goulart uh, maybe moving to the lead here. Indeed, it is uh, Goulart for the moment, but uh, definitely under attack already coming down into turn one. As they come across the line this time, it's Goulart, Stain, and um, uh, McTutis right behind him. Stain trying to make the move going into one, possibly. And it yeah. looks like he may have completed that move. Oh, and we've got a car that's gone wide, and that may be Chuck McTutis oh. that just went wide coming out of turn two. So McTutis had had that great start, Brian. He started in fifth position, had worked up to third, and you said it, that... Uh, that Goulart would have to worry about Danny Stain getting his drafting partner up there, but now we see where McTutis is going to drop back to about ninth position. Should mention Goulart and Rob Hines, they are not teammates. Oh, no. Uh, no, they are not. Uh, Rob Hines, he's going to probably be looking either for Nick Bruni or Brian Henderson, the two cars that are directly behind him right now. Got it. Got it. Well, all that stuff I said then earlier, forget about it. <laughs> yeah, but what that does is it pretty much leaves our current leader, Ethan Goulart, uh, out on an island there. Uh, Brian, he I was going to say he does, or pardon me, he's not our leader. He's running in second place right now. It's not right. that he doesn't have any friends. I think he might have more friends right now towards the front of the pack uh, than Danny Stain does, uh, certainly. Uh, but, uh, you know, Goulart, I don't think, can count on any assistance or help as this race goes on. Right. The question is now, will Goulart and Stain kind of work together? Because they're both kind of out on an island by themselves, and they could be really good dance partners here for uh, the early parts of this race. So there you see Stain, then Goulart, then Hines as they come up Madison Avenue. Car off at the exit of 14 there, or 12 there, uh, but was able to come back on yeah, the and that, and that was a, a very strange, strange exit to the racetrack for a moment as he went driver's left driver's right and back on that car down at the end. Should mention also, Brian, uh, that uh, there were some issues yesterday, I think, in this race group and also in a, in, in a lot of race groups with drivers using that dirt patch on the exit of the Oak Tree turn to their advantage uh, and running a little bit wide so they can straighten the car out and hopefully get a better run down the back straight. Uh, if drivers do that consistently, there is a there is a chance uh, that they may be penalized at the end of the race. So I think we're going to probably see many more of the racers just going to the to that curbing and no further. All right, there's our four cars heading out towards turn one again, side by side into turn one. It looks like Goulart tried to make the move on Stain. It's hard to tell with the glare out that far whether or not that move gets completed. I also see a car out there in the grass. That looks like a car 
um, uh, at the exit of, or between one and two there. Oh, it could be behind the barrier. That could be a course worker's car out there. Yeah, I think that's a course work. Uh, actually, that might be David Henderson in the 28 car. Got it. Uh, that did not complete a lap. And I know Henderson had had some account. Uh, that's the father of Brian Henderson. Might have had some issues. Uh, Might have had some issues uh, towards the end of the qualifying session on uh, Friday. So we'll, we'll continue to watch that. Um, in addition, I think the driver that had the issues coming out of uh, Oak Tree a lap ago was Edward Zemek in the number 38 car out of Schenectady, New York. All right, now coming down the hill towards turn towards Oak Tree, that's Goulart out front in that silver car right behind him, Stain, and then Hines. And then about four or five other cars there right with them, just a slight little puff of dust there. Everyone trying to stay off that uh, that dirt there to the exit of it. That's a little bit better uh, Exiting on turn 12 there, up the hill through uh, and towards Madison Avenue. And so Brian, you know, yesterday, during yesterday's race, well, when we got another car runs wide there over the tabletop coming out of turn 11, you know, we saw Nick Bruni work his way up into the top three during yesterday's race, and he dropped back at the very end, towards the end of the race, ended up finishing back in eighth position. I got word last night uh, that uh, the alternator in that car failed, and uh, it was basically running on what little battery power there was left at the end of the race, and he just wasn't making good, uh, making good power there at the very end. All right, we've got ourselves, what is that, an eight or nine car train up front. So still lots of action to go here. Lots of cars still in the discussion here at 12 laps to go in the early stages of this race. Little four cars, those first four cars of Goulart, Stain, Heinz, and Bruni seems to be just slightly faster than the rest of that pack. But uh, they are all still pretty much packed up in there, and they all uh, come together going into one. And Brian, I, we may have a car off um, over right by the bridge. It's the number 99 car of Bob Mueller, uh, the, uh, the Marco Island, Florida driver. And uh, I think he's right by the crossover road uh, over just at the entrance of the S's. So uh, when these drivers come through five and through the snake, um, they're gonna likely encounter a local caution a little bit further up the road. We now have two distinct packs going, that first maybe eight, nine cars. The second pack, the leader of that pack is Chuck Batutis. He was right up into second or third place on the second, first or second lap when he went off exiting turn one, exiting the horseshoe and fell all the way back to 10th place. He is leading that pack, trying to pull that pack up, but uh, not having a ton of success bridging the gap at the moment. There are your leaders here coming through Oak Tree again. Goulart happy with where he's at, and then you've got Stain and Hines right behind him. And then just a little further back is Nick Bruni. Of the, the different colored cars as they come streaming through when you've got a big group like this snaking their way around this beautiful uh, this beautiful racetrack in Virginia on a nice crisp Sunday morning. I will say, Greg, now with this group of cars, so many out there, any kind of do that may have been on the racetrack is probably gone at this point. Yeah, it, it definitely. And, and and certainly we're seeing more and more, you know, we saw it towards the end of the Formula V race, more and more racers using the painted curbing on the exit right. of Oak Tree. Obviously, the spec Miatas, we're starting to see where the outer edges of those tires are actually now extending into the dirt uh, on exit as these drivers, and you're seeing a lot of uh, whiffs of dust and dirt uh, coming out of turn 11. The, uh, the, the first part of the right-hander uh, there by Oak Tree as drivers are trying to open up those corners. Uh, so they are certainly starting to feel a lot more comfortable uh, with the grip levels on the pavement here as the temperatures have now come up to about 45, 46 degrees. 10 laps to go. Your leader, Ethan Goulart, followed by Danny Stain, Rob Hines, Nick 
Bruni, Brian Henderson, Stuart McAleer, Stanley Brock Jr., Skip Brock Jr. is in seventh, Nick Leveroni eighth, Zach Ehrlich is in ninth, Chuck McTutis is in 10th, Max Ehrlich is in 11th. The yeah. Ehrlichs have usually a huge fan club in our chat. They, so. they do. Uh, that's uh, Zach in ninth and Max in 11th right Yeah, yeah and, and Brian, I'm actually watching the driver that is right between the two and splitting the distance, and that is right. Chuck McTutis, who had been running up at the top three uh, early on in that black with the yellow hooded uh, OPM Autosports machine. Uh, McTutis now has split the difference between those two drivers. He's kind of acting as a bridge between our front pack and, our, and the next pack by. Uh, as uh, he's there, but starting to make very good pace. He's actually running uh, now about two tenths of a second faster than Zach Ehrlich ahead as he's trying to get back into that lead pack. And I think seeing cars too wide going into 13 and 14 uh, just ahead of him there as uh, we saw Skip Rock Jr. Nick Leveroni battling it out. And now the other OPM Autosports car of uh, Stuart McAleer there as well. It's going to help bring uh, the Matutas car back into that forward group. Yeah, we've got that happening. Now we have a five-car pack and, and a, a, five, a second five-car pack. So that nine-car pack up front has split itself now, and that's what we're looking at. You can see probably about 25 or 30 car lengths now between those two packs. And that's good news, I guess, for McTutis, but not for the rest of those people in that second pack because they have pretty much lost the draft of that first group at this point in time. There's a car going off a little bit wide there, but it's able to keep it on the racetrack, or at least get back on the racetrack there. We also have that front group seems to be uh, breaking up just a little bit and the first three cars are now pulling away. That is Goulart Stain, and it looks like, I believe Nick Bruni, no, not Nick Bruni, maybe Brian Henderson is now in third. Yeah, if we take a look there, that is the uh, the silver number 97 of Henderson sitting in third, and both uh, Bruni and Rob Hines have dropped back just a little bit uh, there. Henderson kind of the bridge between the two pairs ahead uh, Goulart and you, you said it early on Brian that uh, you know at the moment Goulart certainly with with no uh, teammate with St and Stain with his OPM teammates much further back in the back those two drivers starting to work together yeah they have no choice I mean at some yeah. point you just have to decide to go with the guy who's got you there and and uh, that is what's happening at this point in time Henderson trying by himself to bridge that gap from uh, third place up into second, and that's going to become harder and harder the more uh, the more Goulart and Stain work together. Last time, the distance between those uh, second and third place cars was about two tenths of a second, and it has, doesn't appear to have closed up here on this lap at all between second and third. Might have even gotten a little bit wider. And Brian, we talked earlier about uh, uh, about what the ramifications might be of running wide coming out of the Oak Tree turn. Just heard uh, the corner station down at Oak Tree calling in Brian Henderson for exceeding track limits, the number 97 car. Again, I don't know uh, what, if any action will be taken by race control and what would, uh, uh, what would trigger action to be taken, but something for us to watch and be cognizant of as this race continues on. Yeah, it, it typically it's, you get one maybe free one and then they start going after you but uh, uh, no official word is how they're going to adjudicate that this weekend but they have asked the drivers to stay off that section and told them that there could be penalties if they don't so we see again just as has been it's kind of like rinse repeat rinse wash repeat here lap after lap those first two cars of Goulart and Stain pulling away just a little bit but Henderson is now seemingly a little bit closer this time by as they go into turn four. All right, and it's, as we watch the pack back behind Bruni and Hines, uh, where we've got uh, uh, Stuart McAleer uh, running in six, Skip Rock Jr. in the, uh, the uh, yellow and black OPM machine has gotten around Nick Leveroni. So Leveroni dropping back into seventh. So uh, the two, the two flat-out motorsports cars split up there, but what I'm actually watching now is Chuck McTutis uh, who just got around Zach Ehrlich. He is part of that pack just uh, uh, that we are following there, and he's at the tail end of that group right now, right behind the, the, uh, right behind the, the Leveroni car. 
And uh, he, uh, again, I would not write off his pace that he may be able to get up there and eventually help Stain. Um, there was, uh, for a number of laps, they were trying to get the number 71 machine down the pit lane. I think they had some issues. Brad Williams in the 71 out of Harrison for Harrisonburg, Virginia. I think some issues with his window net. They got him down the pit lane. He has just now rejoined the action, Brian. Coming up on eight laps to go, Greg. Why don't we do a call to grid, take our break, and then when we come back, we will hopefully have green flag action all the way to the checkered flag. Girl, uh, oh, that's call to grid. I won't toss it just yet. Attention in the paddock, attention to the paddock. First call to the grid for race group number three, GT1, GT2, GT3, GTX, American Sedan, and T1. Race group number three, GT1, GT2, GT3, GTX, American Sedan, and Touring 1 racers, please head to the grid. All right, let's take a quick break. We'll be back here in just a few moments with more Spec Miata action. For over 25 years, championship winning drivers and teams have demanded Hawk Performance Motorsports brake pads. Now you can have their advanced technology on your daily car, truck, or SUV with Hawk Performance Street products. With the improved HP Plus pad for the hybrid street and track feel, or Super Duty pads for tow vehicles, their all new ER brake pad designed to take on even the longest race, and their all new high performance brake fluid. Hawk has all your braking needs covered. Visit hawkperformance.com and like them on Facebook or Instagram to learn more about the Hawk Performance Advantage. Hawk Performance, what's stopping you? As the official fuel partner, Sunoco has been helping the SCCA and their drivers perform at their peak since 2001. Mile after mile, race after race, Sunoco has trusted the fuel over 50 racing bodies, including the SCCA, SCCA Pro Racing, Trans Am, NHRA, and NASCAR. As the largest manufacturer of race fuels, they're passionate about helping drivers and teams take the lead. To find race gas near you, visit SunocoRaceFuels.com or call Sunoco at 800-RACE-GAS. Bravo Trailers is the exclusive trailer partner of the SCCA. Owned by longtime SCCA racers, Bravo Trailers work better, load easier, and tow better because we build them with racers in mind. Visit bravotrailers.com to see your new trailer in aluminum or steel. Get more bang for your buck at summitracing.com. Choose from millions of in-stock parts from over 1,500 named brands. Parts for racing, street performance, trucks, plus tools, accessories, and more. Shop anytime, anywhere with the Summit Racing app. Mazza Vineyards is the exclusive sparkling wine for podium celebrations at the Hoosier Racing Tire SCCA Super Tour, SCCA Runoffs, and Tire Rack SCCA Pro Solo. Celebrate your racing weekend with Mazza Vineyards and learn more at enjoymazza.com. If you like what you see today, become part of the action by joining the Sports Car Club of America. Whether you want to drive, flag, organize, officiate, have fun with cars, or meet 65,000 enthusiast friends, SCCA is plenty to feed your motorsport obsession. Ask someone trackside how to get involved or visit scca.com for more information. All right, we're back here at VIR. Spec Miata, race number two of eight today. We're keeping an eye on this front pack. And Greg, we're also keeping an eye on the cars in fourth and fifth. They look like they're making a little bit of progress here. Yeah, indeed. And, and what we're seeing now is that Rob Hines and Nick Bruni have swapped positions. Uh, Brian, that Bruni has been the faster of the two cars. And I, I think what they've done is they put Bruni in that pusher position uh, to try and make up ground. And it seemed to work on the previous lap. They actually made up a half second on the pack ahead. That's right. Nobody puts Bruni in a corner. Come on now. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, no, well, not for long. Uh, so they are making up ground. But, but what we see here is on this side of the course, as they come out of turn five and snake, uh, the, the lead pack, which Brian Henderson has made his way back up to our uh, lead pair. So it is now a trio here at the front of the pack. Uh, they then seem to open things back up. It's, it's here on the back straight. It's down through the roller coaster where Hines and Bruni make up ground. And uh, now running very wide, coming out of Ooh, the oak tree turn, Skip Rock Jr. And we've got a car that's gone off Brian, coming out of turn 11, going into turn 12. Pretty hard hit on the wall, it appears. Yep. 
hard hit, but look at the resilience of these spec Miata's car. As hard as that car hit the wall, it's now getting back on the racetrack. Now, I don't know how far it's going to be able to go, but uh, definitely got the chance to get moving. So at least we won't have to worry about a full course yellow in that situation. Looking back at, oh, now we have a big car going off there. That's Skip Rock Jr. that has just gone off. So Coming all, uh, all over at turn position. top 14. Yeah, and he was in that in that group with McAleer and Leveroni and Zach Ehrlich. And he rejoins, loses three positions. So with six laps to go, I think people are starting to understand you got to get to the front here if they possibly can. Uh, look at the gap now. We were just talking about how it's getting closer between third and fourth place. It is wider now by a big, big margin. Uh, almost two seconds now between Henderson and Rob Hines. So anything they gained on the last couple of laps, they somehow lost over this last lap. And it is a big, big gap now. But you yeah, and uh, oh, I would ahead, say, Greg. Brian, we, we got a little bit more word on the car that uh, went off at turn 11. That was Joe Tobin, uh, driver of the number 18 machine. Uh, he's the one who had some issues on the restart at, of yesterday's race. Uh, and you notice now as we take a look at that shot, he has managed to get his car off the tire wall and move. But just now we have another car that runs wide through there. There's a lot of drivers starting to find challenges. Uh, yeah, that's the replay right there where Tobin went off. And uh, you'll notice there was also a car in the yeah. grass, driver's right, uh, Brian, before turn 11. Yeah, a lot of something going on there. Action is getting to be fast and furious here. Both of those cars able to continue on. So that uh, a very, very interesting sight there. And you can see him hit the wall really hard and then move on, so. Yeah, yeah and of course that other car in the grass, that was a car that just had issues coming out of South Bend, uh, not involved uh, with the Tobin car going off. Now let's go back to live action now. And you can still see some dust in the air there. So yeah. there are your front three cars. And then second, uh, third and uh, fourth and fifth place, Rob Hines and Nick Bruni. So that's Goulart, Stain, and Henderson right there up front. And then the blue car is Hines, followed by Nick Bruni. And then a bunch of other cars trying to bridge the gap to fifth place. Attention in the paddock. Attention in the paddock. Second call to the grid for race group three, American Sedan, GT1, GT2, GT3, GTX, and Touring 1. Please head to the grid. Race group three, GT1, 2, and 3, GTX, American Sedan, and Touring 1. Drivers, please head to the grid. So with five to go, Greg, last uh, yesterday in this race, if I remember correctly, it was Rob Hines who made a move on the second to last lap to get into first place. Yes. And then Danny Stain returned the favor on the last lap. So I'm sure that everyone involved remembers how that scenario played out. And that will be in the back of their minds. They get into the closing laps here where being in first place might not be the best place to be. So the question is, for me, Greg, is Danny Stain just happy to be there? And could he have made a move already? And he's just waiting for the right time? Uh, or is Ethan Goulart just got a tiny bit more oomph to be able to stay out front here? At the moment, our top 10 is Goulart, Stain, Henderson. That's your first three pack. Then you've got Hines and Bruni. That's that second group of cars. And then all the also-rans from sixth place back. McAleer, Leveroni, uh, uh, Ehrlich, uh, Zach Ehrlich, Chuck McTutis, Frankie Barroso, and Skip Rock Jr. is in 11th. Max Ehrlich is in 12th. Noah Harmon, who also ran up front yesterday in the, in the Spec MX-5 race, he is in 13th. All right, Brian might have a little bit more information now. Uh, can't say for sure about what we're seeing over at the uh, at uh, Oak Tree, uh, but Ethan Ayers, the uh, driver of the number 78 machine, it's been reported that he's been dropping fuel or some other fluids uh, from that vehicle, and uh, they are going to be, they're going to try to black flag him and get him off the race course, but that has uh, possibly been uh, contributing to some of the grip level issues that we've had somewhere in some places around the course here, uh, sure. as uh, the field here is uh, working lap number 11. Right, next time by, there'll be three laps to go. These front three cars seemingly happy to just kind of hold station here. But at some point, it's going to be go time. Brian Henderson seems to be the weakest of the three cars up front. He's always coming back just a little bit and then coming back forward. So I don't know that he has enough to make that final lap move unless, he's, unless he ends up pushing Danny Stain. Yeah, and, and of course, during yesterday's race, we saw where uh, uh, he, he 
fell back uh, about mid-race. He did finish just off the podium in fourth, but it was a pretty distant uh, fourth yesterday. You know, but I think, Brian, as long as he can stay in touch uh, going up to the top of the roller coaster where he has been for the last four laps or so, uh, he can certainly make things very difficult for, if not Ethan Goulart, for Danny Stain uh, there at the top of the hill. Definitely. Now, won't be in the mix here at the end, but Noah Harmon just turned the fast lap of the race overall with the 215.785. He is back in 12th place, but a nice strong lap from Harmon here as we get into the closing, the closing moments of this race. Yeah, and things, you know, we were talking about how Hines and, and Bruni, it didn't, you know, on certain portions of the course, it didn't seem like they were making up ground. And uh, that is starting to play out over the last couple of laps. Both Hines and Bruni have been running almost identical lap times uh, to our top three racers. They just do not seem to be moving forward at right. all. Um, interesting to note uh, is that that sec, that pack that's behind them, McAleer, Leveroni, Ehrlich, and now McTudis, who's sitting at the tail end, uh, they also not making up much ground to that pair just ahead. And again, you can see the distance of about uh, 20 car lengths. Uh, they would really need a heck of a draft, uh, which they don't have in order to get up to both Heinz and Bruni. Not that it would be for, uh, for a podium position as McAleer runs wide coming out of South Bend. It is an absolute chess match here with three laps to go. Everybody is kind of calculating where the best, where their car is a little better than the, the guy in front and maybe the guy behind them as well, wondering who might work together here. And at the moment, it is uh, it is right now up front the Goulart Stain pair. They've been together the whole time, but that uh, that friendship, that that momentary friendship they've had for probably 12 laps will become uh, no longer a friendship when we get to the final two, I am sure. Well, I mean, we saw we saw yesterday where nobody had, well, Ethan Goulart had a friend in Rob Hines. Oh, and Skip Brock Jr. for the second time today goes off at the top of 14, uh, breaking issues there, perhaps some break not a back uh, that causes problems, but he's going to lose more positions uh, there as Brock had fallen back to 11th. That should put him, I think, behind Noah Harmon and also Max Ehrlich and uh, drop him back into 13th position. Not so lucky for Skip Brock. Yep, that is true. Here comes our leader style. There's one slower car that could become part of this discussion here as we come up now with two cars to go. I don't know if they'll get caught, but now that lead pack of three did seem to, uh, one car ducked out, but might have been Henderson. But now he's right back in line. I just, maybe he came, just got a little wiggle coming off of turn, uh, turn uh, two there. But he was able to get it back into control and get back in line. Now that may have given just a tiny bit of opening for that group of, of Bruni and Hines to catch up just a little bit, but they're not making a whole lot of progress, like you were saying, Greg. It seems to me like we've got a basically a three-horse race here for the podium here. And as long as none of them, all of them stay on the racetrack, the only question is which horse is going to be on which step. Yeah, and Brian, as we see here, coming through, uh, coming through the uphill asses and in the south bend, you know, playing out exactly what you said. Brian Henderson, a little bit off the pace through there. He relies on uh, the compression there and braking to get up and pull right up back to the rear, though coming out of turn 11. So he's right on the tail of our two leaders as they come out of Oak Tree and can use the uh, can use the draft going up to 14. Now, of course, they're going to see the white flag this next time by. I'm wondering what Ethan Goulart, as our leader decides to do because he was uh, he was in the catbird seat yesterday sitting third when Rob Hines was the leader Danny Stain was running second Stain popped to the outside to go side by side through 13 on Goulart on the last lap and uh, Stain pretty clearly I think has that uh, that strategy in mind here today as well as he just stays right behind Goulart does not make a move as uh, they come down the roller coaster for the second to last time. Well, I'm sure Goulart has that whole situation burned in his memory, watching that whole thing play out in front of him yesterday, knowing that the same exact thing could play out behind him today. So here they come. White flag is in the air right now. It is Goulart, Stain, and Henderson. The question is, will that be what it is when we get to the checkered flag? 
Jones right, and I believe this is probably the first time we've seen Ethan Goulart in this position this late in a Super Tour race. He started on the third, I believe the third row, side by side with his former national championship champion father, uh, Elvin Goulart, at this past year's national championship runoffs. You know, so he knows how to drive a car quickly. It's just a question of whether or not this very young man has the racecraft here with the old Wiley veteran. Danny Stain sitting right back behind him. All right, here they come through the snake. Still no move for the lead or for second place yet. Where is that chance? Where is that move? There is Stain right on the back bumper of Goulart. We're going to see them here. Still Goulart and Stain coming up the hill of the climbing S's. And look at this as Henderson is probably further back than he has been in the last 10 laps, Brian. Now about four car lengths back as they go into South Bend. He may not be able to draft up to our two leaders as Goulart already getting very defensive coming out of South Bend, center of track, going into turn 11. Really savvy car placement there by the youngster. Well, there we go. Henderson's no longer part of the discussion. He has gone wide. It is now a two-car race for victory here. It is Goulart and Stain. We'll see who is going to take it here with about four car corners to go. Got a couple of cars, slower cars, that probably won't be part of this discussion if they do get involved. Hopefully, they'll just slide out of the way and not be part of it. Oh, look at this. Could it be really, yeah. really hairy coming over the hill here? Yeah, it's oh. going to be very hard to slide out. Oh, and the 38 machine goes wide. Goulart has to take to the dirt. Danny oh. Stain stays on the grass. Oh, my gosh. Don't know who came out first, but it looks like Stain is in first and Goulart right behind it. Goulart really ca getting cost there as he comes down the hill through Hogpan onto the last time. That's probably going to cost Goulart the win here. Looked like almost a corkscrew at Laguna Seca back in the day, but here they come across the line. It's going to be Stain first. Goulart's going to hold on for second. I think Rob Hines will be your third place finisher here. Wow, and, and that is the exact same finishing order as yesterday. Hines came up to third place, so it's Stain, Goulart, and Hines at the line. Yeah, so same finishing order as yesterday, Brian. Uh, just as that incident was unfolding at the top of the roller coaster, just past the apex of 14, we had the three E Street Racing teammates. We had Hines, we had Henderson, and Nick Bruni all jockeying for position. They were three wide going into what became an incident zone, and uh, finally, Hines and up with the point there he comes home with the last last podium paying position finishing in third for the second day in a row but what uh, I, I don't know how to explain that that was the 38 of uh, Ed <laughs> Zemeck had the the uh, corner workers at turn 14 they had the blue flags out for he and I believe that might have been Brad Williams in the 71 and uh, Zemeck just you know he got too deep into the corner rear end walked on him and he was just in a very bad place at a very at the very wrong time all right here's your top 10 at the end of our second race danny stain ethan goulart rob hines that's your podium brian henderson finished fourth nick bruni fifth stuart mcaleer sixth charles mctutis comes back up to seventh place at the end zach ehrlich finishes eighth uh, Frankie Barrasso, ninth. Noah Harmon, good job, up to 10th place here. And that's how that worked out. Attention in the paddock, attention in the paddock. Final call to the grid for race group number three, American Sedan, GT1, 2, and 3, GTX, and Touring 1. Race group three, GT1, GT2, GT3, GTX, Touring 1, and American Sedan Racers. This is your final call to the grid. <sighs> Take a... <laughs> Take a breath. All, all right, right Brian, gonna, let, let's, gonna, let's do this. Yeah. Let's take a break. I think yes. so we can all take a break so or take a breath so all of our viewers could take a breath. And we'll be back here in just a few moments with the Ground Pounders at Virginia International Raceway where you're watching the 2024 Hoosier Racing Tire SCCA Super Tour. My customer experience with Mazda has been absolutely fantastic. I'm probably not the richest person out here and they're extremely reasonably priced and you can buy parts easily and it's a class that fits both, both what I want from a racing standpoint and what I can afford. We got into Mazda's uh, largely just because it's a fantastic platform and Mazda Motorsports has some of the best support for the grassroots racer in parts and technical advice and everything else so they, they make it easy for us to run these cars.
We're back at Virginia International Raceway, getting ready for race number three. This is our big bore group with a whole bunch of hot, fast, loud race cars. We've got the starting lineup here. It is Greg Ginsburg. It, it, yes, it is. Oh, and <laughs> that's you. And, and uh, I've, I've already got the answer to the one pressing question that we have. We'll talk about that in just a moment. All right, uh, we have in this big board group again a split start. We're going to have our GT cars up at the front. You can see them back behind the safety car right now, behind the pace car. And then we're going to have our touring cars coming out a little bit later. They're going to be behind the second pace car and uh, they will take the start separately. Let's go over the Touring and American Sedan cars first. Uh, starting fifth in our Touring and American Sedan group, driving the number 97 American Sedan Mustang, it's Jason Smith. James Jost will start fourth. He's in the number 14 American Sedan Ford Mustang. Gary Crook, he's gonna start third. He's in the number 41 Touring One Chevy Corvette. That's a beautiful white C8 Corvette. Danny Richardson, our American Sedan champion for this year he is going to start second he's driving the number 22 chevy camaro and your pole sitter for touring one and for that second group is going to be mark bowden he's driving the number 46 mercedes amg gt4 let's move over now to our gt cars starting 22nd on the grid driving the number 21 gt2 sunbeam tiger gary johnson starting 21st driving the number 47 gt3 mazda rx7 stacy wilson with Joe Christensen starting 20th. He's driving the number 74 GT3 Honda Civic. Then we've got Joseph Petkes. He is starting 19th on the field. He's in the number 7 GTX Audi S3 TCR car with Blake Wilson starting 18th. Blake is driving the number 55 GT3 Mazda RX-7. Starting 17th on the field. Driving the number 95 GT2 Porsche 911 Cup car, it's Chuck Hurley with Richard Grant starting 16th. Richard is driving the number 30 GT1 Chevy Camaro. William Moore will start 15th. He's in the number 33 GT2 Chevy Camaro with Patrick Utt starting 14th. He's in the number 49 GT2 Chevy Camaro. Then we've got Ray Mason. He's starting 13th. He's in the number 82 GT2 Ford Mustang with Ray Ramirez in the number 43 GT1 Porsche 911. He starts 12th, starting 11th, driving the number 19 GT2 TA2 Chevy Camaro, the white number 19. It's Tony Ave starting 10th, driving the number 15 GT2 Ford Mustang. Jack Stanford starting 9th, driving the number 13 GTX Porsche GT4 RS. It's Woody Richard. Then we've got Stuart Black. He is driving the number 27 GT2 Chevy Corvette. Starting 7th, driving the number 50 GT2 Sunbeam Tiger. It's Ta Tiger Tom Patton with Ann Doherty starting 6th. She's in the number 4 GT2 Porsche 911. Gian Bufamonte is going to start 5th today. He's in the number 17 GT2 Ford TA2. Uh, Ford TA2 Mustang with Austin Jurz starting fourth. He's in the number 131 GT2 TA2 Camaro. Starting third, driving the number 132 GT2 Ford Mustang. It's Barry Bowes and your front row today. Driving the number one GT1 Dodge Challenger. And starting second overall is Ed Romito and your pole sitter. Driving the number three GT1 Lamborghini Huracan GT3 with a qualifying time of 149.066. Michael McAleena. All right, as I come down the hill through Hog Pen, we'll be getting our green flag here in just a second. Now, while you were reading the starting lineups, Greg, the blue car right in the back uh, pulled off at the entrance to the back pit lane and let all of the field go by. Not exactly sure why. I believe that's a Camaro there, or it could have been a Dodge. But anyway, that car. A challenger pulled all the way yeah, to the back. Yeah, every, that, the that was definitely Adam Romito, Brian, yeah. as uh, they're coming on the front straight here, and he's not on the front row. No, he is not. So I'm not sure what the situation is with that, but that's what happened. Green flag is in the air. Here they all come down to turn one for the first time. And there we go. Go, no issues so far. Oh, I see a waving yellow flag, so somebody is off. Oh, several cars, it looks like, off going at the outside of turn one. We'll see who that is and if they're able to continue. It looks like they're coming back onto the racetrack. One of them is, and then another one pulling off behind the wall there. And then there's another one on the outside of the corner, Brian, trying to rejoin as well. So at least three cars caught up in that as our second group is about ready to get the green flag. 
Here comes that second group now right there, and you see that Dodge pulling up around that second group. He's going to have a long ways to go to get to the front if he's going to try to do that now. Looks like the rest of that situation, well, I don't know that it's actually cleared itself because that yellow flag is still in the air. They wouldn't have that out for that car on the inside, it looks like. But uh, here they come through there. That group seems to got through without any issues. Now we have a car sideways there in the snake corner. It's trying to get, well, it's off the racetrack now. And, and that's one of our slick. Porsches. Yep. You can see how slick that grass is as that car tried to get back. That's oh. the 95 of Chuck Hurley, Brian. And uh, there was a call during the pace lap that came in that there was at least one car that was dropping uh, coolant on the lap. And it might have been Adam Romito in his Dodge sure. Challenger. Uh, the number one machine has been taken back behind the wall. Uh, I don't think that that was a Challenger that we saw at the back of the touring car field. I yeah. think that was actually a Ford Mustang. Uh, and we'll, uh, we'll try and get the number on that machine uh, later. But our uh, GT field starting to make their way down the roller coaster for the first time. And much like we saw yesterday, uh, that the GT1 Lamborghini Huracan, the uh, FIA GT3 homologated car, Brian, already stepping out to a huge lead. But we should we should note that the the second second starting GT1 car was actually uh, Ray Ramirez, who's starting 12th overall. So McAleen and already with a huge advantage here. Yeah, big advantage going out now. We've got. Uh, uh it looks like a fluid flag maybe down there with the yellow, so that could explain what's going on. Hard to tell from this distance, but it might be the debris flag out there with that yellow flag. Cars seem to be making their way through turn one without too many issues at this point in time. A lot easier to negotiate when you're single file and not two or three wide like they were on the first right. corner. And Brian, I've got a little bit more information on the incident we had down at turn one. Stuart Black uh, in his GT2 Chevy Camaro spun going into turn number one. Uh, the number 33 GT2 Chevy Camaro, uh, that is William Moore impacted the 27 machine. It is the 33 car uh, that is still in the grass over at turn number one. And uh, there was also that third car involved. I don't have information on that third car at the moment. At that second place car, there it is, Barry Bowes in a GT2 car. So first place, second place, not racing each other for a class position. They're just racing each other for bragging rights for the overall win. That Ford Mustang is trying to keep up with the uh, with the Huracan here. We've got a replay here. This is the Porsche that we saw spin earlier, the yellow car Chuck here Hurley, at the Snake. Yeah. We're going to see him come through here and figure out what happened. He was on the inside. Yeah. Looks like he got all loose all by his lonesome. Yeah, Brian, he, he tried to come underneath the car directly ahead of him. Uh, got a lot of curbing there at the apex, lifted up the rear and spun the car. Uh, so the, the 95 machine, that is Chuck Hurley. He has managed to continue, currently sitting 18th overall. I will say that's not a spot where I see a lot of people try to go side by side. So there is your race leader going now down towards turn number one. That is McAleenan with Bose right behind him. Bose trying to keep in touch there, but it does look like that, uh, well, he did have his best lap of the race, his best lap overall. I'm talking about Barry Bose. He just turned a 152.9, so he was almost a, a, well, two tenths of a second faster than McAleenan that time by. Yeah, and of course, Barry Bose running in GT2 right. uh, here in, uh, I guess we call it the backup car. We saw the light blue car uh, getting quite a bit of damage at Sebring uh, early in the year. Barry Bose uh, finishing second in the GT2 National Championships this past year here at Virginia International Raceway. But, uh, you know, he is now already opening up uh, almost three and a half seconds or so back to Austin Jurors in the 131 machine, which we didn't even see enter that shot coming into the S's. Um, we should all note uh, here as McAleenan, uh, our overall leader in that GT1 Lamborghini, starting to come up with, there's a Corvette just ahead of him. That is Bill Black. Uh, that is the driver that was involved in that incident down at turn one. He took a run down the pit lane, had the crew look over the front of the car. They sent him back out. Uh, but as you can see, he is already in jeopardy of running. I believe um, if he gets passed by the Lamborghini, I believe it'll put him two laps down. Wow, that Lamborghini already catch, catching up to the back of the field, just flying. And I guess that was one of the cars that maybe had was part of the incident yes. in turn one. That is correct. So, that, that was that was Bill Black. He is right. already a lap down. Brian, he's about to be put two laps down. Twelve laps to go here. This is 
I'm going to guess this is probably our second fastest race group of the weekend. So barring any big full course yellows, they'll get this whole thing done on laps. Of course, 14 lap races or 35 minutes, whichever comes first. All right, and Brian, a couple, uh, couple changes already. First off, the local caution over at turn one covering that number 33 machine. It has now been withdrawn. We're back to green flag racing at turn one. Also, Danny Richardson, driver of the number 15 American Sedan Camaro. He's your reigning national champion. Took the win yesterday in American Sedan. He's having some shifter issues right now. Uh, got word from his crew chief and uh, Danny Richardson bringing that Camaro back behind the wall. His day is now done. And Michael so McAleenan that, just yep. went purple himself with a lap of 150.880. So that was 2.3 seconds faster than Barry Bowes on that lap. That could also be the difference. There could have been uh, just a difference in traffic as well because Bowes now coming up on that, that slower car. No real issues there. Now that car is not flashing its light. Sometimes our cameras give that little impression that it is when it hits the bumps, but uh, it is just doing its thing, moving on through with 11 to go here, starting to pull away. Looking at uh, second place in GT1, right now that is Ray Ramirez. He's 33 seconds back from your race leader. Right. car group that we're looking at right now. That first car is the uh, car of Mark Bowden. That's the, uh, uh, the Mercedes AMG GT4 car. Right behind him is Gary Cook in the, in the, well, I thought that was the Corvette, but no, that is, hmm. Well, I was going to say, let's look at this right now. <laughs> Th this is the battle for the lead in American Sedan, Brian. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. This okay. is James Jost, who is our 2021 national champion. Uh, and uh, Jost, now your leader in American Sedan with Danny Richardson's retirement a few moments ago. Uh, Jason Smith in the Mustang, uh, now running second. Smith had had some mechanical issues, barely made the race yesterday as uh, he had a sway bar end link break on that car during qualifying. Got it back on course. Uh, just in time for yesterday's race. Quite a bit off the pace, however, uh, yesterday. Jost, who has been battling some motor issues uh, this weekend as well, uh, wasn't able to keep up with Richardson's pace yesterday and, and, and frankly, early on before Richardson retired. Richardson had already built up about a 10 second advantage, but uh, you know that doesn't matter now as uh, these two racers are very, very close. To very closely matched, both in Mustangs. The blue one is Yost, the uh, white one is Jason Smith. It is kind of nice when your, your race leader is so far in front that we get the chance to focus on some of these other classes. Uh, oftentimes, we get uh, we get focused on one battle that's really good, and we, we don't get a chance to take a look at the other ones. But this is a nice opportunity to give the A sedan folks some love here. There is your race leader again. There is McAleenan. He'll be coming up on the back of this A sedan battle, not too far down the road here. And there is McAleenan. You can see the A sedan cars coming through turn number two. So probably going up through the climbing S's or maybe on that back straight is where they're going to get uh, uh, encounter that that Lamborghini Huracan. And uh, that's the other nice thing about Macklin and being so far ahead is he can find the right time to get around these two cars without having to worry about messing up their race too, so. Hey, if Director Ryan could uh, give us a shot over by turn one, great battle starting one fold. This is the battle for fifth in GT2, Tony Ave and Jack Stanford. Uh, there, they are locked nose to tail, and you'll notice that Ann Doherty uh, in the Porsche directly behind Aves in the white number 19 TA2 Camaro Stanford in a Mustang, a TA2, and then the third car in line with the big wing on the back. That is Ann Doherty's number four Porsche 911. She is starting to close things down there again. Three cars, and then uh, I think Ray Mason, actually Ray, is uh, quite a bit back from there. Uh, but good battle unfolding right now for fifth in GT2.
As we've said yesterday, Ave with a lot of laps around this racetrack, knows it well. And then we've got uh, Stanford right there too, so. Good to be able to find some of these other little battles throughout the, throughout the field here. Nine laps to go in this race. Your race leader overall, McAleenan. Second place, Bose. Third place, Austin Jurz. Gary Buffam uh, Gian Buffamonte is in fourth overall. Followed by Tiger Tompat. Yeah, and so Gian, who is uh, all of, I believe, and I, I know we've talked, of, talked about him quite a bit, uh, Gian, uh, son of, you know, we talked about multi-generational racers here, son of Tony Bufamonte, who's former TA2, Trans Am TA2 uh, champion. Uh, Gian now, all of 15 years old, hustling these cars around. He got his first podium uh, here on the Super Tour, I believe, yesterday, where he finished second in GT2 uh, to Austin Jurz. Great battle, and Bufamonte, he was right there at the very end. He, he was definitely in line uh, for a win, just needed a eh, probably another lap, and he might have been there. Well, learning lessons early as a young driver, important for any of, any of us who ever started doing this. And when I say young driver, I don't necessarily mean age. It's just being an, any new driver. Learns those lessons, put, puts that in their, their memory bank so that they can come back and draw on that next time they are put in the same position. So, Okay. All right, so uh, right now we're taking a look. This is our T1 leader, Mark Bowden. He's currently running 15th overall, Brian, yep. uh, in that Mercedes AMG GT4 car, uh, the Fall Line Motorsports car. And uh, I think behind him, uh, behind him is actually one of our GT2 racers. That's Chuck Hurley in that yellow Porsche. We thought that perhaps this weekend we might have a very, uh, very interesting fight on our hands for in GT, in probably in touring one because Tony Ave, uh, you know, and I said it was like the big mystery which car Tony Ave <laughs> was going to be in here today. Actually, had three different race cars in three different classes scheduled to run in this week. Yesterday, he ran his GT3, uh, GT3 Acura RSX that he took the win in. Uh, that car is the one he uh, took to the national championship here at VIR two years in a row. Uh, today, he's in the TA2 Camaro, uh, but on the test day, he was running the, TA, the T1 Mercedes AMG GT4, <laughs> and, and he ran that car last week at Summit Point for the, uh, the majors there, where he's reset a track record. Uh, so I was hoping to see uh, where he and Bowden would, uh, would shake out his Bowden's head now about a, a full year behind the wheel of this chassis. Well, and the reason he does that, of course, folks, is because he's trying to qualify in multiple classes for the runoffs. And while they run together in this race, at the runoffs, all those cars get their individual races. So by running one race today, one one car, a different car yesterday, that gives him an opportunity to get uh, to get all of that taken care of and get the points he needs and gets the finishes he needs in each class to be able to qualify for the runoffs. Seven laps to go here, halfway through this race. Uh, oh, real quick before we go to break, we got a spinner there out of turn one. It looks like that car will probably be able to continue. We'll keep an eye on that when we go to break. First, let's do a call to grid, Greg. Attention in the paddock, attention in the paddock. First call to the grid for race group number four, Formula Atlantic, Formula Continental, Formula X, FE2. P1 and P2, please head to the grid. Race group number four, Formula Atlantic, Formula Continental, FX, FE2, P1 and P2, please head to the grid your race last race before lunch is next and want to remind all of our folks here at the track if you want to take part in uh drive arounds and uh, touring laps on track during lunch you can bring your street car up to the grid when the track goes cold uh, we do ask for a donation to the north carolina region scholarship foundation it is a tax deductible foundation uh here for the foundation that takes uh that looks to better the uh lives of some high school students that are looking to go into college and follow a career in motorsports. So if you want to find out more about them, ncrsccasf.org. All right, so let's take that quick break. We'll be back here with more action in just a few moments. Hoosier Racing Tires proud to be the presenting sponsor of SCCA Super Tour. 
Hoosier's mission is to be the dominant customer-driven provider of tires to race teams domestically and internationally. At Hoosier, we know that our success is dependent on how well we meet our customers' expectations by providing the safest, most reliable, high-quality race tires that put you in the winner's circle. For more information, see our trackside support personnel or the local Hoosier Racing Tire dealer near you. Or contact us at HoosierTire.com. Hoosier Racing Tires, truly tires designed for champions. Tire Rack was established over 40 years ago by an SCCA member with a passion to find the right tires, wheels, and now brakes and suspension products for racers and enthusiasts on both street and track. As official tire retailer of SCCA since 1995, and sponsor of the Ronos Pole Award, along with the National Solo Program, Time Trial Nationals, and National Tour and Track Night in America. Tyrac is proud to support the SCCA and its members as they go have fun with cars. As the official fuel partner, Sunoco has been helping the SCCA and their drivers perform at their peak since 2001. Mile after mile, race after race, Sunoco has trusted the fuel over 50 racing bodies, including the SCCA, SCCA Pro Racing, Trans Am, NHRA, and NASCAR. As the largest manufacturer of race fuels, they're passionate about helping drivers and teams take the lead. To find race gas near you, visit SunocoRaceFuels.com or call Sunoco at 800-RACE-GAS. Get more bang for your buck at SummitRacing.com. Choose from millions of in-stock parts from over 1,500 name brands, parts for racing, street performance, trucks, plus tools, accessories, and more. Shop anytime, anywhere with the Summit Racing app. Haggerty is the official and exclusive insurance partner for SCCA and provides affordable off-track insurance protection for motorsports vehicles while in the paddock, in transit, in storage, and at the shop. Haggerty also provides guaranteed value coverage and even has protection for your trailer. Did you know that SCCA members can save 5% on insurance through Haggerty? Haggerty, let's drive together. Learn more at Haggerty.com. Did you know that SCCA members save $20 on every Track Night in America they sign up for? That's right. Track Night in America, driven by Tire Rack, now hosting 150 events at more than 30 tracks across the country, is the easiest and most affordable way to get you and your friends on track in your street cars all season long. Visit TrackNightInAmerica.com to learn more and get yourself on track. We're back here live at Virginia International Raceway. I'm Brian Polanski, Greg Ginsburg on the call. Ryan Bauer is in the uh, booth, pressing all the buttons for us. And of course, Brendan Kaczmarek, he is out there making sure all these cameras look as beautiful as they are. Appreciate everybody for their efforts today. We are back here, race number three. This is our big boy race, Greg. And Interesting yeah. data we're getting access to, yeah. right? Yeah, and, and if we can have Director Ryan keep this shot for a moment. We've got uh, two GT1 cars, and actually our overall leader, Michael McAleenan, just goes by the car that I want to talk about. McAleenan putting Richard Grant, who's running third in GT1, a lap down. Uh, and, you know, always the big difference between the GT3 cars that use uh, the aero advantage they have, but a lot less tire and a lot less horsepower, frankly. Uh, to motor pass something like this traditional GT1 uh, machine that Richard Grant has, the Chevy Camaro. And, but the, the, what we are noting is we have some GPS speed information on Richard Grant's uh, Camaro right here. As he comes out of the S's, he's doing about 35 miles an hour, Brian, not all that much. But as he then enters the uphill S's right there, he was going 146 on the previous wow. lap that he, in that short run, was able to basically accelerate 110 miles an hour. And then, it, you know, we, and we talk about these, these traditional GT1 cars. They are very much point and squirt. Uh, you know, you try and get them, it, slow them down so you can get past the apex, get the wheel straightened up so that you can use the, in some cases, over 800 horsepower. Uh, to your advantage, try and get the power down without spinning the rear wheels. And it's just amazing to see that kind of a stat. Yeah, that is absolutely hashtag haul in the mail here. Going up the hill there is pretty pretty remarkable. Four laps to go, and Michael McAleenan is just basically doing what he did yesterday. He's got a 26-second lead over the second-place car, Barry Bowes. Barry Bowes is in a GT2 car, GT3 Austin Jurors. He is another 30 seconds back from Barry Bowes, so no real action there. 
Uh, and the same thing for third place in GT2, Gian Bufamonte, back another 17 seconds. Oh, okay, so I was reading the lap time, uh, the gaps wrong. Okay. Still, still gaps, but not quite as big as gaps as I was, as I was saying. Second place car in GT1 is Ray Ramirez. Tony Aves worked his way up to uh, fourth place over, or fifth place overall in GT2. Wait a second, one, two, three, four, five, sixth place. There is McAleenan making another move, going up through uh, the snake and heading towards the climbing S's. And it's just a beautiful car to watch. It, it just seems to dance right around all these little S's and everything. He won. Mark Bowden is your leader. Yeah, and Mark now has uh, opened up a pretty considerable advantage over Gary Crook. Of course, Crook uh, had that, uh, that early spin in his Porsche 911. And uh, or probably in his Chevy Corvette. Take that back. I'm sorry. I'm thinking about <laughs> wrong wrong driver, wrong car. Uh, Gary Crook is in the uh, the white C8 Corvette. As far as we know, is the the first uh, C8 that was caged for SCCA competition. Made its debut at Sebring a year ago. And uh, but currently almost a full minute separating. Oh, and our Ameri one of our American sedan machines, uh, that is uh, the American sedan Mustang of Jason Smith, uh, the number 97 machine is running second to Jim Jones. Uh, he uh, gets that final corner, gets hog pen just a little bit wrong. Uh, looks like he was able to recover pretty easily though, Ryan. Yeah, we were talking about that battle a little bit earlier. They were pretty close earlier in the race, James Jost. But just before that spin, Jason Smith had already lost 26 seconds to the leader, so that's going to be even a bigger gap now when they came by. Now after that spin, 39 seconds is the gap between first and second in a sedan. Taking a peek at GT3, Blake Wilson is your race leader, but he is well ahead of Stacey Wilson, who I think uh, dropped out of the race earlier. He, yeah, he brought lap. the arc 7 behind the wall uh, right, right. quite a bit earlier. Looking at... Attention in the paddock, attention in the paddock. Second call to the grid for race group four. Formula Atlantic, Formula Continental, Formula X, FE2, P1, and P2. Race group four, Formula Atlantic and Continental, Formula X, FE2, P1, and P2. Please head to the grid, your race, starting in just a few minutes. ETX right now, Woody Wichert is in first. Joseph Petkus is a lap down in second place. And... And Doherty gets past Ray Mason. Ray Mason, yep, yep. That, that's the battle for seventh in GT2. And uh, and I don't know if we mentioned it. When we had that uh, that car spin just as they're going to break over by turn two, Brian, that was Ann Doherty. She had lost three positions uh, in class. So it uh, looks like she has now made her way back around Ray Mason to get one of those positions back. That'll put her up to seventh. All right, we've got... Uh two to go right now. We're on to the second to last lap, which means next time by, McAleenan's going to get the white flag. We'll wrap this one up fairly early here. All right, and uh, McAleenan now on the front straight. Brian, we should see him come into our view momentarily, and you yep. see the starter now with the white flag in the air. One lap to go. Left remaining here for Michael McAleenan, our GT1 leader out of Tacoma, Washington. Yep. 17 corners. All he's got to do is negotiate those without any issues. He's got a big, big lead, so. All right, Brian, well, one machine that is not going to make it to the checkered flag. That is one of our two GT2 Sunbeam Tigers. Uh, and uh, in this case, it is not Tiger Tom Patton. It is uh, Gary Johnson, driver of the number 21 machine. He's going to take that car back to the paddock. McAleenan coming through the snake for the final time for this weekend. Going to hit the uphill S's here. One more time through Oak Tree. Working his way through this 3.27 mile lap here at VIR on the final lap of the weekend for him. McAleenan's had really good success so far this year here in the Super Tour. I'm sure, I believe this is at least his fourth win if he 
doesn't have any problems here on the final lap. Gonna have to go back and do a little looking into that, but. Here Brian, comes. that's what I'm here for, and I'm going to bring it up for you here in just a moment. I'm pretty certain he got both the wins at, um, at NOLA. Yeah, indeed. So Michael McElhaden, uh he took uh, one win at Sebring. He took the wins both days at NOLA. He also won both days uh, just a few weeks ago at Road Atlanta. He currently leads the GT1 points race by a considerable amount by almost uh, almost 80 points. All right, here he comes to the line then. That means this is going to be his seventh win of the season. Michael McElhaney, your race winner here in GT1 and overall here at VIR. That's a, that's a good season, and we're only halfway through it, Greg. That, that is indeed the case now. I'm sure Ray Ramirez, uh, who is going to finish second in GT1 today in his Porsche 911, was hoping to make up, maybe make up some points in the, uh, the standings. Ray is currently running second here in the GT1 point standings. Uh, he won the very first Super Tour race of the year down at Sebring, uh, but hasn't been able to, uh, I'm sorry, no, that was actually Keith Grant who won uh, at Sebring on the first day. Uh, Ray was at NOLA where he finished third each time and uh, not, the, not the weekend he wanted at Road Atlanta where he finished sixth in both races. All right, so that's how it's gonna finish here. McAleen and your race winner. Second place is your first place car in GT2. That's Barry Bowes, followed by Austin Jers and Gian Bufamont, and that's gonna be your podium in GT2. Uh, GTX, your race winner, Woody Wichert. Let's scroll down and grab a little GT3 action here. I believe your race winner in GT3 is gonna be Blake Wilson. And second place uh, would have been Stacy Welton. Would have been well, Stacey Wilson, but didn't get the finish because they only got one lap in. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. That 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 should uh, evoke a lot of conversation in the Wilson camp tonight <laughs> Probably. Uh, between the two of them. And uh, in touring one, Mark Bowden taking the win today over Gary Crook. And uh, in American Sedan, James Jost, margin of victory, 50 seconds over Jason Smith, who finishes second. Reigning national champ Danny Richardson retires the car with transmission issues after just a single lap. All right, let's do one more call to grid before we take our break, Greg. Does that make sense? That makes sense to me. Attention in the paddock, attention to the paddock. Final call to the grid for our final race group before lunch. Formula Atlantic, Formula Continental, Formula X, FE2, P1, and P2. Please head to the grid race group number four. This is your final call to the grid. All right, so let's take a quick break. We'll be back here in just a few moments with more racing action from Virginia International Raceway and the 2024 Hoosier Racing Tire SCCA Super Tour. Don't forget to file for your contingency payouts for the Hoosier Super Tour. Partner payouts include offers from companies like Hawk Performance, including product certificates to the top five positions in class and they can be used on any Hawk products. Hawk Performance also offers a benefit discount to SECA members of $20 off a $200 purchase and is the novice group sponsor for the SECA's track night in America. Search contingency on the SECA website to view your contingency options.
This is Virginia International Raceway, a beautiful Sunday afternoon for racing. Race group number four is getting ready to get underway. Wings and things, a bunch of formula cars with big motors. Greg Ginsburg has the starting line. Big motors, big wings, big, um, wings. yeah, we'll just say big wings. <laughs> and uh, then this prime will be our last race before we break for lunch. We're once again going to do a split start. You just saw our prototype cars there and a i think a single formula atlantic as well in that first group and then we've got our formula enterprise two machines they're all going to be in the second group uh behind our second pace car that uh, orange volkswagen there let me give you the uh, starting order in fe2 and then we will move uh to then we will move over to the prototypes uh we had 14 drivers set qualifying times here this weekend in fe2 let's start off with the driver starting 14th 
That is Carl Wingo. Carl is out of Nashville, Tennessee. He's driving the number 16 machine. Russell Strait Jr. is going to start 13th. He's out of Alden, New York, driving the number 91. Thomas Green is driving the 88 car. Thomas starts 12th. He's out of Sorrento, Florida, with Brian Yates out of Kernersville, North Carolina, starting 11th in the 145 car. Alistair McEwen will start 10th. Alistair's out of Miami, Florida, drives the number 38 car, while Charlie Knoll drives the 27 car. He's out of Sewickley, Pennsylvania, and I'm sure Brendan will probably say it. Correct me on my pronunciation soon enough. He says, I got it. Oh, wow. All right, and Charlie starts ninth. Starting eighth, Jonathan Weishite. Second time we're going to see him today. He is starting eighth, as I said, in the number 67 machine. He's from Baltimore, Maryland. Then we've got Eric Cruz out of Williamsburg, Virginia. He starts seventh in the 86 car. Sam Harrington will start sixth. He's driving the 33 car. He's from Finksburg, Maryland. While Von Mishko is driving the number eight car. Vaughn, that's uh, Eric Cruz's teammate, starts fifth. He's out of Sylvan Lake, Michigan. Marshall Stocker will start fourth. Marshall's in the number 21 FE2. He's out of Hanover, Massachusetts. While Jim Lebecco will start third. Jim's in the number 98 machine. He's from Solon, Ohio. And your front row in FE2, starting second, driving the number 73 car. From Charlotte, North Carolina, it's Paul Schneider. And your pole sitter in FE2, driving the number 32 machine from Montpelier, Virginia with a qualifying time of 150.555, Charles Russell Turner. Your front group today are prototypes and Formula Atlantic machines starting fifth, driving the number 49 prototype two store from Gastonia, North Carolina, A.J. Snyder. Michael Moulton will start fourth. He's in the number 44 P, uh, P2 store, and he is from Wilmington, North Carolina. Palm Beach, Florida's Sherman Chow, the Shermanator, will start third today in the number 03 Prototype 2 store, while Tony Ave will start on the outside of row number one. He is our sole Formula Atlantic driver. He's driving a Swift 016 Mazda-powered machine. He's from Maiden, North Carolina. And your pole sitter today, reigning national champion in the class, driving the number 19 Prototype 1 Alain DPO2 from Ormond Beach, Florida, with a qualifying time of 142.464. It's Todd Vanacor. And Brian, the lights are out on our first pace car for the Prototype and Formula Atlantics as they are starting to make the run down the roller coaster here. Now, we saw yesterday where... Uh, Sorry about that. That's all right. There we go. I thought I had the problem. No, no. It, you know, sometimes the operator's got to hit unmute. I, I was tired of listening to myself, so I muted myself. And you know, you'd think this was like one big Zoom meeting or something, right? <laughs> Pretty much. Pretty much. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> I was going to say, Tony Ave had to work his way up through the field yesterday, today, on the front row. So there's your second group going through, our second pack going through roller coaster. We have a split start here, as Brendan been telling us. So here we go. We'll be getting a green flag here. Just a second for group one. It is in the air. And like yesterday, Todd Vanacore jumps to an early lead. <laughs> here they go into turn one. I think Tony Ave will do a better job of keeping up in that Formula Atlantic car because he had to come through the back of the field yesterday. But, That's right. Uh, of course, these are not racing each other for class wins, but they are racing each other for bragging rights and glory. And in the end, isn't that why we do this? <laughs> Here comes our FE2 cars down the hill going towards the checkered, or the green flag. Well, they're going towards the checkered flag, too, I guess, at some point. But uh, got to go, got to do this 14 more times before we get the checkered flag, Greg. Yes, we do. All right, Brian, here we go. Time for our second start with the big FE2 field. 14 cars, 14, 13 cars longs. I think Carl Wingo, Wingo, pardon me, did not take the green. Well, and there they all go into turn one. Usually we're seeing a little puff of brake smoke on a lot of these groups, but not on this one. Everyone seems to negotiate that first corner fine. Already getting into a single file situation as they head towards NASCAR, which is turn three and four here. Single file, no problems at the moment. Nice and safely done. That is a pretty sight, folks. Pretty sight. Still having no problems at all. As we talked about yesterday, this is a section of the racetrack where there was a big problem at the runoff for this class. Lost a couple of really good cars in this session uh, at the runoffs. Many of them back and put together for this weekend. 
As they snake through the climbing nests. I always like to think after going through the snake, then they start snaking, but it's a lot of snaking going on there. Here comes this group heading towards Oak Tree for the first time. Of course, we, this, uh, this, I think you had a special name for it. I call it Sands Oak Tree. Yeah. Oak Tree Less. I got that Oaks, from Heather Oak Clark, longtime uh, flagger here. Oak, I like that. <laughs> for the North Carolina region. A little bit of action going on in around fifth place is where that battle is right there. Maybe sixth place, that move. Oh, a little puff of brake smoke there. A little lock up as they come over the hill. Now they're going down the roller coaster. If you wonder why they call it the roller coaster, well, it is aptly named. It is downhill, right, left. Kind of gives me a bit of, of, of corkscrew vibes at Laguna Seca. Yeah, to, I, I think uh, to some extent uh, the uh, the hog pen uh, over at turn 17. Uh, to, uh, yeah, I could see that kind of vibe there. I think I referred to it as the super duper looper yesterday. Yeah, uh, not, the not old quite Hershey as, Park yeah. uh, roller coaster doesn't have quite the elevation change of the corkscrew, but it definitely has that no. downhill right, left, right, left, right, left thing going. Well, well you know, another corkscrew turn is somewhat similar. There is a uh, a corkscrew corner at. Uh, uh, Barber Motorsports Park. Okay. Uh, and uh, I, I think maybe the the profiling of that corner very actually very similar to what we have at that corkscrew sure, uh, sure. compared to what we have uh, with that huge, what, like three-story drop that we have at uh, Laguna Seca. All right. As these FE2 cars come across the line for the first time, Russ Turner, your leader, James Lebeco, second, Paul Schneider, third. Then you've got Von Mischko, fourth. Marshall Stocker, fifth. Eric Cruz, uh, sixth in FE2. Sam Harrington, seventh. Charlie Knoll, eighth. Jonathan Weishite, ninth. Alistair McEwen is in tenth. That's how they line up in FE2. And I don't even know if it's a lineup now. Watch them come out of Oak Tree or Oak Tree less. For the second time, Russ Turner has now opened up what? It looks yeah. like about a 25 car length advantage that for the moment it's a battle for second between Rebecca and Schneider. Yeah, there it is. I mean, he's going to be out of our picture almost before the next group of cars. And it looks like that Schneider just made a move on Lebecco to go into second place there. Indeed. Indeed. And uh, that has allowed Von Mischko in that red and white number eight machine to uh, move up uh, just a little bit. Uh, I'll have, um, I have to be very careful uh, for when Eric Cruz in the 86 car pulls up because they've got the same livery. Right. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll be checking that out here as we jump back over uh, now to our prototypes in Atlantics. Uh, we just saw our overall leader, that is Todd Vanacore, uh, go and uh, come on to the back straight. Yep. There he is in that green and black number 19 machine, Tony Ave, in his Formula Atlantic Swift, uh, currently running second overall. And I think I mentioned, may have mentioned yesterday, we saw it. Ave last week with that Swift at Summer Point Raceway. And it, the car definitely seemed to be off song at the time. And, uh, and it, maybe it was a gearing issue that he just seemed to run out of uh, run out of gear in top end about three quarters of the way down the front straight, which is a pretty long front straight at Summit Point. And uh, in the middle of a race, brought the car in, had the team take a look at it, went back out. This was during the Saturday race, did not post for the Sunday race. Right, right. You know, and so I'm sure some work was done on this car in the, uh, the uh, ensuing week. Sure. And, uh, you know, and uh, as you mentioned yesterday, though, he started from the very rear of the pack, I think back behind all of the FE2 machines as well. So as they stand on the racetrack right now with with Paul Schneider moving into second, that Turner Schneider Lebecco, that's how they finished yesterday. So the yep. question now is um, after Schneider gets around Lebecco, does he have a little, was Lebecco holding him up at all? And can he now try to bridge that gap to Russ Turner? It's a big gap though. At the line last time, 20 seconds between first and second. So he's got his work cut out for him, but he's got 11 laps to do it. Up front, you've got Vanagor, Tony Ave, Sherman Chow, Michael Moulton, and A.J. Snyder. Chow, Moulton, and Snyder, those are, that's your P2 class right there, all in order there, third, fourth, and fifth overall, first, second, and third in class.
at the line. This time, Bai will get the, the timing for the gap between Effie 2 and Russ Turner. I'm sorry, between Russ Turner and Paul Schneider in Effie 2. And we're, we're starting to actually see, I think, very similar to what we saw in Formula V earlier today, Brian, uh, with uh, a couple of very distinct groups. We've got that second pack of FE2 machines uh, there. Marshall Stocker, Eric Cruz, Sam Harrington uh, trailing behind, and then uh, a couple of the other uh, hangers on here, Charlie Knoll, Alistair McEwen as well. Alistair's in that the three number 38 machine. It's, it's always interesting to, to get a little bit more information about the background of some of these uh, racers. So uh, McEwen, um, who is retired, and he used to run an international pharmaceutical development company. Um, he, he he lists his current occupation <laughs> as yacht captain and helicopter pilot. <laughs> I like that. Yes. I like that. So, uh, I, I mean, you, you look at ways, the, the ways that people... Um, you know, I'm not saying that, that racing is a fool's errand, but we know a lot of people that don't <laughs> last long in racing because of what a drain it is on their, uh, their resources. You know, but but the, the other the other sports and the other endeavors that I find very similar to racing, owning a boat <laughs> yes, <laughs> and owning an airplane, <laughs> yes. would probably, or, or a helicopter for that matter, I think would probably be uh, in, in around the same, same thing as uh, we've got a uh, white flag now being displayed over at 16 for a slow-moving vehicle. Yep, it's and one of the, our uh, the prototypes. 49 machine. Got it. Uh, quite a bit off pace. That would be AJ Schneider. Yeah, that's uh, that's exactly who it is. So yeah, he was slow coming up from Oak yeah. Tree, and a lot of cars got by him. Oh, now we've got a car. Oh no, I thought that was a spinner, but I think we've just got a bit of a glitch on the camera. That looked that's like it. it was Tony Ave. Yeah, so the, and the 49 car, Snyder, he's on the pit lane now, but Good. just off to my left. All right, so we keep things going here with nine laps to go in this race. This would be probably our second fastest race group of the weekend with that prototype one car uh, is, is just blisteringly fast. Now, what Vanacore did yesterday, and I suspect he may do it again today since he's the only P1 car, he'll probably get it just past halfway and then park it for the rest of the day because he'll still get the win and the points and everything. Um, but once he gets halfway, it's an official race, and that allows him to save save the equipment for later in the year when he doesn't have the opportunity to do so. Looking at FE2 right now, Russ Turner, his lead has gapped out to 5.7 seconds over Paul Schneider. So you've got Turner, Schneider, Lebeco, your top three. Then fourth through 10 in FE2, Mishko Cruz, Harrington, Stocker, Noel, McEwen, and Weishite. That's your top 10 right now. And there is Schneider coming through for, uh, coming through there down the roller coaster. He's got that orange and blue car. And not too far behind him is James Lebeco trying to keep, uh, to keep close enough to maybe grab second place. And then Vaughn Mishko, he's the one trying to get on the podium here running in fourth out of that group, or third place out of that group, but fourth in FE2. And so uh, Schneider, a longtime runner here in the FE2 class, uh, when we when I first started covering the Super Tour a number of years ago, Brian, it was, like, it was a tongue twister uh, because we had former national champion Liam Schneider and Paul Schneider, <laughs> usually either nose to tail or side by side, and I, I could, I, I still have nightmares about uh, having to pronounce those two. You'd think, uh, you'd think pronouncing Solano, Ohio is, is difficult, but uh, <laughs> that was even worse. Uh, <laughs> That's when you go first names only, my friend. First Ex names only. Exactly. So, so uh, Paul lives down in Charlotte, North Carolina, my, my current hometown, and uh, is a, uh, an engineer for Electrolux, which used to be known for many, many years uh, for their vacuum cleaners uh, here in the United States. And apparently they branched out over the, over the years. And he actually works in the washer and dryer division. Nice. Uh, so, uh, you know, no jokes if he spins the car about having to, uh, to <laughs> clean, his, clean his driver's suit. Uh, but uh, he, desi he designs parts for washing machines, which I think nice. is actually, actually pretty cool. And I never knew that, the, that we had that industry down in Charlotte, North Carolina. There you go. Russ Turner now 7.3 seconds ahead as he keeps pulling out a little bit more and a little bit more. Let's give a shout out to the folks in the chat. James Brookshire is here. Kelton Jaggo's back again. Thank you so much, David S. Mike, uh, Michelle Hudson is here with us today. 
Brian Trzinski has shown up. Yeah. I understand. Stan Brian is now the co-host of Inside the SEC. That, 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 <laughs> yes, that is that is apparently the case. <laughs> and uh, some of us who also do work for Apex Racing TV will never let little Ronnie Mons down. Uh, uh, let him live that down. Hey, yeah. uh, certainly wanted to welcome James Bookshire back because if you remember, James has been our comic relief for uh, the first half of the Super Tour season, um, especially when it relates to Eric Cruz and um, and Kelton Does he uh, still owe you some donuts? I, yes, he, yes, he does. Okay. Yeah. Well, James <laughs> does. I, I it, believe me, Kelton has has many times paid that over. He and his lovely wife have brought uh, Brian Donati and I uh, little gifts up to the booth at some point. Uh, more time than I can count, uh, but uh, Brookshire, he's never done a darn thing for either of us, so yes, he still owes <laughs> us. <laughs> All right, coming up on seven laps go, just uh, probably about 30 seconds. So let's do this, Greg. Let's. Uh, we don't have to make a call to grid because lunch is next. We should warn people, not warn, but let people know we're going to have a lunch break here. Warning, and warning. <laughs> danger, Will Robinson. Uh, we have, that's a different race. That's a different we, class today, yeah. Yeah, exactly. we've, got, uh, we've got lunch coming up next, so we don't have to do a call to grid, but we do need to take a break and thank the folks who help us get this thing on the air. Let's do that uh, right now. Actually, and Brian, before oh. we go to break, and hopefully, uh, hopefully uh, Director Ryan will... Uh, let me say this, if you want to bring your car on track here at Virginia International Raceway, when we go to lunch, we are going to have drive arounds, parade laps for charity, that charity being the North Carolina Region Scholarship Foundation who helps uh, high, graduating high school students uh, as they go to college to advance their burgeoning motorsports careers. It is a tax deductible donation to get your car on track. And if you want to find out more information about the foundation, go to ncrsccasf.org. All right, Ryan, now we can go to break. For over 25 years, championship winning drivers and teams have demanded Hawk Performance Motorsports brake pads. Now you can have their advanced technology on your daily car, truck, or SUV with Hawk Performance Street products. With the improved HP Plus pad for that hybrid street and track feel, or Super Duty pads for tow vehicles, their all new ER1 brake pad designed to take on even the longest race, and their all new high performance brake fluid, Hawk has all of your braking needs covered. Visit hawkperformance.com and like them on Facebook or Instagram to learn more about the Hawk Performance Advantage. Hawk Performance, what's stopping you? Tire Rack was established over 40 years ago by an SCCA member with a passion to find the right tires, wheels, and now brakes and suspension products for racers and enthusiasts on both street and track. As official tire retailer of SCCA since 1995, and sponsor of the Ronos Pole Award, along with the National Solo Program, Time Trial Nationals, and National Tour and Track Night in America. Tire Rack is proud to support the SCCA and its members as they go have fun with cars. As the official fuel partner, Sunoco has been helping the SCCA and their drivers perform at their peak since 2001. Mile after mile, race after race, Sunoco has trusted the fuel over 50 racing bodies, including the SCCA, SCCA Pro Racing, Trans Am, NHRA, and NASCAR. As the largest manufacturer of race fuels, they're passionate about helping drivers and teams take the lead. To find race gas near you, visit SunocoRaceFuels.com or call Sunoco at 800-RACE-GAS. Get more bang for your buck at SummitRacing.com. Choose from millions of in-stock parts from over 1,500 name brands. Parts for racing, street performance, trucks, plus tools, accessories, and more. Shop anytime, anywhere with the Summit Racing app. Maza Vineyards is the exclusive sparkling wine for podium celebrations at the Hoosier Racing Tire SCCA Super Tour, SCCA Runoffs, and Tire Rack SCCA Pro Solo. Celebrate your racing weekend with Maza Vineyards and learn more at EnjoyMaza.com. It's the 2024 Hoosier Racing Tire SCCA Super Tour, the premier amateur road racing series bringing together top SCCA road racers from around the country. The Hoosier Super Tour visits some of the greatest tracks in North America, showcasing each of our 28 car classes. From production to GT cars, prototype to formula cars, the Hoosier SCCA Super Tour packs a ton of wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing action into every event. We're back here at VIR. We have a little bit of an update. A change for position, podium position in FE2, Greg. Vaughn Mishko is now taking over that spot. Yeah, he uh, he made a very good pass there on uh, Jim Lebeco, got by, and uh, we can see there, uh, actually, they were just, there. There are the two of them, I think, coming into 
NASCAR yep. and actually through turn five. Actually, no, that's a little bit further back. That's actually Eric Cruz and Marshall Stocker right. uh, there. That's the 86 and the 21 machine in uh, FE2. Uh, here is your six battle, I think, seven. right this there. This is it right here. Yep. Good job, Ryan. Thank you for finding that for us. So the car in front is Mishko. The car in second is Lebeco. So there's still trying to keep and hang on there. Lebeco trying to get back into third place. But that's something, a little bit of a battle here with six laps to go. Not much of a battle in any of our other classes here at the moment. So we'll kind of keep an eye on this. Well, we, we do have one, actually, uh, two big changes now up at the, the front of the field, Ryan. Uh, our new overall leader, Sherman Chow, who's our P2 leader in his store, he gets around Tony Ave's Formula Atlantic, and there, following the, uh, the, the two FE2 machines that we were just watching a few moments ago, uh, Mishko and Lebeko, that is uh, our P1 leader, and our actually our sole P1 driver, Todd Vanacore, who pulled his car down the pit lane uh, to finish lap number six. And uh, we thought, well, maybe he brought the car down the pit lane. He was going to run halfway, you know, get the finish and go. Uh, the problem is, and the big problem is, is that, well, he was one lap short of halfway. So he <laughs> wouldn't have gotten credit for the race. Right. Uh, crew took a look at the car, sent him right back out. And that he's been out now for two laps. He's uh, three laps. He's actually completed nine laps. Uh, but obviously uh, now has dropped uh, considerably through the order. Uh, he is now running... Uh, running fifth overall. Yeah. There they go right there. He's going around that P2 car. Five laps to go here. Coming up after lunch, folks, we've got some great racing still. B-Spec, all of our production cars and GT Lights, our first race after lunch, followed by our Touring and ST groups. That's our second race after lunch. And then two big ones at the end, Spec Racer 4 and Spec MX5. So lots of fun after lunch. Stay with us for that. Okay. After we have a little break. I think I may have. Uh, I think I may have started a fight in the chat, Brian, uh, between <laughs> between Kelton and James. Yeah. <laughs> as, as, as apparently Kelton's name to fame is uh, claim to fame is, is, is bringing Brian to Nadi and I donuts. Uh, that's good stuff. Good Ooh, big stuff. break lock up there from Mishko at the top of the roller coaster. Now the and, question uh, is, will Lebeco be able to take advantage of that? No, and, well, it doesn't look like he's been able to do it now. And a matter of fact, Mishko right. opens up a little bit more of an advantage coming down the roller coaster. I think a lot of that is the fact that Mishko uh, actually had to check up just a little bit. Or probably not Mishko, but the Lebeco had to check up a bit as they came down the roller coaster. Another big change here, Paul Schneider, who, uh, well, uh, Paul Schneider, and this is not for class, mind you, but uh, Schneider gets around Michael Moulton. Uh, Moulton, who's running second in P2, running fourth overall. Uh, the FE2 driver, Schneider, now gets around him. Right. And there's Schneider that we just saw there coming through five. And I think that's Moulton with, uh, I think that uh, that's actually Moulton with both Mishko and Lebeko directly behind. All right, with Four to go now. Chow is your race leader, followed by Russ Turner. Todd Vanacore second, Paul Schneider third. These are your overalls. Um, Moulton fifth, I'm sorry, Schneider fourth, Moulton fifth, Mishko sixth, Lebeko seventh, Sam Harrington is in eighth, Eric Cruz is in ninth, and Marshall Stocker is in 10th. That's how they stand right now with four to go. Oh, and look at this move. This, and I don't think it's going to work out for him, but Mishko's trying to come underneath Michael Moulton going into 11 as the uh, the prototype car, certainly holding him up. And uh, it was a good move there by Mishko. Sam Harrington in that 33 machine, or probably not Sam, not Sam Harrington, uh, Jim Lebeko in the 98 machine behind. He actually laid out of the throttle, Brian, coming up through the top portion of the S's to try to get a run through South Bend and maybe get a run on both those cars down the hill. It just did not work out as Mishko popped to the inside as he also thought he was going to get around that prototype car. And now Lebeko, he's going to have to follow that prototype down the hill. And these FE2 cars, they just don't seem to have the legs on the straightaways that right. the prototype 2 cars do. Oh, and Lebeko Ooh. drops a wheel, setting up for uh, setting up for a hog pen, and he goes off driver's right into the grass, Brian. 
Yeah, and way off into the grass. I'm not quite sure how far he slid there. Hopefully he did not get, I believe there's a tire wall. Oh, had, did not get to the tire wall. He's going to come back in right. Oh, my. Oh. Just, just just as Eric Cruz and Marshall Stocker, the uh, the 86 and the 21 FE2 machines were coming down and heading, coming to the apex at Hogpen is just when Lebeco goes to uh, Joe goes to rejoin, didn't leave those two cars a lot of room for error, Brian. It did not, but what that does now is it moves Harrington and Cruz into fourth and fifth, Stocker into sixth. Lebeco drops all the way down to seventh place in FE2 with time running out on the clock. He's going to have to get some work done if he wants to try to work his way back up through the field a little bit here. Hopefully there wasn't any damage done to that car when he came off, but we're going to get a replay here of that. Here it comes. Check it out right there. <laughs> yeah, and Brian, I think it, what happened there is as they uh, they come around, there is some curbing. Drivers left before they make the uh, the, the left-hand turn to set up for the right-hander, which is Hogpen. And it looked like Lebeco dropped the wheel into the grass there, sent the rear end coming around. Uh, and uh, you can see the, uh, the tire smoke come up as the slip angle became too great for those tires. James Brookshire with the line of the day, Lebeco making bacon at hog pen. <laughs> oh, oink. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Two to go now. Wrapping this one up, Russ Turner. <laughs> like he... a pig in a blanket? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's all going off the rails here, folks. Let's <laughs> get to the final part of our, you know, we're, we're on race, what is it, 12 of the weekend here. Yeah. Having a good time. Russ Turner is your leader in FE2. Schneider second. Mishko is in third. Looking up at the top of the field here as well. Sherman Chow is in second place. Todd Vanacor has stayed out. We thought maybe he'd do a couple acts and come back in, but he stayed back out. Working his way up, he still has a chance to come up with the overall win here, Greg. Yeah, at the moment, he's well, he's 12 seconds behind Sherman Chow, uh, but you know what? He's running He's running 10 seconds, 10 10 seconds, seconds faster. faster, so we, we might end up there with two laps remaining. Uh, maybe he just decided he wanted to make it interesting for us. I. Uh, so, so I believe that is That's that Vanicor black coming. car is Vanicar. Right. The, the white, white car we car yep we just German. saw is Sherman Chow. Right. That's okay. All good. All right. The 98 machine of Jim Lebeco comes down the pit lane. Looks like he's going to call it a day there after that off over at Hogpen. Right. Next time by Chow is going to get the white flag and. Todd Vanacor right there behind him. Going to try to get around these FE2 cars and then make one last push to maybe get to the top step on a podium overall. We'll see what the gap is this time, By I'm going to guess it's going to be under six seconds at this point. There's your white flag for Sherman Chow. Next across the line is going to be Todd Vanacor. Four seconds, 3.8 seconds. Yeah. I think that uh, Sherman Chow is going to be looking at a second place finish here, it looks like. Yeah, yeah so Vanacor knocked another eight seconds off that last yeah. time by. And, you know, oh, yeah, they're within a couple corners here. As soon as they get to the back straight, uh, coming out of Oak Tree, assuming one of, not both of those cars long. even get a good jump out of there, I think Sherman Chow, well, yeah, it might yeah. even it might not even make that make it that far, even the South Bend. Well, let's, uh, let's take a look here and see how Sherman handles this. Yeah, Sherman just yeah. opens the door, lets Vanacor <laughs> by. He realizes there's no 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 reason to fight uh, with that machine. Yeah. So it'd be fun to find out what the deal was there, why he came in. Maybe he was having a little problem with the car and they made a slight yeah. adjustment and or or you know, the other thing he could have done is maybe you want to see what a different tire pressure went, you know, just to see what it was like. So sure. Any of those options are possible there. Here they come through Oak Tree for the final time. That black car right there, that is your race leader right now. Todd Vanacor right behind him. Well, kind of right behind him. Sherman Chow in second place. And Vanacor now can just tiptoe around that car in front of him. No reason to make it difficult for either one of them here on this final lap. So not have to worry too much about Chow catching him. Doesn't have to worry about the getting around the car in front of him because that's not the position. And it looks like Tony Ave decided to retire the car a lap early. He comes down the pit lane, Brian. 
And across the checkered flag in the air for your race leader and your race winner, Todd Vanacore will take the win here on our fourth race of the day here at VIR. Second place, German Sherman Chow. And now we're going to wait for Russ Turner to come across the line. He should be your FE2 race winner. And he has crossed the line, actually. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, I think he's already <laughs> taken the checker yep. uh, there. So he will get the win uh, in FE2. Paul Schneider uh, has all also crossed the line. So he will finish second in FE2. We're waiting on Von Mishko, who's coming across right in front of me now on the front yep. straight. And there he is. So that will round out your podium in FE2. Turner, Schneider, and Mishko. Michael Bolton crosses the line. He will finish second in prototype two, which is good because I think he was the last room. He was the only other prototype two racer running at the end. Right. And uh, I think that actually goes and wraps it up. If we look a little bit deeper into that FE2 field. So Turner, Schneider, Mishko, your podium. Sam Harrington will finish fourth. Eric Cruz works up to fifth. Marshall Stocker, sixth. Alistair McEwen, seventh. And Brian Yates, Thomas Green, Charlie Knoll, uh, Jonathan Weishite will finish just out of the top 10 with Russell Strait. And, of course, Jim Lebecco uh, finishing three laps down uh, after that uh, big off over at Hogpen. All right, that's going to do it. We're going to take a lunch break here, folks, so our workers can get in, have some food, Hot dog take food. a li little bit of relaxing for uh, about an hour or so here, hour and 10 minutes. We're going to come back at 12.55 Eastern Time and get our last four races of the day. We've got uh, the first great race after lunch, B-Spec, production cars and GTL, second race, touring cars and super touring cars, and then our third race after lunch, Spec Racer Ford 3, and our last race of the day, Spec MX-5. So, any thoughts before we leave, Greg? Pigs and blankets. No, um, <laughs> actually, a, a great a great morning of racing, Brian. You know, I still look back to the finish of that Spec Miata race and you know how things can just change on a dime and how yep. uh, you know you can face adversity when you don't expect it and uh some people make the best of it some people can't and uh, I, I just i feel kind of heartbroken there for ethan goulart who for two days in a row just came up short after having such a chance to walk away with wins but great morning of racing we've got four more races this afternoon with some real barn burners uh, yep. especially in spec racer ford and smx coming up a little later to end out round out the day well i suspect there'll be a lot of checkered flags in ethan goulart's future so i agree Keep that chin up and keep coming out here, and I'm, they're going to come. So we're going to take a break. When we come back after lunch, Beast Back, E, F, and H production at GT Light. Stay, stay with us, everybody. We'll see you in a bit. My customer experience with Mazda has been absolutely fantastic. I think they kind of cater to the whole crowd of people. You, they got the SUVs for the soccer moms and stuff like that. But then you got your Miatas and your Speed 3s for your car enthusiasts. So I think they cater to all crowds. And so I think that's something that everyone can get behind. In terms of maintaining equipment, I mean, running a prep shop, I mean, day in, day out, we're maintaining cars for customers all over the country. Mazda, hands down, is probably the best company to work with for sports car racing. Um, Factory support is uh, second to none uh, in terms of uh, specific competition parts, parts availability, pricing, access to their technical knowledge and base. It just feels right. You feel connected. So our team support program offers uh, a couple of tiers of support, uh, part support, technical support, um, contingency support as well. All of this is done through our website and the team support program and the Parts 800 number. We have uh, two main ways that customers can uh, acquire parts from Mazda Motorsports. It's through our MazdaMotorsports.com parts store website. It's basically like signing up for an Amazon account. You know, simple information, prove that you're a racer with a race result. It gets you access to our 800 hotline that you can call and speak to one of our parts representatives um, basically five days a week. We got into Mazdas uh, largely just because it's a fantastic platform. You know, a lot of guys would run double stints uh, just to get time on track. They're super reliable, don't break. And Mazda Motorsports has some of the best uh, 
just support for the grassroots racer in parts and technical advice and everything else. So they, they make it easy for us to run these cars. Mazda has been very supportive of racers within the SCCA and, and all the other grassroots organizations for many, many years. Really their support for racing and our type of racing is, is unmatched from any other manufacturer. They've been a great partner for many, many years. There's nothing else like this. There's, there's no other big class that has the highest quality of drivers in it. Um, and it's, it's really attracted the right level of people. Uh, the other aspect is I'm probably not the richest person out here and they're extremely reasonably priced and you can buy parts easily. And um, so it's, it, it's a class that fits both, both what I want from a racing standpoint and what I can afford. It's one of those things that once you get hooked into it, it, it just never leaves. It really helps understanding where they come from. Uh, it helps the communication between customer relations. Um, you can very much understand uh, their needs of the day. Uh, may not necessarily be the same each day, uh, but you know how to adapt to it and, and you know how to uh, you know, best serve the customer is, is really what it comes down to.
Welcome back to the gorgeous Virginia International Raceway. Weather equaling the beauty of the track today. It is about as perfect as you're ever going to get to go spring racing at VIR. This is the Hoosier Racing Tire SCCA Super Tour. I'm Brian Polanski. Greg Ginsburg is here with us as well. Greg. Hi. And it's time to take one more look at our track map for the weekend. Our final time, four races to go. And here it is as we don our parachutes, as Greg said earlier today. <laughs> Geronimo! <laughs> and there it is, beautiful VIR. 17 turns, 3.27 miles. And uh, it is about as, as great a racetrack for a driver as you're going to find, Greg. It, it is. Elevation changes galore. Uh, different types of turns, tight, tight uh, turns, big sweeping turns, straightaways for the big ground pounders. It's a lovely racetrack, Brian, and there's a reason why Paul Newman called it heaven on earth. <laughs> All right, let's do this. We've got our small four group, our production car classes, the smallest of our, our GT cars, as well as our B-Spec racers taking to the track now for their pace lap. Let's run down the starting order. This, like yesterday, is going to be a split start. We're going to have our B-Spec cars to the rear, our production and GT cars to the front. Let's start off with the B-Spec cars where we have three. Starting in third position, driving the number 19, Chevrolet Sonic from Kannapolis, North Carolina, Josh Schmidt. Stuart Black is going to be starting second. He's in the number 40 Chevy Sonic, while Rob Karchek and his Honda Fit will start on pole with a qualifying time of 225.423. That's the number 99 car. Let's move over now to GT and production, starting 18th, driving the number 131F production, Acura Integra. Hopefully you got that car fixed. Tired a little early yesterday. It's Ben Gloka from Greensboro, North Carolina. Tom Gahn driving the number 49F production, Mazda Miata. will start 17th. The number 98H production, Austin Healy Sprite of Michael Miller starts 16th with Les Cheney's Acura Integra, the blue number 33F production machine starting 15th. Starting 14th, driving the number 60 H production Honda CRX from Cleveland, Tennessee. It's Vesa Silgren with Andrew Wright starting 13th. Andrew's in the number 07 H production Triumph Spitfire. Starting 12, driving the number 37 GT Light Mazda Miata. Hopefully we can find him here. It's David Blaine. Starting 11th, driving the number 10, GT Light Toyota Paseo. It's Chris Copley, Steve Sargis, our H production winner yesterday and also set a new track record in the class yesterday during our sprint race. He's driving the number 18, Spitfire. He's the pole sitter for H production. He starts 10th, starting 9th, driving the number 72, GT Light Honda CRX. From West Palm Beach, Florida, Peter Shadowin, Robert Garrison will start eighth. He's driving the number 06 F Production Mazda Miata. He's from Knoxville, Tennessee. Don Tucker will start seventh. Don's in the number nine E Production Mazda RX-7 with Graham Fuller starting sixth. He's in the number 22 GT Light Toyota Tercel. James Gregorius is your pole sitter in GT Light. He's going to start fifth in the number 09 Mazda RX-7. Starting on the outside of row number two, Driving the number 88 E Production BMW Z3. We've got Bryce McGuire out of Cary, North Carolina, while Doug Piner in the number 01, that bright green BMW Z3 from Hampstead, North Carolina, will start third. And your front row today, driving the number 50 E Production Caterham 7 from Pelham, North Carolina. We've got Peter Norton and your pole sitter driving the number 95 E Production Mazda RX 7 convertible from Vineland, New Jersey in the turf trade car. It's John Hainsworth. All right, here they come. This is our what's old is new and new is old again. I love the different smattering of newer cars and older cars now in the production classes. And of course, those B-Spec cars. Bringing up the rear here, you can see them coming down the hill right now through Hog Pen with our split start today. We're going to do it again. This is going to be 14 laps or 35 minutes, whichever comes first. Four races to go here as we round out our Super Tour visit here to Virginia International Raceway. Here they come down for the start for the first time here or for the last time on this race group this weekend. I'm so confused. First time, last time. I got a, a belly full of breakfast and my brain's not working quite so good. Here they go, <laughs> down to turn one. Everybody seems to be, at the moment, playing like good boys and girls. Pretty clean so far as they head on to that little run down to turns three and four. All right, Brian, we've got the second pack now coming up towards the start-finish line to take their green. 
And here and, they are. And there's one car, it looks like he might not belong. <laughs> yeah. Which of these cars does not belong? That yeah, looks like I a think Mazda that's, Yeah, I think that's Robert Garrison in the 06 car. He actually changed uh, changed race cars uh, going into today's race. And mm. as you can see, he's starting uh, at the back of the pack. I'll tell you, there was one car in our front group that got just an absolutely flying start. And uh, that was the Austin Healy Sprite, the age production car of Michael Miller. Uh, I don't know, I don't think he jumped the start, but he just shot the center and he was accelerating <laughs> when everybody else was still uh, at pace car speed. We'll leave it at that. Uh, but, <laughs> but we're already, Brian, starting to see pretty much what we saw yesterday here at the very front of our production car field. Now you've got Hainsworth in that higher horsepower uh, e-production Mazda RX-7, and then Peter Norton in the car, which, which corners like on rails. And uh, that's where you see they, they make their power and their speed in different places. And already, Hainsworth moved ahead at the start here. Peter Norton trying to hang on as much as possible. All right, so here is a big difference, though, a big change from what we saw during yesterday's race. Third, fourth car to come into view, well, he would have come into view if we stayed on that other camera, uh, is the yellow Honda CRX of Peter Shadow, and there is Peter just now coming down the roller coaster. He is now your leader in GT Lite. Uh, he is ahead of our reigning champion, Graham Fuller. Uh, looks like James Gregorius in the Mazda RX-7. He is a little bit further back. He's actually uh, two cars back now uh, from Fuller. Yesterday, the Honda CRX, and we talked about this during the broadcast, the, uh, the Honda CRX, the Shadow One, definitely seemed to be a bit off song, especially towards the end of the race where he fell back. Uh, Shadow One ended up finishing third in class. He took the last step on the podium, uh, you know, but he was somewhere around the lines about 40 seconds back uh, from Gregorius and Fuller, who finished first and second. So uh, maybe there was something that was at issue with that car. Uh, looks much, much stronger right now, but it uh, looks as though we've already got now Fuller trying to uh, to make up that position and get into the lead there as they come out of NASCAR and go into left hook. Yeah, if there was something amiss yesterday, it is no longer he is able to fight for the lead, but Graham Fuller there right on his tail. Fuller in that blue car, right behind the yellow car coming into our screen. That street st screen, that is our battle for first place in GT Lights. And if you see Shadow and pull away just a little bit in the straight line, but uh, that will be a fun one to watch here as we move into uh, the later portions of this race. Up front still, Hainsworth and Norton, no issues there. And I think we're gonna take a look here. Here comes our B-Spec field. Now you can see that Mazda Miata, he's gotten around the three B-Spec cars. He should be able to pull ahead and then allow these three drivers to have their fun out here. Right now, your leader in B-Spec is Stuart Black right behind him is Rob uh, Pekarczyk and no following. actually it looks like Josh no, Schmidt you're right. now is it moved is up Josh in the Schmidt. second and yep, Pekarczyk the, the pole sitter and the, the fit now drops back to third interesting yeah I got a I got a little message from from the, the gal who keeps who keeps Josh Schmidt going in this right direction and, and his she's wife. Um, she yes that would be his <laughs> wife Tina has implored us not to put the announcer's curse on today so okay so we'll just ignore him for the next that's right uh, next 13 laps or so. <laughs> so uh, it mentioned that uh, our H production winner yesterday, Steve Sargis, a uh, uh, multi-time national champion, drives a uh, uh, drives that uh, black number, uh, uh, probably the black number 18 uh, H production Triumph Spitfire. He reset the track record yesterday. Juan Bartel had set it originally at the runoffs here back in 2019 at a 215 flat. And uh, you know the temperatures were just spot on yesterday. Uh, for Sargis, who dropped the track record to a 214, 274. So, you know, almost, uh, what, uh, just about three quarters of a second. And uh, re really great conditions. And we've got these wonderful conditions. Again, if anything, it's maybe a little bit cooler than what these racers saw yesterday, uh, as we're somewhere around 57, 58 degrees ambient air temperature, maybe pushing as high as 60 right now. Yeah. Uh, although there's a little less cloud cover in the air, might be heating the track up just a little bit more, Brian. All right, so that green car you saw, that's Doug Piner. That is the BMW. He is in third place. There's that green BMW right there. And then we're back looking at that run. That's Peter Shadowin in the yellow Honda CRX. 
and then right behind him, Graham Fuller and that Toyota Tercel. You don't see the Tercel racing much anymore, Greg. No. But it is strong out here. Yeah, yeah it, it is. And, you know, so Graham took the national championship this year at Virginia International Raceway this fall after five, six years of racing uh, one of the, uh, the, the Mugen CRXs and uh, moved over to the Tercel, took it. The first time behind the wheel was only a month before the runoff and uh, got one event to kind of get his uh, get his feet wet and figure out the car and was able to take it to a national championship. As uh, we just see there, James Gregorius, who's running third in GT Light, run very wide coming out of the oak tree turn. You know, Greg, is that Tercel, did that used to be bodied as a Paseo? Because that was a really uh, fast setup there in, in the GT3, GT, GT4, GT Light back in the day. Uh, so, well... As far that particular car was not a Paseo, I okay. think uh, uh, originally the Paseo in streetcar guys was actually, I think, very much the same uh, as that uh, Tercel body right. there. The Paseo was a two door with uh, it had a trunk, but a much, much more of a fastback rear. We expected Chris Copley to be in a Toyota Paseo here this weekend. He normally runs. Uh, had been running for years, a British Leyland Mini. We'll try and pick him up, and I think he might have the that body. Of course, most of these GT light cars, Brian, all uh, silhouette body tube frame cars, so you could pretty much put a different Toyota body on it if you wanted. All right, here's and, your beast back race here, and you've got Stuart Black coming up here. That's the red car, and then the car behind him is the one I can't talk about. That's in second place, and then coming up from the back <laughs> is Rob Bakarczyk. <laughs> They're all working their way through lap number 11 here. Three car B-spec field here today. Uh, one of our smaller fields, but we usually have a, a bigger B-spec field, but uh, not for this race weekend. But they had fun yesterday, put on a pretty good show. They, they did, and they were all, for the first half of the race or so, in very close proximity, within maybe a car length or two, all within the draft. And it looks like Josh Schmidt is starting to close things down just a little bit on Stuart Black. We don't want to jinx it because Josh had an <laughs> off right here right yesterday going yep. down through the roller coaster a little bit later in the race but you can see he uses all that curving there lifts up the inside wheel but those two drivers now starting to move away uh from our b-spec pole sitter today uh Pekarczyk. and and i just wanted to uh, to verify i did see chris copley out on track it's very hard to pick up his toyota paseo because it is black with some very small white numbers on the side it kind of blends in around oh, yeah. here you're right but uh and a matter of fact here he comes right now he was uh, behind sargis this is yep. copley uh in the paseo he is now currently running yep he is currently running in fourth tenth. in gt light by right, fourth in gt light tenth overall correct taking a quick peek at the f production field right now ben gloka is the only F production car running at this race. We had a couple of other cars, I believe, out yesterday, uh, but the only one to take the green flag today is Brendan Glauca in that uh, Acura Integra. Yeah, se second gen Integra, and, and Ben's had some me uh, mechanical gremlins with that car uh, the past couple of years. Uh, I saw him here at a regional race two years ago where he took the win, um, He, but uh, his, his history in the Super Tour has been We'll call it checkered at best, and and not because he's gotten to the checkered flag, uh, but uh, <laughs> he's had a couple of retirements, including yesterday, where we saw where he had to take the car down the, uh, the south paddock pit lane, uh, which is just an hour right over here, yep, uh, about right three there. laps before the end of yesterday's race. All right, here comes our B-spec field. Oh, well, that was B-spec field coming out of Oak Tree. This is the fourth place battle, this black car and the white car. Yes. This is the battle for fourth place in F production. That's Tom Gann, or E production, I'm sorry. Um, it's uh, Bryce McGuire in the black yeah. number 88 BMW Z3. He started fourth today overall. And then Don Tucker uh, in his Mazda Miata, the number nine Mazda Miata, uh, white and blue, here as they come through uh, South Bend. And uh, yesterday, Tucker had one heck of a start. It got all the way up to, to third place, Brian, and then um, couldn't get the car turned in. 
at turn one and everything that he made up on the start. I think everybody went back by him. By the time he got to turn three, he was back in his original starting position, which was sixth. Um, but it uh, looks like he's got a pretty good run uh, going here today. That the, the, the BMW Z3 uh, definitely uh, much more of a torque monster than what we're going to find in the Mazda Miata straight inline six cylinder. Uh, good amount of torque out of the corners. There we go. Tucker makes the pass into fourth place, so he is now in fourth. Bryce McGuire falls back right there into fifth place. And you still have that uh, battle for GD Lights there right in front of them. That is the Peter Shadow and Graham Fuller battle. Shadow in that yellow car, Fuller in the blue car. And then Doug Piner's in the BMW, the green one in front. That's a different plaster. That's an e-production car. A lot of good stuff going on early here. Nine laps to go in our fourth race of the day. Everyone kind of settling in now, trying to make laps here until we get to the later half of this race. Big gap now between, uh, in e-production, between second and third place. It's now 27 seconds, but Peter Norton still hanging in up front. He's only 2.8 seconds behind John uh, Hainsworth. Hainsworth in the RX-7, and uh, Peter Norton is in the header of seven. Both have sevens, very different cars. Yeah, and Brian, as we were watching that uh, that little fight earlier between Tucker and Bryce McGuire, uh, and of course they got, uh, even with the, the change in position there, uh, been watching as they start to tighten things up with Doug Piner in that bright green BMW Z3. Uh, last time by, both uh, Tucker and McGuire were uh, almost eight-tenths of a second faster than uh, Doug Piner. And so uh, definitely starting to close things down. Yeah, Peter Norton looks like he had some, probably some problems getting through this slower traffic because I believe it's going to be about now a five second or so gap when they come to the line. It was 2.8 last time by. Let's see what happens when they cross the line this time because it is definitely larger than 2.8 seconds. My guess, five, five, six, I said five, it's 5.5 seconds. Uh, and, Brian, two cars. and Brian, a little disconcerting. We're going to see coming into our shot right now that battle for the lead in V-Spec. But right behind them uh, is the uh, is the F-Production Acura Integra with Gloka. And Gloka is starting to, to fall off the pace even of these V-Spec cars. When they came down the hill and through Hogpen, there was a big puff of white smoke from the rear of the car. I don't think that was tire smoke. I think that was emanating from the tailpipe. Uh, so we'll see here how much longer that 131 car manages to uh, to circulate. Yeah, and Josh Schmidt is getting a little bit of race heat is now in him. He is right there up on the tailpipe of Stuart Black, and he ducked out coming out of turn one, looking like he might try to make a move there and then tuck back in. Uh, but he is uh, he is not being incredibly patient at the moment, or maybe he is, but he's definitely <laughs> letting Stuart Black know he is there big in the mirrors. All right, uh, drivers that did not make the grid today for today's race, Les Cheney in his Acura Integra, that was an F production machine. He had some mechanical issues uh, back in qualifying on Friday, did not make yesterday's race either. Tom Gahn, driver of the number 49 F production Mazda Miata. He was, had this car out in Spec Miata earlier, retired early. Uh, might be some mechanical issues there, some gremlins. That car was uh, a little bit less than reliable last week in some of the point changes as well. Right. Coming up on seven laps to go, halfway point here, Greg. Let's do a call to grid, take our break, and when we come back, we will have the rest of this race all the way to the checkered flag. Attention in the paddock, attention to the paddock. First call to the grid for race group six, touring two, three, and four, super touring light, and super touring under. Race group six drivers, T2, T3, T4, STL, and STU. Please head to the grid. Your race starts next. All right, so let's take a quick break. We'll be back here in just a few moments from the IR. Hoosier Racing Tire is proud to be the presenting sponsor of SCCA Super Tour. Hoosier's mission is to be the dominant customer-driven provider of tires to race teams domestically and internationally. 
at Hoosier, we know that our success is dependent on how well we meet our customers' expectations by providing the safest, most reliable, high-quality race tires that put you in the winner's circle. For more information, see our trackside support personnel or the local Hoosier Racing Tire dealer near you. Or contact us at HoosierTire.com. Hoosier Racing Tires, truly tires designed for champions. Mazza Vineyards is the exclusive sparkling wine for podium celebrations at the Hoosier Racing Tire SCCA Super Tour, SCCA Runoffs, and Tire Rack SCCA Pro Solo. Celebrate your racing weekend with Mazza Vineyards and learn more at enjoymazza.com. Tire Rack was established over 40 years ago by an SCCA member with a passion to find the right tires, wheels, and now brakes and suspension products for racers and enthusiasts on both street and track. As official tire retailer of SCCA since 1995 and sponsor of the Runoffs Pole Award, along with the National Solo Program, Time Trial Nationals, and National Tour and Track Ride in America. Tire Rack is proud to support the SCCA and its members as they go have fun with cars. As the official fuel partner, Sunoco has been helping the SCCA and their drivers perform at their peak since 2001. Mile after mile, race after race, Sunoco has trusted the fuel over 50 racing bodies, including the SCCA, SCCA Pro Racing, Trans Am, NHRA, and NASCAR. As the largest manufacturer of race fuels, they're passionate about helping drivers and teams take the lead. To find race gas near you, visit SunocoRaceFuels.com or call Sunoco at 800-RACE-GAS. Bravo Trailers is the exclusive trailer partner of the SCCA. Owned by longtime SCCA racers, Bravo Trailers work better, load easier, and tow better because we build them with racers in mind. Visit BravoTrailers.com to see your new trailer in aluminum or steel. If you like what you see today, become part of the action by joining the Sports Car Club of America. Whether you want to drive, flag, organize, officiate, have fun with cars, or meet 65,000 enthusiast friends, SCCA offers plenty to feed your motorsports obsession. Ask someone trackside about how to get involved or visit SCCA.com for more information. All right, we're back here at VIR. This is our B, B Spec EFH Production TT Lights Grace. Let's do a quick reset in E Production. Your top three John Hainsworth, Peter Norton, Doug Piner. In B Spec, your top three Stuart Black, Josh Schmidt, and Rob Karchik. In F Production, one car in that class, Ben Gloka. And then we go to GT Lights. You've got Peter Shadowin, Graham Fuller, and James Gregorius, your top three there. And in H Production, Steve Sargis, Vesta Silligren, and Michael Miller. That's our reset as we come back for the last six laps here, Greg. All right, Brian, so a couple updates. Uh, ben Gloka, as we I noted, uh, was starting to fall off the pace in his Acura Integra. That last time around, he was almost 15 seconds off of his previous fast lap, turning 243s. Uh, to put that in perspective, uh, that is over 33 seconds off the pace of our leader, John Hainsworth. Uh, also, a have a, a retirement, Andrew Wright, driver of the number 07H Production Triumph Spitfire. Uh, we don't see him here because uh, he's got his car firmly ensconced in the pit lane <coughs> over by the South Paddock. And, uh, it looks like his day is now done. Uh, if we look at this, we, we had been following this GT Light battle here, Brian, early on. And Peter Shadowin now, he is uh, starting to extend his advantage over Graham Fuller. Uh, Fuller last time by, I think, experienced uh, an issue. He was actually coming out of, while we were break, coming out of Oak Tree, dropped the wheel out there, lost a lot of exit speed, was almost two seconds off the pace of Shadowin, and it now shows as he is probably a good 35 car lengths, actually more than 35 car lengths back from the CRS. that zoom meeting again let's uh let's take a look he's muted there we go i'm Brian. back <laughs> anyway what i was saying is that uh while that was a fairly close battle it is no longer also in e-product at the front hainsworth opening up an 8.6 second lead over peter norton so that has also gapped up just a bit hey maybe we can jump back to that b-spec fight yeah. uh here uh in and see how that is running into by the way just saw ben gloka and his Acura integra come down the pit lane and uh had the crew take a look at the car he is headed back out 
and I think he carried more speed off the pit lane than he did uh, on his last lap. So we'll check and see how he's doing. But our B-Spec racers should be coming up to the start-finish line now uh, to complete lap number uh, complete lap number eight, start lap number nine. So here is the battle, Black and Schmidt. Now, B-Spec is spec in, in so much as that they're all, uh, all of the cars of the same make should be fairly equal. We do have different cars in B-Spec. Here's Josh Schmidt going underneath Stuart Black and trying to make the move, but Black's got the right place to be going into the next corner, the next set of corners. So that is the situation there. But what I was saying was that this class has got several different makes and models. The makes and models very equal. And in this particular case, these are two Chevy Sonics. So from an equipment standpoint, they should be well matched. This is now driver against driver, mono, mono a mono. Yeah, for the most part, what you're going to find in B-Spec, Brian, of course, they all run on a uh, spec tire, regardless of the manufacturer. Uh, they, The class originally came about in the uh, around 2010, 2011 uh, time frame, both for pro racing as well as club racing here in the Sports Car Club of America, with a lot of manufacturer input uh, on suspension settings, on tuning settings. Uh, but for the most part, almost very little, if anything, that you can do to the drivetrains of these cars. Some of the uh, the cars have been given an alternate header, for example. Some of them have flat plate restrictors in order to dial the, the power back a little bit in, in the attempt to keep these multiple manufacturers uh, a very, very equal. Uh, they all have uh, an alternate shock and spring package that they can run typically uh, with the uh, same model number Bilstein shocks on them, you know, or you could run the stock suspension. Uh, but uh, again, it is made for some very close racing and the advisory committee for this class, especially since we don't have the pro racing ranks to worry about any longer. It's now just simply SCCA club racing uh, that uh, runs these B-spec cars. It, uh, they've done a very good job in maintaining parity over the years. Now, the line last time by it was a three tenths of a second gap, and it looked like Josh Schmidt may have had a little bit of a hard time getting through Oak Tree that time. Lost a lot of momentum coming in, and now at the line, it's going to be closer to a half a second or maybe even a second between these two cars. So there's still some time for him to make up that gap with four to go, but he's going to have to get it done here if he wants to get back with a chance to win this race. All right, it uh, looks like his second retirement in two days, Brian. Don Tucker, driver of the number nine E-Production Mazda Miata, makes the right turn, brings his car back behind the wall. So uh, he will retire now fifth in class. Uh, another car coming down the pit lane. That is the 06 machine of Robert Garrison. And uh, again, that was a, a machine that he brought out, a different car than what he qualified in. Looks like he is now done as well. There's and your Brian, leader in chief. Yeah, go, go ahead, ahead Brian. No, I was going to say, it looked like Shadowin lost a lot of ground that last yeah. time by. And although he's still a pretty good ways back, Graham Fuller starting to starting to tighten things up just a little bit. Yeah, last time by it was 7.9 seconds between Shadowin and Fuller. We'll see what it is this time by. And you still have Doug Piner right there in that, uh, that green BMW. Attention to the paddock, attention to the paddock, second call to the grid for race group six, T2, T3, T4, Super Touring Light, and Super Touring Under. Race group number six, T2, T3, T4, STL, and STU, please head to the grid. Looking at the front of our pack, John Hainsworth is your race leader and e-production race leader. He has a 10.9 second lead over Peter Norton, and then Doug Piner back another 30 seconds or so, 35 seconds from those two. That's what it looks like in e-production right now. There is Graham Fuller. That's that yellow CRX there. Now there's two cars between, uh, I'm sorry, that was Peter Shadowin in the yellow CRX. And Graham Fuller, now it looks like there's two cars between him and Shadowin. So a little bit of breathing room for Shadow in there. Fuller should be able to get around. Around the uh, the, the Z3. Right, uh, right, yeah. Uh, compared to an e-production car, I mean, there there is a lot of, um, uh, there's a lot more horsepower in the Z3. Obviously the Z3 is a much heavier car than that right. GT Lite car. 
uh, the GT Lite car far more nimble. Right. Yeah, but in theory, production cars should be faster, and the GT Lite car should be quicker. Yes. <laughs> That's a very good way to put it. You know, again, you, yes. you've got that straight six power versus, I think, 1.5 1 or 1.5 right. meter motor for the GTL car. Uh, you, you know, speed equals displacement, or displacement equals speed, or something like that. Well, that sounds way, way too smarty talk for me. <laughs> well, now it looks like uh, Doug Piner is slowing down a little bit because Peter Shadowin just drove pretty much right around him. Yeah, and a matter of fact, there was a call from uh, the corner station over by Oak Tree that Piner was almost at a dead stop uh, there. It looks like he's got the car back up. I don't know if he's back up to speed, but he's got the pace a little bit. We'll see if uh, he decides to bring the car down the pit lane or not. Uh, but our leaders, I think the next time uh, John Hainsworth, uh, who is our current leader, or Peter Norton in that Caterham, come by, they should be getting the white flag right. Yeah, Hainsworth is the leader, had last time by an 11, almost 12 second lead over Norton. So when we see that convertible RX-7 come into view next time, he'll be heading down towards the start stand to take the white flag for the final lap here. And I believe that's him right there coming up on the back of the B-spec field. Yeah, indeed, that is Hainsworth. I think that's uh, Steve Sargent, our production leader, just ahead of right. the B-spec cars. Uh, currently, to uh, to put things in perspective here, Doug Piner, who we were following there in that green uh, BMW Z3, his fastest lap of the session, a 208.3. That last time around, a 222.3. Yeah, so, definitely uh, not a good lap. No, certainly not. But <laughs> it, it looked as though he was back up to speed, Brian, uh, when he passed by me yeah. the last time. John Hainsworth, though, did you see that wiggle that he put in? Uh, coming through 14 as he tried to get this car straightened up to head down the hill in the 15. Uh, very, very loose there for him as he comes through hog pen now and onto the front straight. All right, and Josh Schmidt has slowly crept back into the discussion here. He's about a second behind Stuart Black, maybe even a little bit less now as the white flag comes out. So the leader overall is a lap ahead, but there is your B-spec leaders right there, Black and Schmidt, as they come across the line for the final lap as they try to keep it close and keep it together, the best race on the racetrack at this moment. Black seems to have the mark of Schmidt going through turn one. And now you're gonna see Peter Norton come through and try not to affect that lead for the B-spec cars there. He gets through the first car. He's now the car between Black and Schmidt. And he will get around uh, Sh uh, Black here. Just coming out of five is my guess. Oh, and possibly Schmidt can pull right up there behind him and get back to the back bumper of Stuart Black as they come through the snake here. You're gonna see Norton sneak by, sneaky sneak by through the snake, and right there behind him is Josh Schmidt now, about one car length back from Stuart Black. Wow, and as we see, right the, there. That, that was the Toyota Paseo of Copley that uh, just kind of snuck by as they were going into the S's. And I think that move there, Brian, brought Stuart Black back to Josh Schmidt. Uh, for this very last run to the checkered flag. and uh, But Schmidt, he had a little, bit, a little bit more exit speed out of South Bend. We'll see what he does here as he comes out of Oak Tree for the last time. That's right, they're gonna pull up the big hill here. It does look like Black is a little bit better through Oak Tree than Schmidt. He's got about a two car length lead now as they come up the hill. Schmidt's gonna have maybe one more chance here going into 13-14 here. Before they get to Hogpen, the last really good passing chance. Let's see if he can make it happen here. They should come into our view right about now. That's Black, that's Schmidt right behind him. No, not close enough to make a move there. Now they gotta go through Hogpen, or roller coaster, then Hogpen. And Brian, you know, what we've seen in the past couple of years here with the runoffs is for these B-spec cars, there's not one not strong enough of a draft. Wow, as, as you see oh. Stuart Black with that inside rear wheel about a foot and a half in the air. Th there, this run to the checkered flag isn't enough room, I don't think, to, to be able to slingshot past with the draft. But we'll see here as they come into our view. 
Yep, here they come. It's Black in first, Schmidt in second, and that's the way they're going to come across the line. Stuart Black with the win, and Josh Schmidt coming in second. All right, so let's go. We'll run down our other classes there as Rob Pekarczyk. We'll see him coming across the line in a few moments. He should finish third in B-Spec. In GT Light, Peter Shadowin takes the win eight over eight seconds clear of Graham Fuller, our current national champion. James Gregorius will finish in third. Chris Copley fourth. David Blaine rounds out your top five. Ben Gloka, I believe, it does make it to the checkered flag. Gloka, uh, actually, well, let's take a look because I'm showing him now with only 10 laps complete. I know he spent a little bit of time on the pit lane. We'll, uh, we'll verify whether or not he takes the checker. Uh, but let's take a look at uh, H Production, where Steve Sargis, no track record today, but he gets win number two on the weekend over Vesa Silgren. Today, the margin over 45 seconds. Michael Miller will finish in third. And then Andrew Wright, rec rec pardon me, retires early after six laps. Uh, in E Production, John Hainsworth, Peter Norton, Doug Piner, with Bryce McGuire finishing just off the podium. And uh, Don Tucker, Robert Garrison, both retiring early. That's right, so going to do it. Yeah, I was going to say, let's, let's, that's going to do it for the last group. Let's make a quick call to the yep. grid for our next group, and then we'll take a quick little break. <laughs> attention to the paddock, attention to the paddock. Touring 2, Touring 3, Touring 4, Super Touring Light, Super Touring Under Racers. Please head to the grid. T2, T3, T4, STL, and STU Racers. Please head to the grid. Your race starting in just a few moments. All right, so let's take a quick break. And when we come back, three more races here today from Virginia International Raceway, where you're watching the 2024 Hoosier Racing Tire SCCA Super Tour on Driver's Eye Live. For over 25 years, championship winning drivers and teams have demanded Hawk Performance Motorsports brake pads. Now you can have their advanced technology on your daily car, truck, or SUV with Hawk Performance Street products. With the improved HP Plus pad for the hybrid street and track feel or Super Duty pads for tow vehicles, their all-new ER brake pad designed to take on even the longest race and their all-new high-performance brake fluid. Hawk has all your braking needs covered. Visit hawkperformance.com and like them on Facebook or Instagram to learn more about the Hawk Performance Advantage. Hawk Performance, what's stopping you?
You're looking live at the start stand and the pagoda. That's not really called the pagoda here, I don't think. It's the North at, Tower. The, pagoda. the North Tower. It's a little at, further back there somewhere. Wave to us, Greg. Hi. <laughs> hey, everybody. Fourth window from the left is Greg there. Anyway, this is Virginia National Raceway, round 10 of the Hoosier Racing Tire SECA Super Tour. I'm Brian Belansky. Greg Gingsburg's in Virginia, right there at the racetrack, and we are having a blast. Three races to go, Greg. Yes, three more to go, and heading onto the track now for their pace lap, our touring cars and our super touring cars. Let's take a look here at the breakdown. We're going to have our touring cars start up front, going to have the super touring cars in the rear with the pace car somewhere in the middle there somewhere. <laughs> Let's give you the first seven rows in super touring, starting 14th, driving the number 06 STL Mazda Miata, Robert Garrison. Didn't we just see him a few Go. Starting 13th, driving the number 171, STL Mazda Miata, Zachariah Rosenberg. Whitfield Greg's going to start 12th. He's in the number 17, STL Mazda MX-5. Brian Hooper starting 11th. He's in the number 42, STL Honda Civic SI. He's out of Greensboro, North Carolina. Ricardo Aruda is going to start 10th. He's driving the number 16, STL Mazda MX-5. Then we've got Mark Johnston. Mark is driving the number 71, STU Nissan 2. 40 SX is out of Falling Waters, West Virginia. Harbir Das is going to start eighth. Harbir is driving the number 49 STL Mazda MX-5. Then we got Jim Schlechta. Jim is driving the number 75 STU Nissan 300 ZX. He's listed at being out of Moab, Utah. I had a good conversation with Jim and his son yesterday. Starting 20, uh, probably starting six, driving the number 37 STL Mazda Miata from Manson, Washington, Amy Mills. Austin Hill scheduled to start fifth. He's driving the number eight STL Mazda MX-5 with Chuck Hines, yesterday's STL winner, starting in fourth. He's driving the number 57, bright green Mazda MX-5. David Brand starting in third. He's driving the number three STU Lotus Exige. He's out of Syosset, New York. And your front row, David Fiorelli and then Darren Treacle Fiorelli in the STU Ford Mustang. Treacle in the STU BMW 325. Now let's take a look at our touring car racers. Starting 16th, driving the number 187, touring for Scion FRS, Matt Sisson. Starting 15th in the number zero T4 Ford Mustang, Scotty B. White. Jeremy Butts is starting 14th. He's in the number 69 T4 Mazda MX-5. Carl Fung starts 13th. He's in the number 116 Touring 2 Chevy Corvette Z06. Then Christian Braunlich is going to start 12th today after getting a uh, transmission replacement in his Mazda RX-8. Uh, he is in the number 83 car racing in Touring 4. Mark Cephalo will start 11th today. He's in the number 00, zero Mazda MX-5. That's a Touring 4 car. Ben Schlechter, that's, uh, that's Jim's son, is going to start 10th today. He's in the number 87 Touring 3 Nissan 350Z. Angelica Spray will start 9th today on the field. She's in the number 120 Touring 4 Toyota GR86 with David Orem starting in 8th position. He's in the number 6. Touring 3 BMW Z4M. And I think that's one of the uh, the x Ot cars that won the championship here back in 2022. Starting 7th, driving the number 41. Touring 3 BMW, it's Chris DeShong with Michael Chameleon. Driving the number 99, Touring 2 Ford Mustang. Starting 6th, starting 5th. Driving the number 61. Touring 3 BMW, Simon Foulweather with Joe Bowden. Starting in fourth position, driving the number 45, Touring 2 Porsche 911. Rob Hines starting third today. He's in the number four, Touring 3 Nissan 350Z. And now we get to the front row. Starting second, driving the number 46, Touring 2 Ford Mustang, Alan Phillips. And your pole sitter today, driving the number 35, Touring 2 Cadillac CT4 Blackwing with a qualifying time of 203.039. Multi-time national champion, John Heinrich. Yeah, and yesterday, they finished Heinrichsee, Joe Bowden, and Darren Trago. That was your top three yesterday. So we'll see how that all plays out today. Lights are out in the pace car as that first group heads down hog pen. Next time we see them, they will be on the front straight, looking hopefully at a green flag. 14 laps or 35 minutes, whichever comes first. Let's hope it's 14 laps. <laughs> Fingers and toes are crossed. There's your second group of cars as they come up towards Hogpen. That is your touring group. Here they come. Green flag is in the air. They head down to turn one for the first time here. 
That black car on the inside, that is the Cadillac. Gets out to the front spot single file as they come through one. I don't see any brake lockup. Good sign there. I That's hope not, the Brian. They all got they all got uh, uh, ABS in the car. Uh, I'd find a way to lock them up. There I would go. find a way. <laughs> Here they come through three and four. That Cadillac sure is a pretty look race car, by the way. It is. All right, Brian, our second group on the front straight, ready to take the Super Touring start. Here they come, Super Touring. And the green flag, of course, there for these guys as well, guys and gals. They barrel down now towards turn one. Side by side, we'll see if they come single file as they come through one. And it appears at least up front they have. They'll probably still be a little side by side in rows three, four, five is my guess. That tends to be how it plays out here. Yep, row number three, still side by side coming out of there. Yeah, Darren Treek will jump it out to a real quick start there uh, yep. in Super Touring in that STU BMW. Uh, already opening up a couple of car lengths on David Fiorelli's Ford Mustang. And, uh, and then we've got David Brand. Now remember, Brand had that uh, had that uh, spin yesterday. Got the car back underway, but lost another number of positions early on in the race uh, that kind of put him on the back foot. And uh, here is uh, here is uh, a big change uh, yesterday, Brian. We saw that that fight in STL uh, between Chuck Hines in the green <laughs> the green Mazda, and then Austin Hill, who's in the SMX car, the Spec MX5 car. And uh, Austin was, um, uh, uh, how do we put this? He, he was very expressive. Expressive, <laughs> yes, that's good. And there's the Lotus in front in the mix as well right here. It, to quote the great Yogi Berra, it's like deja vu all over again. And look at the back of- Chuck loves mom. Yeah, well, and also apparently has a friend named Ken who uh, he hopes gets better. <laughs> All right, so uh, our first group now, Brian, crossing the, the start-finish line and starting lap number two. And I wanted to talk a little bit uh, about Touring 4. Now, yesterday we had a great race between Angelica Spray and Mark Cephalo. Spray was leading the race, I think, going into... We had gone to a full-course caution period, and uh, Spray lost the lead uh, the first lap after we went to, uh, back to green course racing here. But they weren't challenged by Christian Braunlich. Braunlich had a mechanical issue in qualifying yesterday morning in which uh, he damaged the transmission. And they needed to get that transmission replaced. Uh, uh, Steve Eckrich and his team worked on it, got that car back together. We saw Braunlich out for his session, uh, for a hardship session this morning. Braunlich finished second at the runoffs T4 uh, this past year. He's out of Fort Mill, South Carolina, and that was, I believe, his, only his second year racing. Um, his father, Chris Braunlich, has been racing here in the Southeast for a number of years. So uh, we should uh, watch and see what the young Braunlich uh, driver uh, does here against some very strong competition. Last time we saw the shot at turn three, I thought I saw a car off there. We don't have to go to it, but maybe... Uh, uh, Ryan can just take a peek on that camera, tell me if that car is still there. Maybe I was completely making it up. Whatever the case may be, John Heinrichsy has now moved into a 2.4 second lead over Alan Phillips here. Uh, both of those are T2 cars, and they got Joe Bowden in second, Michael Kamalian in third, fo uh, fourth, I should say, Joe Bowden in third, Michael Kamalian in fourth. That's your top four in T2. And a touring crew can see right behind the Chameleon number 99 machine. That is one of our Nissans. That is Rob Hines. He's your T3 leader. Uh, he took the win yesterday in touring three. There he took the win over Simon Foulweather. Uh, Hines finished fifth overall uh, in the group and uh, Hines a former T3 national champion. Well, and the perfect prognostication of our director, Ryan, as you were talking about Simon, Simon Fallweather, pops up the in-car camera for this T3 car as they come now towards turn three. And well, if there was a car there, it is not there anymore. That answers my question on that question. Nope, but right ahead of him is that uh, Rob Hines Nissan that uh, right. Fallweather is challenging for the lead right now in touring three. And they are starting to get bottled up a little bit behind that number 99 T2 car of Chameleon. So here's a good battle here as they 
At least the battle ahead looks like it's pretty good. And Fowlweather's trying to catch up to make it a three-way battle. They come here through the climbing S's. Once they get the top of the hill, the uh, the roadway breaks away and falls falls away just a little bit right here as they make a short run downhill towards Oak Tree. And Brian, this uh, BMW of Fowlweather uh, definitely appears to have uh, some straight line uh, challenges compared to the Nissan of Rob Hines ahead. Uh, interestingly, this is one of those spec E46 chassis. Uh, back in 2019, we had a spec E46 car take the win in the T3 National Championship here at uh, Virginia International Raceway. Uh, and uh, there hasn't, there haven't been any changes, any additional weight or anything put on the cars, but I think in the meantime, some of uh, the cars that were felt to maybe be a little bit disadvantaged, for example, the T3 uh, Nissan 350Z of Rob Hines, which was one of the heaviest cars in the class, have received uh, some changes in the tires that are available to them. I think they can run a little bit wider tire now than they were back in 2019 and may have been, uh, may have gotten a little bit of a weight break as well and, and you could just see the difference there uh, that uh, you know foul weather just uh, and we'll, maybe we'll see it again this next time by here as they're coming into turn one he will just continue to lose ground to Hines, especially as they come out of turn five and start to make the run over towards the uphill lessons well Hines has the benefit of drafting off of that mustang in front of him that Mustang at T2 car should be slightly faster, but I think he's taking advantage of the draft to stay ca uh, caught up. That's, of course, helping him to pull away from fall weather as well. 11 laps to go here. Heinrichy, Bowden, Phillips, Kamalian uh, is the top four in T2 and the top four overall. Looking at T3, we've got Heinz, Fallweather, and Deshong. That's your top three there. Then we go to T4, and we've got Angelica Spray. Um, Mark Cephalo and Christian Bronlick is your top four in T4. STU, Darren Trankel, David Fiorelli, David Brand, and STL, Chuck Hines, Austin Hill, and Amy Mills. And there is that silver car right there is that Rob Hines car that we were talking about following right uh, behind Michael Kamalian. The in car that we had a full weather earlier is the white car right in the back. That's the BMW. Right, exactly. The uh, white with the uh, red stripes coming down the side. And uh, again, foul weather coming to us from Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, Chris Shong in his spec E46 machine. That is the uh, uh, Skip Barber Racing School livery to number 41 machine. He's been having some some braking issues. Actually, it sounds more like electrical issues related to the brakes right. um, over the course of the weekend where uh, uh, the car thinks that uh, he's getting into the brake pedal when he is not. Sounds like the, this is always an issue with old Hondas, the, uh, the little brake switch uh, right. that would determine whether or not the pedal was pressed down or not. Um, but uh, he's been nursing, he's been trying to figure that out all weekend. It's been affecting the performance of the car as Austin Hill. Now taking a look to the inside of Chuck Hines. Yeah, definitely taking a look to the inside. Nothing happening at the moment, but uh, he has been, I, I will tell you, on the drive home for Chuck Hines, he is not going to be unhappy to not have Austin Hill behind him. Because <laughs> Austin Hill has been behind him literally all for <laughs> all, all weekend long. And uh, it has definitely been a challenge, right. but Heinz has been up to that challenge so far. He needs to be up to the challenge for another 10 laps if he wants to keep it together and take the win here in yeah. STL. Yeah, indeed. And so what we're seeing, Brian, is in the higher speed sweepers, uh, Chuck Heinz machine definitely has the, uh, the, 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 has the speed through the corner, the apex speed over the red MX-5 that Austin Hill is driving. And we can see Hill using every advantage, actually using some of the dirt to the inside of the apex at, at uh, Hogpen to try and carry speed. Where Austin Hill's SMX-based car uh, has strength are in the lower speed corners uh, where you don't have to rely on the aero advantage Heinz has with that big wing on the back. Uh, that is something that the SMX cars do not carry as part of their spec. I wonder if Heinz really could pull away, but is choosing not to so that Mom and Ken can get a lot of love from the in-car camera. <laughs> but if he just stays there, then then Mom and Ken really know how much Chuck feels about them. Oh, well, good move by Hill, trying to do a uh, over-under there, going in the four, just, oh, wow, just doesn't have the pace for it. 
Yeah, it's it's he's right there, and 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 Ch and Chuck Hines not making any any mistakes. That's the thing. All Hines has to do is have just a tiny little bit of a bobble, and Austin Hill's gonna just tra freight train right by. And I think uh, Hill lost a little bit. Yeah, lost yeah. a little bit of momentum there. Maybe made a slight mistake, and now you see Chuck Hines just pull away. All right, so let's do this. Um, there's another battle I've been watching here, Brian, and this is the battle. It's for fourth and touring four. Uh, this is the battle between Scotty B. White. He's in the silver number zero Ford Mustang. And then we've got Matthew Sisson. He's in the white number 187 uh, Scion FRS. They were locked nose to tail just a few moments ago. We'll see if we can pick them up here. Uh, this is one of our closest racer races in class uh, currently. I believe, yeah, let's see. I'll, I'll see if we can pick him up here. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna give us a better, I'm gonna give us a better battle to watch. This is for the battle for the lead in Touring 4. They're coming sure. down into Turn 1 right now. We've got Angelica Spray. She is in the silver, uh, silver and green and black 120 Sci uh, Scion FRS. And then we've got Mark Cephalos, that green and uh, yellow uh, Mazda Miata, Maz NC Miata, that is the battle for the lead currently. They were locked nose to tail coming down the front straight, Brian, here. And this is the battle that we saw yesterday for the win. Yep, and there it is now, going to come right into our living room. That is Spray right there. And right behind her is the the Mark Cephalo car. And Christian Braunlich in that red Mazda RX-8. He's kind of stalking them back there. He's pretty darn close. Catch them next time here, going through the climbing S's. There they are. Gray is able to pull ahead just a little bit there, going up the hill. And it might be that Cephalo is a little quicker in the twisty bits. We'll, we'll see how this plays out here as they come around Oak Tree. The real key is if you how well you do Oak Tree. And it looks like Cephalo does Oak Tree really, really well. And is able to get a nice run off of Oak Tree. And then that long, long straightaway. We'll see if he's able to pull right up to the back bumper there before they get to turn uh, 14, 13, 14. All right, Brian, we just had the number 75 machine come down the pit lane. Uh, that was the, uh, the Schlechter STU machine. He's taking his car back to the paddock. His day wants to be done. Here they come, and it looks like Angelica has been able to pull ahead here and stay ahead. That's good news for her. And Mark Cephalo here is trying to get caught back up, but doing a great job. Stay in front here. Now back on board with T3 car Simon Fullweather here. That's coming through turn three and heading now towards turn four. Yeah, and we look we look here and Foulweather continues to fall off the pace of Hines ahead, although Foulweather just ran his fastest lap of the race. Uh, it was about a tenth off of what uh, Hines has been running, you know, but it's it's interesting to watch this because, it's, again, especially through the slower portions of the course, we can see where that 99 Mustang of Chameleon uh, cannot hold a, a candle to the uh, independent rear suspension on the Nissan of Heinz, but Heinz just doesn't have the legs. We can see there up through the S's where uh, the Mustang uh, just starts to scoot away uh, there from from Heinz. We'll see what happens on the back straight here, but Foulweather, I think he's going to need a, a pretty big stroke of luck to get back up to the back of uh, Heinz's number four machine at this point. Foulweather does a nice job getting past that slower car as they headed into Oak Tree. No issues there. All right, guys, We looks like we are going to be going to a full course caution. Uh, we And indeed we are. We've got a car that's gone off over at 17. Is the number 87 machine. That is Ben Schlechter. We just talked about uh, about dad, Jim Schlechter, retiring his car. Ben Schlechter in the uh, T3 Nissan 350Z. Uh, off, I oh, believe, over by 17. And we'll see if we can, uh, we may be able to get it on replay here. But we are now under full course caution, Brian. 
So uh, why don't we do this, uh, Brian, as we're, uh, what, about 15 minutes into this 35-minute race, yeah. and actually on laps, we're just about halfway. Let's make a first call to the grid for our next group, and we'll uh, take a little break. Attention in the paddock, attention in the paddock. First call to the grid for race group number seven, Spec Racer Ford Gen 3, please head to the grid. Spec Racer Ford Gen 3 racers, please head to the grid. All right, let's take a little break. And interestingly enough, I just saw Ben Schleck to drive by me, but let's take a quick little break and we'll be right back here with more action from Virginia International Raceway. For 25 years, championship winning drivers and teams have demanded Hawk Performance Motorsports brake pads. Now you can have their advanced technology on your daily car, truck, or SUV with Hawk Performance Street products. With the improved HP Plus pad for the hybrid street and track feel, or Super Duty pads for tow vehicles, their all new ER brake pad designed to take on even the longest race, and their all new high performance brake fluid. Hawk has all your braking needs covered. Visit hawkperformance.com and like them on Facebook or Instagram to learn more about the Hawk Performance Advantage. Hawk Performance, what's stopping you? Tire Rack was established over 40 years ago by an SCCA member with a passion to find the right tires, wheels, and now brakes and suspension products for racers and enthusiasts on both street and track. As official tire retailer of SCCA since 1995 and sponsor the Runoffs Pole Award, along with the National Solo Program, Time Trials Nationals and National Tour, and Track Night in America, Tire Rack is proud to support the SCCA and its members as they go have fun with cars. Mazza Vineyards is the exclusive sparkling wine for podium celebrations at the Hoosier Racing Tire SCCA Super Tour, SCCA Runoffs, and Tire Rack SCCA Pro Solo. Celebrate your racing weekend with Mazza Vineyards and learn more at enjoymazza.com. Get more bang for your buck at summitracing.com. Choose from millions of in-stock parts from over 1,500 named brands. Parts for racing, street performance, trucks, plus tools, accessories, and more. Shop anytime, anywhere with the Summit Racing app. Hoosier Racing Tire is proud to be the presenting sponsor of SCCA Super Tour. Hoosier's mission is to be the dominant customer-driven provider of tires to race teams domestically and internationally. At Hoosier, we know that our success is dependent on how well we meet our customers' expectations by providing the safest, most reliable, high-quality race tires that put you in the winner's circle. For more information, see our trackside support personnel or the local Hoosier Racing Tire dealer near you, or contact us at HoosierTire.com. Hoosier Racing Tires, truly tires designed for champions. Back here at VIR, as you can see, the cars ambling slowly down the front straight under a full course yellow. Greg, we've got some more information about why we've slowed this race down. Yeah, indeed. So it was not the 87 machine. I, I think I mentioned race we were going to break that I saw the 87 drive by me at speed. Um, getting, getting into the wall right near the entrance to the pit lane was actually the 187, the touring four uh, Scion FRS of Matt Sisson. Uh, Matt, uh, the, the 2021 Northeast Division Spec Miata champion, uh, the 2022 Northeast Majors Spec Miata, uh, finished second in the championship and then third last year. Uh, he's sitting or uh, driving in T4 this year, and he was actually leading uh, the T4 Majors Championship for the Northeast Conference coming into this week. And interestingly enough, in a backup car uh, that he typically drives drives an NC Mazda MX-5 that they had electrical issues with. Uh, he, he had this car, this uh, Scion, delivered to him from, uh, from the Chicago area that a friend had and had it prepped and ready to go uh, that he could use it pretty much as a loaner. And unfortunately, you know, it doesn't work out for him here today. He took both wins at Summit Point last week in this chassis and he had hoped to have the Mazda ready to go. You know, I hate to say it, but it looks like he might be on, a hook, on the hook for a, uh, another car here. <laughs> uh, and, and 
technically the car is going to be on the hook hopefully in a few minutes so um, but that is where we stand why don't we go and reset the field here brian while we're under full course caution yeah i can do that for you no problem let's go to our stl field right now chuck hines is your race leader followed by austin hill and amy mills and stu it's D uh, darren trackle david fiorelli and david brand looking at t2 john heinrich also your race leader joe Bowden, and alan phillips now looking at t3 rob Hines, simon foweather and chris Deshong. And then finally, T4, Mark Cephalo, who's gotten around Angelica Spray, and Christian Brolic is your top three. Yeah, and that is going to uh, uh, interesting there with that that battle because it's going to bring Bronlich right back, or Bronlich, pardon me, right back into uh, the fight there in T4 as he was the next car behind Cephalo and Spray. And as a matter of fact, we right. see them coming into our view right now, coming up the hill, uh, going into turn 11. That's I'm sure Bronlich in that red. Uh, Mazda RX-8 is going to want to try and stay as close as possible to Spray's Toyota. Uh, and I think I called it a Scion FRS earlier. It's a Toyota GR86. Same thing. Right. And, uh, <laughs> essentially. <laughs> essentially, yes. Yeah, different, different bench. Uh, and uh, well, actually, that's the new. It's her car is the second generation of uh, what were known as the twins. Right. The, the, the Toyota or Scion and the, the Super BRZ. Um, but uh, yeah, he's, a, he's in a very good spot. All right, getting word now always, that uh, that oh. the pace car, probably the safety car, is going to be shutting out the lights, Brian, and coming oh. in this time by. So we're going to be going back to green flag racing much sooner than I expected. Well, that is good news. I think we're going to have four laps to go when we come back to green. And I think with 13 minutes to go, uh, five laps to go, I take that back when we come back to green. With 13 minutes left on the clock, that's still probably enough time to get it, get us in on laps here. Yeah. All right, Brian, real quick, before we go back green, let me make a second call to the grid for our next group. Okay. Attention in the paddock. Attention in the paddock. Second call to the grid for Spec Racer Ford Gen 3. Spec Racer Ford Gen 3 racers, please head to the grid. Your race is next. All right, Brian, back to you. There we go. <laughs> See cars starting to kind of pick up the pace just a tiny bit as they get ready to go back to the green flag, heading down the roller coaster here. Everyone's all smooshed back together after the split start earlier. That All that advantages have now gone away. So now you're going to have all the super touring cars in with all the touring cars here for the last five laps of this race, which could be a bit of an adventure, Greg. I'm all for adventure. I know. <laughs> Greg's Greg's middle name is Adventure. That, that 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 it is. It used to be Scott, but it is now it's Adventure. Adventure. Yes. All Greg right, Venture five to go. Oh, I see one car going off on the inside of the main straight as they head down for the green flag. Not sure who that was, but they kept on going. Yeah, and that's right at the little kink on the front straight, Brian. There is some curbing over there, and a lot of drivers they use that to try and straighten the line out. Uh, down to turn one, but it looks like all of our racers made it through there successfully. Yeah. They're like, I always want to get to the end now. There is a big pack, though, of two by three by racing about 10 rows back from the start. So we'll keep watching on that. There is John Heinrich in that beautiful Cadillac coming through right behind him. Joe Borden, Bowden in the Porsche 911, 997 series. There is Simon Fowether right on the back bumper of Rob Hines in that Nissan 370. Yeah, and this might be Fowether's best chance while this pack is still bottled up a little bit. Uh, we see where Hines opened up a little bit of ground through the S's, but misses that last apex and runs a little wide. Has to get on the thro or get on the brakes a little bit earlier than Fowether. Gets a good run down the hill. Takes a look to the inside of Hines. Hines goes all the way driver's right to cover. Well, now Fowether tries to take the preferred line through that last part of Oak Tree to get as good a run as possible up the hill. But you're going to see, look at Kynes just pull away here as they trudge up that hill. There's some more dust out there. Somebody put a wheel off through Oak Tree. There. Yeah, I think, right, Brian, there. that that might have been the machine right behind Fowether. Uh, that being Chris Deshong in the number 41 BMW uh, that ran a little wide through there. As uh, he now drops back, you see he lost two positions. Uh, he falls back behind Ben Schlecht in the 87 Touring 3 machine and 
J. David Orem. So uh, uh, loss of positions in class, that really hurts uh, there for the 41 machine. Takes him out of a podium paying position, drops him back to fifth. Wow, and Chuck, that out just like that. John Heinrich opens up a half a second lead over Joe Bowden. I'm sorry, a two second lead over Joe Bowden in less than a lap here. Now we're back on board with Austin Hill. He is right behind, I guess that's the Angelica Spray in the. Yeah, and that's Angelica Spray, and Spray had some big issues on lap number one, Brian. Or, or on, yep. pardon me, on the restart, she had been running 11th overall, uh, right behind Mark Cephalo, but falls back, moves uh, Kristen Braunlich up into second in T4. She falls all the way back to 15th position, and uh, there is then Austin Hill. But uh, you might ask, where is where is Chuck Hines in that green number 57 Mazda Miata? He is two cars back. Uh, from Austin Hill. We've got David Fiorelli, uh, Fiorelli in the Ford Mustang directly behind him. That is an STU car. And uh, actually, David Brand has gotten around Fiorelli. Uh, so we've got an STU, STU, and then Chuck Hines in his STL car. He's got a big fight in front of him. But right now, Austin Hill, our new leader in STL. And now all he has to do is keep this car on the racetrack, not get into any problems here. He's realized that he is not racing that T4 car. And looking behind him, he has a, a, a little buffer between him and Chuck Hines. So he, he can just play this smart. Now he's gotten, well, almost gotten around, but but, but not. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, it's maneuvers like that that put you up into a position where you're going to go side by side through the slowest corner on the course, Brian, coming onto the longest back straight on the course that may allow your competitor, uh, Chuck Hines, to close up the gap. And I think we are starting to see that uh, just a little bit. Yeah, the red car there is Austin is hit. Hill. And then yeah, right and then Hines now, now right, Hines. Yeah, right back to the rear bumper of the number eight machine. And, you know, we, we know what Hines or what Hill was trying to do. He wanted to clear this touring four car. Uh, uh, to make things harder for Chuck Hines, but in doing so, he actually opened up the door for the 57 car. And if you look in the corner, the top right corner of this in car, you'll see Hines ducking under onto the inside. He's gonna try to push Angelus to spray. Oh, he's going on the right side, sorry. And he makes that pass. What a strong move there, going past the start finish line, all on horsepower. And there you see Austin Hill put his hands in the air again. Yeah. As we said yesterday, very expressive inside the inside right. the cockpit. Well, you know, maybe we should give him the middle name adventure because that's uh, that's what we've <laughs> been seeing from him uh, the last yep. two days. Every, every corner is an adventure with Austin Hill uh, as Chuck Hines retakes the lead, at least momentarily. Hines now coming down the inside to protect, going in the left hook. Oh my gosh. Wow, this is a very, very busy part of the racetrack. Three laps to go here, and this is your battle for the lead in STL. Hines is the green car, Austin Hill the in car, and then they've got other class traffic around them that they're all having to negotiate. Chuck Hines trying to put some buffer between him and Austin Hill. That'd be the best thing for him right now. Let Austin Hill deal with these other cars as Hines tries to pull away. Yeah, and I believe that that was uh, one of our T4 MX-5s that he uh, put between, I don't have the number on it. Uh, oh, actually, that's Jeremy Butts in an, S in an STL car, who I think is now a lap down, uh, that uh, he put between he and Austin Hill. Now, there are a couple of other very good races going on a track as laps are winding down. We've got Joe Bowden trying to hold off Alan Phillips for second in touring two. Uh, and, you know, right in this this fight as we've been watching Hines and Hill just ahead of them now are uh, I think David Brand and uh, Fiorelli as well that is the battle for second in touring two yeah this is quintessential multi-class racing it's hard to keep track of who's where and and which other classes might be involved in this battle. But look at all those cars close together. Some hey, of them actually battling for leads in their class. All right, Brian, if we can go to the shot coming here right at the start-finish line, we've got a big change at the front of T4. 
now in the lead, that red Mazda RX-8, Christian Bronwich. He got around Mark Cephalo coming up to the top of the roller coaster, and uh, it is getting very, very crowded there down going into turn number one as uh, Cephalo had to try and get around. It looks like there's another car right up there with them. And I think that's the brand car, if I'm not mistaken, the STU car. Uh, but uh, yeah, right now, Christian Bronwich, he's your new leader in ST, in, uh, pardon me, in Touring 4. And then right in front of him is the Lotus. That is David Brand. He's trying to keep up with Fiorelli. That's a battle for the last spot on the podium in STU as well. Uh, Fiorelli's in that Mustang directly, right. uh, is in the Mustang that is between Bronwich and Cephalo, the black car. And it uh, looks like, as we're also watching these fights, it looks like Austin Hill and Chuck Hines are back together uh, as well. But two great fights going on right now for the win in class. Oh, wow. As we go back to Austin Hill. Yeah, it looks, I think that was the move for first place in STL. I don't know if Hines can get Hines back still there. him here. He is right there behind him. And he'll put a wheel off there. You can see the dust and Hines right there we're going to come up on two to go, or one to go next time by for uh, John Heinrichsy. So these are vast and furious battles, four top steps on the podium in several classes. Yeah, and that was J. David Orem in the uh, BMW Z, uh, Z4 uh, directly ahead, <laughs> certainly causing some issues. But look at this, side by side, Heinz gets back around Austin Hill. Wow, look at that. And now we've got a picture we've seen a lot this week, Ken Hill right behind Hines, and it's gonna be that way. The, as they come by this time, you're gonna see the white flag in the air off to the right when they come over, uh, when they come past the start finish line, as they will be starting the final lap here. There is the flying white flag as these two cars head down to turn one. Hines doing, or um, Hill with the better line. Hines is trying to defend going into turn one. That might be successful, but here's the over under try by Austin Hill. He will be on the outside, but Hines will have the preferred line now going into three and four. He will try to stay in front, but also he's got some cars in front to deal with, Greg, yeah, as well. He's, he's got that Z4 of Orem, and Hines is going to try and shove the car underneath Orem's BMW. And Hill's going to go. Oh, and there's contact there. Oh. Orem gets into the back of Austin Hill as Hill goes off course through the grass. Race over for Austin Hill as he tried to squeeze by Orem as well. And, and he's going to try to get himself back onto the racetrack so he doesn't lose too many positions here as well. Yeah, and, and Brian, I, I, don't, I, don't know what, yeah, I don't know what to say there. Uh, just some aggress <laughs> aggressive racing by Austin Hill, and I hate to say it, but I kind of saw it coming as they went through, as they went through left hook. Uh, that, yeah, that's going to give Chuck Hines the, uh, the win there in STL. Let's take a look, though, as our overall winner, our overall leader, coming to the line. Yep, John Heinrichsy in that Cadillac, taking the checkered flag. Two race wins this weekend. A great weekend for Heinrichsy. Now we wait to see Joe Bowden come across the line. He will come in second in T2. And Alan Phillips should be coming by next. He'll be your third place car in T2 as well. And Brian, big, big change as we we're watching that STL battle in Touring 3, taking the win over Rob Hines, Simon Fowweather after that restart. Wow. Five seconds separating he and Rob Hines, who finishes second in touring three. Chris Deshong will finish in third. He comes across the line. Ben Schlechter in the number 87 car. He should finish in fourth. That's touring three. In STU, Darren Treacle will take the win. David Fiorelli in the Ford Mustang. He gets around David Brand on the last lap. He will take, the, take second in his Ford Mustang. David Brand in the Lotus Exige will round out your podium there in class. In touring four, no. Christian Bronwich takes the win, the local boy takes the win in touring four over Mark Cephalo's Mazda MX-5. Scotty B. White gets around Angelica Spray. Scotty B. will finish third in touring four. Spray finishes just off the podium. 
Jeremy Butts finishes in fifth. And so now let's move over finally to STL where Chuck Hines takes the win. Amy Mills will finish second. Austin Hill, I said race over for him. He did manage to round out and complete that final lap. He will hold on to third place in STL. Brian Hooper for the second day in a row finishes just off the podium in fourth. Well, that was definitely, definitely a barn burner here in those final laps. You know, that light race caution when you smash all those cars together uh, is is just can be a recipe for what we got. And, and we certainly did get it here. All right. Indeed. Let's do a final call of the great grade and then take us to a break. All right. Let's uh, let's start the adventure of group number seven. <laughs> Tension in the paddock. Attention to the paddock. Final call to the grid for race group seven. Spec Racer Ford Gen 3. Please head to the grid. Spec Racer Ford Gen 3 racers. Name your own adventure. Please head to the grid. Your race is next. All right, let's take a quick break. Brian, we'll be back here in just a few moments. Two more races from Virginia International Raceway this afternoon. It's the 2024 Hoosier Racing Tire SCCA Super Tour. My customer experience with Mazda has been absolutely fantastic. I'm probably not the richest person out here, and they're extremely reasonably priced, and you can buy parts easily, and it's a class that fits both, both what I want from a racing standpoint and what I can afford. We got into Mazda's uh, largely just because it's a fantastic platform, and Mazda Motorsports has some of the best support for the grassroots racer in parts and technical advice and everything else, so they, they make it easy for us to run these cars.
Welcome back to Virginia International Raceway. Two races to go here in the Hoosier Racing Tire SCCA Super Tours. Round number 10, this one, Spec Racer 4-3. Greg has our starting line. All right, let's take a look here. 33 drivers set times here over the course of the weekend. Let's run them down. Starting at 33rd, driving the number 144 car out of Kernersville, North Carolina, the Yates Group machine of Brian Yates. Nick Doinoff starting 32nd. He's in the, well, get, look at this. This is perfect. The 32 D, ddforhire.com machine out of North Lima, Ohio. Andrew Adler will start 31st. He's in the number 51 PM racing machine from Sanibel, Florida. Then we've got Steve Zamatis. He's driving the number four car. He starts 30th in the patron foreskin machine. Then we've got Craig Wheatley. He starts 29th. Uh, that is exactly what it says, people. Uh, phone your congressman or something. All right, starting 29th, driving the number 98 car from Sanibel, Florida. It's Craig Wheatley. Dan Mathias will start 28th. He's in the number 23 machine from Annapolis, Maryland. Charles Pigeon will start 27th. He drives the 18 car. He's from Abilene, Texas. While we got Connor Grant starting 26th. He's in the number 120, or probably the 179 Comprent machine out of Germantown, Tennessee. Then we got Ethan Bentnick Smith. He starts 25th in the number 34 car. He's from Duxbury, Massachusetts. Patrick Stringer driving the number 40. Spec Racer Ford Gen 3. He starts 24th. He's in the IceRace.com machine at a Boston Spa in New York. Andre Para starts 23rd. He's in the number 77 car. Uh, he is out of Government Camp, Oregon. While Lee Hill, driver of the number 72 car, starts in 22nd position. He's at a Reedsville, North Carolina, driving the PM Racing entry. Ben Jacobs will start 21st. He's in the number 171, Spec Race 4 Gen 3, in the Jacobs Design Machine out of Oshkosh, Wisconsin, with Greg Chase starting 20th. Craig is in the 42 car. He's out of Darien, Connecticut. Jeffrey Lehner is driving the number 177, Spec Race 4 Gen 3. He's driving the Johnstown Auto Machine starting at 19th. Bruce Myers starts 18th. He's in the 111 car representing the New England region. He's from Greenland, New Hampshire, driving the Briggs Belt System Spec Racer Ford. Lee McNish will start 17th. He's in the number 22 car, also representing the New England region. He's from Southbury, Connecticut. Cooper Travis will start 16th. He's in the number 33 Comfort Motion Machine. He's out of Matthews, North Carolina. Then we've got Scott Monroe. He's driving the double zero. He's starting 15th on the field in the Access Companies machine out of Keymaw, Texas. Then we've got Jean-Luc Liverado. Jean-Luc is driving the number eight Spec Racer Ford Gen 3. He's out of Atlanta, Georgia. Starting 13th, driving the number 21. Alliance Autosport machine out of Pittsburgh, North Carolina, Charlie Rogers. Sam Schechter's driving the double five, the double nickel. He starts 12th today on the field. He's out of Boyd's, Maryland in the Windsor Customs entry. Then we've got Keith Grant. He starts 11th. He's driving the number 97 Spec Race Ford Gen 3 in another Comprent car. He's out of Germantown, Tennessee. Mac Harrison starts 10th. He is driving the number 30. Windsor Customs car, he's out of Washington, D.C. With John Green starting ninth, he's in the number 29 PM Racing Machine. He's out of Gainesville, Georgia. Gene Claudio Angelini starts eighth. He's driving the number six Spec Race 4 Gen 3s from New Haven, Connecticut. With Greenwich, Connecticut's Ben Albano starting seventh. He's in the number 17 car. Then we got Jim Lebeco. He starts sixth. He's in the number 198 machine. He's from Salon, Ohio. With James Goffrey starting fifth. James is in the number 68 Spec Race 4 Gen 3. He's from Jupiter, Florida. And your front two rows starting fourth. Driving the number 19, Vanacore Homes Spec Racer Ford from Ormond Beach, Florida. Todd Vanacore starting third, driving the number two, Doggone Racing Apple Motorsports Spec Racer Ford from Charlestown, West Virginia. Morgan Burkhardt and your front row today, starting second, driving the number 61 PM Racing Spec Racer Ford Gen 3 from Lakeland, Florida. Brian Schofield and your pole sitter, driving the number 123 PCS Spec Racer Ford from Montpelier, Virginia. Charles Russell Turner. All right, here they come down for hopefully the green flag here for our second to last race of the day. We're going to catch them here in just a second. There it come. The starters got the green flag in the air, and here they go. All those cars heading down towards turn one. This could be one heck of a start here. We'll see three wide at least going in there about four or five rows back. Looks like Russ Turner is able to come out 
Well, there's still a little side-by-side -side up front. That's Turner on the outside, Schofield on the inside. So Schofield set up in the best spot right now. And then right behind them is Morgan Burkhart. Yeah, and Schofield's then we had... going to take that early lead. That's right. And then we had the black and red, number 19, to Todd Vanacore. And uh, behind Vanacore, there's the, the silver, uh, silver machine of James Goffrey. And uh, I think we've got Lebecco in the orange, number 198, Ben Albano there as well. So pretty much just the way they gridded up today, Brian, at least at the front of the field, they're all in line. We've got one driver just going off over in Snake, trying to fit back in. And we'll, uh, we'll try and get the number on that in just a moment, about uh, three quarters of the way back through the field. And uh, that separates our, our rear cars off just a little bit. Yep, that is one of those situations that could end up really bad. Thankfully, it didn't. Here comes your leader snaking up towards South, through South Bend and up towards Oak Tree. The silver and blue car up front. Oh, there's a car with a wild ride, able to collect it and get back on the racetrack. That silver and white blue car up front, that is Schofield right behind him, Russ Turner. And then you've got Morgan Burkhart. Oh, thought maybe that, that Goffrey got around Burkhart. We'll know here in just a second next time we see them up front. It's possible that Burkhart went slip back to fourth here. No, that is still Burkhardt that is up okay, in okay. third position. Yeah, the red with the black sides uh, there. and uh, Correct, yeah, you're right. Yeah, and then the next car there is a lot more red on the Vanacore machine, the number 19 car. Yeah, that uh, those two cars do look somewhat similar from the side, but with that uh, repair work on the Morgan Burkhardt car, it actually makes it a little easier for us to pick out the two cars this yeah. weekend. Yeah, the, pri the primer colored uh, driver's <laughs> left there is a little bit easier to, to pick out. And as they cross the line, it is Schofield, Turner, Burkhardt, Vanacore uh, here at the top four. And things starting to stretch out a little bit, Brian, as uh, I think after our uh, our top nine cars, John Green at the tail end of that lead pack, Mac Harrison out of Washington, D.C., uh, currently sitting 10th, and he's got that second pack behind him now. Here comes your leaders now heading into turn three again. Oh at some point <laughs> actually heading into turn four all right and it was the 177 car brian that went for that wild ride uh, down through south bend that was jeffrey laner out of gloversville new york and uh he falls all the way back uh now into uh in the 19th position and I say he falls all the way back. That's actually where he started was in 19. He actually had, the, I think, the shortest run up to Oak Tree that last time. Yeah, Greg, we need to make a, a page for race control. If you could take a peek at that, we'll get that snuck in here and then get back to race action. All right, let's uh, get that squared away. Give me one moment here. Attention in the paddock, attention in the paddock with J. David Orham, driver of the number six, Boring 3 BMW. Please report to the race director in impound. J. David Orham, driver of the number six, Touring 3 BMW. Please report to the race director in impound. All right, there are your leaders right there. Russ Turner right under the rear cowling of Brian Schofield as they come now down the roller coaster. And this is, looks a lot like what we saw early in this race yesterday, Greg. Yeah, exactly like what we saw in the race. I think the I think the pack was maybe back to 13th or 14th for the first couple of laps, but uh, so similar now as uh, we have these two bridge cars uh, now separating our first pack from our second pack uh, there as we've got, uh, looks like as they come across the line, I believe it is still Mac Harrison and Sam Schechter uh, then with a bit of a gap back to Keith Grant and Scott Monroe leading that second pack. Now we have about a seven car train up front. Maybe that's eight cars. They're all trying to stick together as they weave themselves through these early laps in this race. And uh, the three cars up front who looked like they were pulling away the top three or four cars. Now the rest of that train has caught back up to make it a good 8-10 car train here in the early laps of this spec race or Ford 3 race. All right, Brian, we're going to take a look to see. We should have at least one spec race or Ford. First off, the number 55 car on the pit lane right now uh, did not complete the, uh, the previous lap. That is Sam Schechter. And I believe the 33 car 
uh, may be missing a nose cone. That is Cooper Travis out of Matthews, North Carolina. Uh, it sounds like his uh, his nose, uh, the nose piece, is uh, sitting right around the number five marker going into turn 13. We may be able to pick it up in the next camera shot here. Now side by side for third place. Uh, uh, on that shot right there, you saw Todd Vanacore right next to Morgan Burkhart. He's on the outside trying to squeeze by. He's got a little bit of help behind him, so Burkhart could fall all the way back to fifth or sixth place here, depending on how this pans out. Yeah, there we go, and uh, it looks like Burkhart is going to drop back a couple positions as James Goffrey gets around him as well. Uh, now, yesterday, Burkhart was it was in contention, I'd say, for the first three quarters of yesterday's race, a race in which Schofield won and Russ Turner finished second. So pretty much as we're watching this front pack here. Now, I uh, heard uh, uh, talking to Morgan's uh, family that he is uh, currently battling some kind of flu or some kind of bug um, that uh, has uh, made things rather uncomfortable for him in the car. Uh, we'll see how he he holds up. The, the hope was just that he could... Uh, Know, manage to eke out the entire race here. So uh, we'll see here as Morgan falls back now in the fifth position where they, they really did kind of hang him out to dry going up into 13. Well, he's back now up into fourth place. So he's made a move around Goffrey, it looks like. And now he's got his sight set back on Todd Vanacor. That would, yeah. Yeah, and so, you know, already, and, and we saw this again for the second half of yesterday's race, where Schofield and Turner were able to separate themselves out as Burkhardt had continued to fall off the pace. Yesterday, a little bit different that Burkhardt had probably a good 20 seconds on the fourth place car, but here very early on already, we're seeing the 61 and the 123 start to move away. Uh, we, sounds like we've got some debris over at turn four as well. Well, and, and Schofield and Turner would love to see those cars in third, fourth, and fifth keep battling it out, because that just gives them a chance to pull away further and further. And that is uh, similar to what happened yesterday. Now we've got Goffrey possibly thinking about, or, or if they can try to return the favor to Vanacor that Vanacor did to Burkhart. It's all about who helps you and when they help you here with the draft in this class. Right now, our top 10 here is Schofield, Turner, Vanacore, Goffrey, Burkhart, then Ben Albano, James Labeco, Gianclaudio Angelini, John Green, and Mark Harrison. That is your top 10 right now. Wow, and it looks like the green car, which oddly enough I think is orange, uh, just <laughs> ran over the curbing up at the top of 14, and uh, that's the car right ahead of, actually that, no, I think that was uh, Jim Labeco in the orange 198, just ahead of Gianclaudio Angelini. Uh, got very loose as they started to enter the roller coaster, uh, but Angelini not finding a way by. I was talking about the debris that's over at turn four, Brian. Sounds like it's right in the center of the course. Uh, they're going to cover it with a debris flag for now. It doesn't appear to be very large, maybe a couple of inches long, and uh, maybe a piece of the fiberglass bodywork off of one of these cars. We'll see how our leaders deal with it as they now come into the NASCAR, and they'll be coming up on that uh, area here momentarily. Yeah, if it's there, it's hard for us to see because that's turn four. And yeah, nobody seemed to move left or right to try to avoid anything. So it's possible it's already cleared itself. Right. I love those self-clearing pieces of debris. Because, you know, they get up and walk away, right? Yes. <laughs> it's still Schofield, then Turner, then Vanacore. And then you've got a real two-car pack right there of of Burkhart and Goffrey. And Brian, that uh, the the third, fourth, and fifth cars now, and actually, let's throw in Ben Albano as well in the number 17 machine. They are starting to uh, pick up ground. Oh, as we've got a car, pretty heavy smoking, and uh, that. I'm trying to get the number on it. I think it might be the four two. Uh, might be the four two, and it appears though that is actually tire rub, not oil yeah. smoke. Um, that uh, call came in earlier from the starter stand, so they're going to leave that car out there. And I'm sure the drivers, if they keep seeing it in their mirrors, will probably bring the car in down the pit lane. Actually, it looks like it's the three two, not the four two.
Yeah, that's, and that's uh, Nick Dwaynoff. Yeah, that's a situation that sometimes takes care of itself, and sometimes it ends up in a flat tire. So we'll exactly. have to keep a look on that as well. All right, Barton, so it looks like looks we've got like a brand new leader. That's good. Yep, yep. Russ Turner has taken over the point from Brian Schofield. And you should also notice that the third, fourth, and fifth place cars, they have now re-entered the discussion. And there is now a five-car pack up front, maybe six even. Yeah, let's as make they it now six. Head into, yeah, six cars. Yeah, it's Albano now. And we have now. a new third place car, too. And uh, Ben third. Albano, he finished sixth yesterday. Uh, in that Motion Dynamics Team Ike group uh, machine. He's actually a, a driver coach with uh, with Skip Barber uh, here and does some work over at Monticello and Lime Rock Park as well with their drivers clubs. And uh, interesting that when he's not behind the wheel of a car, Brian, he actually does uh, spotting and coaching for numerous IMSA and SRO drivers. So a good, uh, a good debut on the Super Tour for him yesterday where he finished in sixth. All right, Morgan Burkhart reclaimed third place now, so now it's Turner, Schofield, Burkhart, Vanacore. That was what it was early in the race. Well, no, actually, uh, Schofield was in first early in the race, but the top three have now returned to the same top three, just in a different order. That's right, and uh, we've got that second group right now starting to make up ground. It was, uh, I think, uh, Angelini, Lebecco, and Green and that is exactly how it stands. So uh, Angelini's in that uh, dark colored car with the orange down the center. We've got Lebecco with the orange 198, and then we've got John Green in a non-green car. Uh, the number 34 machine coming down the pit lane now and uh, heading back to the paddock. So Ethan Bentnick-Smith out of Duxbury, Massachusetts, hit stays now done. Yeah, those cars weaving their way through roller coaster without any issues. Got that uh, six cars up front, all trying to keep close to the leader. And they're just far enough apart where they don't have to worry about them getting uh, the draft. Oh, and now you see it right up. As I say that, Schofield pulls up on the back of Turner and starts working a little closer together. And then Vanacore pulling up closer to the back of Burkhart here, so. These cars tend to work better as in pairs than in threes. They two, do. Which is kind of odd. Well, you know, and, and when you tuck underneath the, the ducktail rear, you could actually, it's as if the nose on these cars was shaped specifically to get underneath the rear of the right. car ahead. The challenge is, is that there's a bit of a, there's a uh, part of the frame, a cage around the differential <laughs> on these cars. Seriously. And if you go too far, well, you're gonna bend down that, uh, that little nose piece. We talked uh, yesterday about that little postage slot for the air opening, uh, which, makes it much more difficult to draft up behind. Big gap yes. back to our second group uh, here as we see them coming out of the S's. And uh, this group is led by, uh, as best I can tell, it appears to be Jeffrey Lehner in the 177 machine, uh, a little bit further back. But uh, some good battles there. Uh, Lehner currently running 18th as well. Ooh, We've got a car that has gone around. Backwards. And that was in our lead pack, and I believe Brian, in the uh, that machine there, I let's see, that might have been the 17 of Albano that went around. I'm going to get the call here in a moment from uh, our corner station there. And yeah, we'll hear about that. We're also coming up here on our halfway mark, Greg, so we can wait for that call or we can go take and make a call to grid and take a quick break and then get that number when we come back. Well, well Brian, think I think we've got here. the answer. It is James Goffrey in the 68 machine that went around there. And uh, he now continues, but as we can see, he has lost a number of positions. He is going to fall back uh, now into, I believe, ninth position. All right, so let's do this. Let's make a call to the grid for our final group of the day, and then we'll take that quick break. Attention in the paddock, attention in the paddock. First call to the grid for race group eight, SMX, spec MX-5, please head to the grid. Race group number eight, SMX, please head to the grid. Your race is next. All right, and there you go. One more race to go after this big spec racer Ford race. You're watching the 2024 Hoosier Racing Tire SCCA Super Tour. Hoosier Racing Tire is proud to be the presenting sponsor of SCCA Super Tour. 
Hoosier's mission is to be the dominant customer-driven provider of tires to race teams domestically and internationally. At Hoosier, we know that our success is dependent on how well we meet our customers' expectations by providing the safest, most reliable, high-quality race tires that put you in the winner's circle. For more information, see our trackside support personnel or the local Hoosier Racing Tire dealer near you, or contact us at HoosierTire.com. Hoosier Racing Tires, truly tires designed for champions. Hagerty is the official and exclusive insurance partner for SCCA and provides affordable off-track insurance protection for motorsports vehicles while in the paddock, in transit, in storage, and at the shop. Hagerty also provides guaranteed value coverage and even has protection for your trailer. Did you know that SCCA members can save 5% on insurance through Haggerty? Haggerty, let's drive together. Learn more at Haggerty.com. Get more bang for your buck at SummitRacing.com. Choose from millions of in-stock parts from over 1,500 named brands. Parts for racing, street performance, trucks, plus tools, accessories, and more. Shop anytime, anywhere with the Summit Racing app. As the official fuel partner, Sunoco has been helping the SCCA and their drivers perform at their peak since 2001. Mile after mile, race after race, Sunoco's trusted the fuel over 50 racing bodies, including the SCCA, SCCA Pro Racing, Trans Am, NHRA, and NASCAR. As the largest manufacturer of race fuels, they're passionate about helping drivers and teams take the lead. To find race gas near you, visit SunocoRaceFuels.com or call Sunoco at 800-RACE-GAS. For over 25 years, championship winning drivers and teams have demanded Hawk Performance Motorsports brake pads. Now you can have their advanced technology on your daily car, truck, or SUV with Hawk Performance Street products. With the improved HP Plus pad for the hybrid street and track feel, or Super Duty pads for tow vehicles, their all new ER brake pad designed to take on even the longest race, and their all new high performance brake fluid. Hawk has all your braking needs covered. Visit hawkperformance.com and like them on Facebook or Instagram to learn more about the Hawk Performance Advantage. Hawk Performance, what's stopping you? If you like what you see today, become part of the action by joining the Sports Car Club of America. Whether you want to drive, flag, organize, officiate, have fun with cars, or meet 65,000 enthusiast friends, SCCA has plenty to feed your motorsport obsession. Ask someone trackside how to get involved or visit scca.com for more information. All right, we're back here at VIR International, Virginia International Raceway. Up front right now, Turner Schofield and Burkhart. We have a little quick announcement to make. Attention in the paddock with Sam Schechter, driver of the number 55 Spec Racer Ford Gen 3. Please report to the race director in impound. Sam Schechter, driver of number 55 Spec Racer Ford Gen 3. Please report to the race director in impound. All right, let's reset the field here. Your leader is Russ Turner, followed by Brian Schofield. Third place, Morgan Burkhart. Then we've got Todd Vanacore, Ben Obano. Gian Claudio Angelini is in sixth, John Green seventh, James Lebecco in eighth, James Goffrey is in ninth, and Jean Luc Liverato is in tenth. Yeah, and Brian, we've been watching this this neat little battle here, even as we went to break. Uh, the uh, the fight there with uh, uh, Angelini, Green, and Lebecco at uh, just I think right after we went to break, they were three wide going into turn one, and uh, yeah. Lebecco just doesn't seem to have the pace. Um, or the ability to get around those two cars. Here they come once again, and you see Lebeco, he drops back maybe a car length and a half every time they go into the braking zone. Uh, but, uh, you know, but then again, we don't see Green making any, any moves on uh, Angelini as well as our leaders now starting to, uh, they're starting to get closer to the back of our field here. And uh, right. this traffic might start to play a part. Well, and here what we're seeing, of course, Greg, is our first two cars, uh, Turner and Schofield, pulling away. And uh, they've now created a bit of a gap between them and the third place car of Burkhart. And then there's another gap back to fourth place. So uh, Morgan there is kind of in no man's land. No no help to get to the front and, and no help to come for the group cars behind it to catch up as well. And uh, that bodes really well for the front two cars here with five to go. All right, and we think that the car just ahead of our leaders 
Um, one of them might be Ethan Bentonick Smith, who we saw come down the pit lane a little bit earlier. Yeah, he's the, the leader of those two cars. It's the 34 and the 32, Bentonick Smith and then Nick Doinoff. Uh, we saw Bentonick Smith come down the pit lane. He returned to the action, apparently. Uh, he currently sits 20, now 20, uh, 27 with Doinoff in 30, uh, in 29th, pardon me. Next time by it will be four to go. And now the big question is going to be, how does everybody negotiate through traffic? And, and that is the issue here when you've got those slower cars. Usually the leaders get through pretty cleanly because they're getting all the blue flags, but the blue flags don't always work as well for the second, third, fourth, and fifth place cars. And Brian, getting report of uh, three cars getting together this is down at turn one. Uh, the, the 111 car of Bruce Myers, the 42 of Craig Chase, and still trying to get a number on the third car. They have, I believe, continued. There we go. I should say, just coming into our view now is your leaders there the second and third cars on your screen that's a slower car in front so they're going to probably hit this slower car on, no, hopefully uh, they don't through, hit it through the snake <laughs> well no <laughs> hit it in the meta metaphorical sense <laughs> yeah don't, don't. Right there yeah so that's the 34 that they just got by in the 32 uh we see just got past going through snake that uh, our leaders had gone by the 32 car uh, a little bit earlier it did, yeah, it did give Morgan Burkhardt a chance to catch up just a little bit because I think they they hit that, uh, they, they came upon Thank you. that slower car <laughs> in an in, in advent, in advantageous time and they had to check up just a little bit and, and that allowed Burkhardt to come a little bit closer but yeah. uh, he's going to need a little bit more help. Yeah, but Brian, on the, pre on the previous lap, Burkhardt had also made up almost five tenths of a second Again, without the right. benefit of the draft, he is starting to close down on our two leaders, on Russ Turner and Brian Schofield, who will obviously have had the, the benefit of the draft uh, working together there. But let's see here, is Burkhardt now, is he under braking? I think knocks off maybe another car length. He's about, uh, about seven or eight car lengths back, uh, certainly closing things down from where he was, more importantly. And I think a lot of this had to do with when Goffrey spun the car over at Oak Tree, he has really been able to expand his advantage over our new fourth place leader. That is Ben Albano, uh, that is just now coming down through uh, Hogpen, the gray number 17 machine. Talked about him earlier. The other thing that we didn't mention, Albano, the 2013 Skip Barber MX-5 Cup champion. So uh, the, the man can wheel a race car, obviously. Uh, we'll see if he can close things down on the number two car in the battle for the last spot on the podium. You also see a little gap between Schofield and or Turner and Schofield, and that's also helping Burkhardt catch up a little bit as well. They're not quite as hooked up as they were earlier in the race. I don't know if Schofield's maybe seeing a little bit of heat in the car and needs to get out from behind. Turner just for a little bit to let that car breathe a bit, um, but that's certainly a possibility. And don't look now, but but that third place car is coming up there. And now they tuck back in. So I, maybe maybe Schofield was trying to get a little bit of temperatures down yeah. so he can make one final run here. Will be two to go next time by. Yeah, and Brian, on that last lap, uh, you know, we talked about Burkhardt making up about a half a second. Uh, Turner and Schofield pulled back a tenth that time by, but now it looks like Burkhardt is uh, starting to tighten things up again. You know, but I think it's, you know, it's always a little, uh, a little deceiving as they go into Oak Tree. The question is after they come down this back straight with the, yeah. uh, with the draft, and as they get to the top of the uh, top of the roller coaster, whether or not he gains ground, and it looks like Burkhardt may have lost a little bit more ground that time by. You know, you're fighting the struggle here when you're up with another car where 
Yes, you are faster in a straight line because you've got the draft, but you're, you're, the second place car is dependent on the first place car hitting those marks every single time the same way. Whereas Burkhardt there, he's just running qualifying laps. He doesn't have to worry about when the car in front of him breaks or when the car in front of him turns in. And uh, so there is that yin and yang situation going on here. They come across a line now, two to go, Greg. All right, as our leaders head down into turn at number one, Morgan Burkhardt, he sets a personal best. Uh, but Brian, that personal best is identical to the last lap set wow. by our leader, Russ Turner. No gains by Morgan Burkhardt here, as we've got, as you said, two laps remaining. But we have seen where Ben Albano, Todd Vanacore have dropped back a little bit further. Albano, for the last two laps now, has been under pressure from the number 19 car. We see here Vanacore, who started off in fourth position, finds himself in fifth right now. Albano, uh, who started in seventh, uh, now just off a podium paying position. Yeah, and when you say identical, Greg, you're not kidding. It, it wasn't like close to identical. Both cars running identical 205, 143. So right down to the thousandth of a second, identical lap times. Yeah, it looks like right now, if the front two cars don't have a moment, it's going to be really hard for Burkhardt to catch them here in these final lap and a half. But that is always possible. <laughs> Once you start throwing throwing caution to the wind to try to take the victory, anything is anything. possible. We saw that last race. <laughs> All right, next time by, we will see the white flag in the air. Honestly, the, the, the three cars up front really haven't put a wheel wrong all race weekend. And pretty much picture perfect races for all of them. Here they come now, past the start, finish line on the, is it the penultimate lap or the <laughs> I don't know. Brendan always tells me it's penultimate. I've been trying to tell him it's penultimate for 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 two years now. <laughs> All right, we are on our final race lap now. Here they come through the first corner for the final time. It is still Turner in front, Schofield in second, Burkhard in third. Gofield's got to get up there a little bit closer if he thinks he's going to have a chance to make a move here in this final few la this final lap. Hey, and Brian, real quick, Exceve Motorsports asked, how much does a spec racer Ford three weigh? The uh, weight with driver, minimum weight with driver, uh, is, I just had it here, oh my gosh, where did like it go? 1,500? 1,560 pounds 15. minimum with driver as raced. Cool suit tanks are to be removed upon weighing the car. There we go. All right, so, we've got about seven corners to go here. Schofield is gonna try to get something happening. Turner defending a little bit, going through that section there into, into Oak Tree. And they both opened up about four tenths of a second on Burkhardt, who drops a wheel coming out of Oak Tree for the last time. He is gonna fall a little bit further back here as we turn it over to you for the finish, Brian. All right, here they come up Madison Ave Avenue. They're going to go through 14 and 15, then hit the roller coaster. We'll see that all happening yesterday. It was Schofield for the win. Schofield makes the move again, going into turn 13. Now through the roller coaster, can Turner respond? This is how it finished yesterday. Yesterday it finished Schofield and Turner. Will it be the same way today? It looks like that could be the case. Turner still pressing hard. As they come now onto the main straight, they're side by side. What's it going to be at the line? The checkered flag is in the air. We're going to see what could be a photo finish here. Here they are coming to the line. Is it going to be Schofield? Is it going to be Turner? What is it going to be? Rush it looks Turner. like Turner. By 19 one thousandths of a second, Brian. 19 one thousandths. Russ Turner takes the win on day number two. Schofield will finish second. 
Morgan Burkhardt will round out the podium. And on the very last lap, Todd Vanacore, he runs his fastest lap of the race. He gets around Ben Albano. He will finish fourth. The 17 car of Albano finishes fifth. John Green, Gianclaudio Angelini. Jim Lebecco will finish eighth. Jean-Luc Liverado works his way up in the ninth. And Keith Grant will round out your top ten. Goldfield takes a win on Saturday. Turner takes the win on Sunday by one, 19 one-thousandths of a second. What a great finish, Greg. Yeah, that, that, was, that was wonderful. And, you know, Brian, the big difference, we talked during the last race, uh, or probably a couple races ago about V-Spec and how that front straight wasn't long enough really for somebody to yeah. slingshot past the car ahead. Well, we can see what the effect of the draft and what the effect of maybe a little bit more horsepower uh, will do in Spec Racer Ford as Russ Turner just got the consummate run out of the hog pen, out of the final corner, and was just able, as we said, 19 one thousandths of a second to eke past Brian Schofield for the finish today. All right, that's going to do it here for our second to last race of the day. We've got one more left. It is Spec MX-5. Let's do one more call to grid for them, and then we will take a break and come back and get you the last race here in just a few minutes. Attention in the paddock. Attention in the paddock. Final call to the grid for race group number eight. That is SMX. Spec MX-5, please head to the grid. Your race starting in just a few minutes. Race group number eight, SMX, please head to the grid. All right, so let's take that final break, and we'll be back in just a few moments as we round out the day here at Virginia International Raceway, the 2024 Hoosier Racing Tire SCCA Super Tour. My name is Joshua Smith, Business Development Manager for Mazda Motorsports. We're happy to be supporting the, uh, the SCCA and Mazda racers here. So our team support program offers a couple of tiers of support, uh, part support, technical support. All of this is done through our mazdamotorsports.com part store website. It's basically like signing up for an Amazon account. Simple information, prove that you're a racer. It gets you access to our 800 hotline that you can call and speak to one of our parts representatives five days a week.
15 races in the books. One more to go here at Virginia International Raceway as we wrap up rounds nine and 10 of the Hoosier Racing Tire SECA Super Tour. Last race of the weekend, Spec MX-5. We've got our starting lineup, Greg. All right, 17 cars, Brian, on our front straight now, or on the track, starting their pace lap. Let's run down the starting order. Starting 17th, or probably 18th, driving the number 17 SMX from Manson, Washington. It's Whitfield Greg. Jillian Victor is going to start 17th. She's in the number two turn seven motorsports machine from Jupiter, Florida. Starting 16th in the number seven Spec MX-5. It is Jason Victor driving the Jupiter Auto Body Machine, also from Jupiter, Florida. Then we've got Aiden Coleman. Aiden is starting 15th today. He's driving the number 60 machine, representing the Washington, D.C. region, driving the AI Integration Machine. He's from Glenwood, Maryland. Starting 14th, driving the number 16 Mazda from Westlake Village, California, Ricardo Aruda. Starting 13th, he drives the number 12 Mazda, representing the New England region of the SCCA from Burlington, Connecticut, driving for Flat Out Motorsports, Aaron Wilhelm. Will Lucas starts 12th. He's in the number 134 Dubuck Consulting Machine. He's from, say it with me, Brian. Dahlonega. Dahlonega, Georgia. Thank you, not Talladega. That's right. All right, starting 11th, driving the number <laughs> 55 CRP Racing entry from Hilliard, Ohio, Ayrton Grimm, starting 10th, driving the number six, Mazda, the M-Zone, Zone Machines, Machine, how's that sound? From Aurora, Ontario, Canada, it's Marcello Panizia, starting ninth, driving the number 115 machine from Wilson, Wyoming, it is, help me, help me, Brian, Will Robinson, starting eighth, driving the number 42, <laughs> Mazda MX-5 from Advance Autosports and Lisbon, Wisconsin, Michael Borden, starting seventh, driving the number 49. Mazda, he's from Solon, Ohio. It's Harbir Das. Austin Hill starts sixth today. He's in the number eight Southern Ohio, uh, uh, Southern Ohio machine from Frankfurt, Ohio. Starting fifth, driving the number 26 machine in the Michael Tennis Racing Mazda MX-5 from East Meadow, New York, Michael Tennis. Starting fourth, he drives the number 195 Mazda from Boca Raton, Florida. Had a nice little meeting with him yesterday. Good kid, Rocco Pascarella. Starting third, driving the number one Mazda from Orlando, Florida, Noah Harmon. And your front row today, driving the number four, Planet Miata RP Performance Mazda MX-5 from Winchester, Virginia, Camden Gruber. And your pole sitter today, driving the number 199 Jacobs Design Machine from Oshkosh, Wisconsin, Ethan Jacobs. All right, that's going to be our starting lineup here as they come up over the hill towards Roller Coaster here. We're yeah, going to go 14 laps. Yes. Oh, I was, I was, 14 laps <laughs> or 35, 35 minutes. 35 minutes. That's right. So yesterday's winner was Ethan Jacobs, Camden Gruber finishing second, Noah Harmon finishing in third. Hey, it's almost like our, our front, our front two rows are the finishing order. Rocco Pascarella finished just off the podium here as the lights are out on the pace car and the pace car now heading towards the pit lane. Well, that is about as good as a lined up pack as we've seen all weekend long. So our starter should like what he sees or she when they get to the start finish line. And we will find out in a moment, but there is our green flag. Here they all go, 17 cars down towards turn one. The question will be, will 17 cars come out of turn one? We sure hope they do. I don't see any brake lock up. That is a good sign. I don't see any dust. Also, a good, oh, no, I spoke too soon. There's some dust in the back. Jeez. That car looks like it's going to be able to continue. Yeah, just a dropped wheel there, Brian, and continues on. I believe that that was, uh, I believe that might have been Jason Fichter. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll check that in just a moment as uh, our pole sitter, Ethan Jacobs, leads the field through turn five. That's right, that looks like Jacobs up front and then Gruber right behind him. I think they're lined up just how they 
Uh, actually, yeah. Noah Harmon in the white and yellow number one machine. He yep. moved in the second position. Camden Gruber, who's in the Planet Miata machine, the uh, green and blue car, uh, kind of splitting the difference between second and fourth. He is now in third position. Uh, Rocco Pascaro and Michael Tennis, they're running in fourth, uh, probably fifth and sixth. Ooh, front run, runner there. Ethan Jacobs puts a wheel off there, able to keep it all together. Didn't have to check up too, too much, but that did allow, it seems like, the third place car to come up just a little bit closer here as they come out of Oak Tree. And Brian, not that we haven't seen this view a lot today, but we're on board right now with Austin Hill. And uh, we saw this exact same view yesterday. That is Michael Tennis in the number 26 machine directly ahead. And uh, if we take a look at the back bumper, actually, let's try that again. That is the 195 of Rocco Pascarella directly ahead. And uh, we see where Austin Hill gives him a little love tap going up in the 13. But, you know, we should watch Rocco's car. You notice the uh, left-hand side of the rear bumper cap starting to flap around a little bit. Uh, that may, if he gets more little uh, bump drafts there in the back bumper, might become a bit of a problem, a bit of an air brake for him as this race goes on. All right, here they come, coming down to complete the first race lap here. First of 14. They're going to come across the line. Here is the order of the top 10 here. We've got Jacobs, Harmon, and Gruber. We've been talking about them. Then Michael Tennis, Rocco Pascarella, Austin Hill, Michael Borden, Will Robinson, Habir Das, and Marcello Pan Panizia. Jacobs and Harmon still knows to tail, but it, the second and third place car of Gruber and Tennis now coming up onto the back bumper of our second place car. Pretty much a five car pack up front there, Greg. Yeah, and so I, I think the, the driver to watch here, Brian, he's right behind that red number eight of Austin Hill. That is Michael Borden. Uh, he was our 2020 Touring 4 National Champion in an NC Miata, and last year served as a driver coach for the what was then known as Spec MX-5 Challenge. Yesterday, he was running up in fourth place with about three laps to go. Uh, ran wide coming through Southland. Actually, four laps to go. Ran wide coming through Southland. Picked up three of the brake markers going, going into turn 11. These markers right here that you see off yep. uh, just to the side of the track, and they covered up the grills. Another driver goes off, a driver that is not Michael Borden. Uh, I think that was uh, Panachia. Uh, directly ahead of Ayrton Grimm there, the 55 CRP car. And I was talking to Michael yeah. last night, and he said, you know, as soon as my crew guys saw that those number boards were staying on the nose of my car, they, of course, asked to see what the what the water temperatures were like for the car. And he says, well, they're perfect. They're just now sitting right at about 200 degrees right where we want them. But that it was so cold yesterday that the best right. thing and, and getting the best performance out of the car was by actually covering up the grill area. It actually brought the water temps up just enough to be in uh, peak operating condition. But uh, unfortunately, you know, he'd gone off so far, he only finished eighth. Yeah, I don't know who was driving that car that went off going into Oak Tree that time, but uh, that car driver will be booking some time with his dentist uh, with his dentist on Monday to have the yeah. fillings put back in his mouth. All right, I got a uh, word from race control. Ride. It was not Pantich, it was not Panicia, it was Harbier Das, uh, who was in ninth place at the time. He falls back to 10th. There is the replay. That was a big off. You can see them doing a little, looked like a little four by four whoop de whoop kind of thing going on there, but he is now back in the fray. Yeah, so that opens up a little bit of a gap now as, uh, as Das went off. And interestingly enough, Panicia, who was the driver just ahead of the 49 car, Das, when he went off at South Bend. Panicia sets the fastest lap of the race so far. Uh, the number six machine turning into 205, uh, 210.5. Uh, that was 1.2 seconds faster than our leaders. And I think a lot of that uh, was from uh, using the draft to then move back up and fulfill and fill that spot from the cars directly ahead. Uh, big change here towards the front. Michael Tennis now moves into third place. He gets around Camden Gruber. Uh, so Tennis, who was on the podium back at Sebring, uh, now again in a podium position here. Uh, but a little bit of a gap uh, between he and Ethan Jacobs and Noah Harmon sitting at the front of the field. Yeah, while all that's happening, Jacobs and Harmon just trying to 
be a teammate there. Oh, big off there by that car. Hopefully he'll be able to get himself back together and come on safely. That is what happens. While all of this action is happening behind him, Jacobs and Harmon working together up front, trying to pull away a little bit. Yeah, and that was, you know, I was just talking about Michael Borden and the off that he had over at South Bend yesterday. That was Michael Borden with a big off over at Hog, or probably over at Oak Tree. He gathers the car back up, but he's going to lose a couple of positions. He's going to give up a position uh, to Panicia, and I think he gives up a position to the 115 of Will Robinson as well. That'll drop Borden from seventh back to ninth. All right, so here is the Austin Hill car right in front of him, Rocco Pascarella. You see that little, I think that's the toe strap dangling off the back there of the uh, 195 car as they come now past and towards the start finish line. And Pascarella's right up on the back bumper of Camden Gruber. We might see a pass here or attempted pass here. Gruber tries to cover on the inside. Pascarella stays pretty safe there, but then Austin Hill comes right up, almost touches the back bumper of the Pascarella car, but keeps it clean as they come through that corner, heading now down towards turn number three. All right, and we now see as uh, Pascarella tried to come underneath Camden Gruber. Austin Hill might try to take advantage of it. Now, Austin Hill had some challenges here in his last race at this very corner. Seems to take a slightly different approach this time by. Does not force the car into turn number five, uh, but Pascarella gets the move done. Camden Gruber started off on the outside of the front row, Brian, now falls back into fifth position. Yeah, definitely looks like the Gruber car not handling quite as well as some of these other cars right now uh, because people are able to get by him and he is slowly dropping back through the field. The big problem though for that group of cars is the gap now between fourth place and third place is getting even bigger. There we go. Maybe a little contact there between Austin Hill and Gruber as they go down towards Orc Chief. Yeah, Gruber dropped the wheel there coming out of South Bend. I don't know if there was any contact there. It looked like uh, yeah. you saw Austin Hill trying to adjust his uh, trajectory in case Gruber came across the track uh, directly in front of him, and so many people do at that particular spot. But we now see our top three cars, Brian, starting to, uh, starting to move away. Jacobs, Harmon, and Michael Tennis now opening up that gap to Pascarella, Gruber, and Austin Hill. Yeah, in that particular case, if there was contact, it was in, in reaction to trying to not hit him yeah. as he was coming back onto the racetrack. I don't think there was an initiation of contact. I think it was an avoidance kind of contact, or at least an attempted avoidance. Jacobs, Harbin, Tennis still up front. That's your top three. And uh, while all of that was happening, just before we went to the in-car, it looked like Michael Tennis was able to get right back or right up to the rear bumper of Noah Harmon. We'll see this more now once we see that front pack again to see if that is still the case. And it does look like they are pretty close together as they headed to turn one so close, this might be a pass for second place. That's right, as we have tennis now, Brian, going around the outside of the 199 machine of Jacobs. There is Michael Tennis in that uh, white, uh, the white number 26. Let's see if he can slot the car in. Well, and going around the outside of one, seemingly not the best choice, but it puts you in a really good place when you get to three and four. And I take it back, Tennis is actually, he's in the red and black machine sitting third, the white car. Okay. Still the number one of Armin uh, there, but uh, uh, great attempt nonetheless here as uh, Pascarella, Gruber, and Hill, uh, they're starting to make up a little ground. Just that, just that little battle going into turn one yep. has brought now we see Pascarella uh, maybe starting to separate himself out just a little bit from Camden Gruber as Gruber I think obviously is having some uh, some issues here uh, with the handling especially at the rear of that car early on in this race I think we talked about it yesterday that these tires uh, these spec tires that our racers are running they have to make them run or they have to make them last all weekend long and in talking to Michael Borden last night uh, some of these drivers were actually running with these spec the same set of tires uh, in the practice session uh, that they had on a Friday morning and in doing so essentially put another heat cycle on these tires whereas some of the other drivers like Borden uh, didn't put these race tires on the car until they had to go out for qualifying. 
Yeah, they have to run the tires for the weekend, but when they, the weekend starts with the qualifying session. Right. So it's the qualifying session is when you have to basically mark the tires and keep them on there. So, yes, you're right. They could use an older set or just a different set for practice, and some of them may didn't do that. So that would have been a smart move to make if had the tires to do it. All right, coming up on nine laps to go, this time by Jacobs, Harmon, Tennis. That's your top three at the moment. And still seems to be the case. Looks like our third place car at Tennis just put a little wheel off there. Yeah, well, and again, that, that is at the, the kink on the front straight, Brian. There's some curbing there, and a lot of drivers, they'll put some wheels over the curbing in order to straighten out that run, shorten the distance out of hog pen down into turn number one. That's exactly what Tennis did. And uh, again, he is still right up behind the rear of our second place runner, Noah Harmon. And again, you know, we take a look at uh, Rocco Pascarella running in fourth position. He just ran his personal best lap of the race, a 211.32. That was three tenths of a second faster than the three drivers ahead of him. Yep. Now we pick back up the action with Austin Hill right up behind Camden Gruber. Hill's had a chance to take a peek going into Oak Tree the last two or three laps, and he has just not been able to get it done, but he does look like coming up the hill here, he is faster than Gruber, but just making the pass is so difficult to do. You have to be in the right spot, and Gruber's done a pretty good job at defending as well, so you Although can see can Gruber's see not able to... Oh, well. Yeah, as Gru Gruber missed Ooh. the apex. That car not turning in, not able to get the nose in. And they are now side by side. And there's contact between Hill yep. and Cam Gruber. And now the number six machine is going to sneak by. That's Panicia in the flat out motorsports car. I was just about to say, Brian, that Austin Hill, you know, one of the things that we have seen um, from watching his in-car yesterday during the Super Touring light race, as well as just a little bit earlier today, is he does get very um, excited, uh, let's say, and uh, perhaps gets a little bit of the red mist. And we wanted to see how long it would take before he started getting very aggressive. I think there with Gruber going wide through South Bend, he made the move when he had to make it. But again, perhaps uh, didn't, didn't leave room for that uh, Planet Miata car to come back out on track after he went off. Well, and then right in front, and then Pan Panizia also took advantage of that situation as well and was able to sneak by too. So now it's been a bunch of changes for lead. This is gonna put uh, P uh, Panizia up into fourth, third, uh, fifth place. Will Robinson's also there as well. Austin here, Camden Gruber starting to fall back. So Will Robinson got past there. We didn't even see that happen. Yeah, there's the 115 car. He gets around as well. I mean, that is how much momentum both Hill and Camden Gruber lost in that exchange. And there's Gruber right to the inside of Austin Hill. And uh, Austin Hill has to give way as they come through NASCAR. Lots of tight, fast and furious action here in this Spec MX-5 field. The action really, really tight all the way back through eighth or ninth place here. Hey, Brian, uh, and if we can get to this lead pack at the front, what was a three-car pack? Well, look at that, the white and red number 195 of Rocco Pascarella. He is there now. Uh, the Florida region a driver behind the wheel of the Excel Racing Visual HP machine. He is now challenging as tennis goes to the inside on Ethan Jacobs, who is running in second. Notice we've got a new leader. That is uh, Noah Harmon in that white with yellow number one machine. That is Austin Hill off in the distance there going wide at Oak Tree and a couple of more cars are gonna get past him at this point. Really lost the momentum he needed for a good run down this back straight. And now the 55 car of Ayrton Grimm is going by. Just a, a series of, of situations there for the number eight car. Wow, Brian. Early portion of this race. With a four-wheel drift through 14, we have a new leader. That is Michael Tennis as he gets around Noah Harmon. Now, we saw, ten we saw Tennis drifting the car through there yesterday to the point where we put the car off track. And uh, that, that uh, number, uh, the number 26 machine starting to look very loose very early on in this race. 
Well, and Tennis has come from somewhat back in the field to get into the front of this pack. So a really good drive for him as we come up to the halfway point in this race. We're going to take our break, our final break of the week. Oh, no break needed, guys. That's Even good better. news. Let's stay with the action here as we come up with our final seven laps of racing action here at VIR. All right, Brian, uh, quickly here. We saw tennis with the rear end step out of 14. There is actually a debris flag being displayed up at turn 14. I don't haven't been able to hear whether or not it's for something physical or whether there is some fluid uh, down on the track. It sounds like there's a vehicle that might be dropping some fluid, and uh, we'll try and get some more information on that as uh, we continue on in this race here. But a great battle here up in front with Michael Tennis, your new leader. Now we've got Tennis, Harmon, Jacobs, and Pascarella. That's the four cars up front. Then a little bit of a gap back to Marcello Pen Penizia and Will Robinson. That's the fourth and fifth place car, the fifth and sixth place car that you see with about probably 15 car lengths spread out between both of those cars as well. Here they come through South Bend again, heading down towards Oak Tree. Leaders making their way through there pretty cleanly. The one thing you notice about those lead cars, for the most part, they're negotiating and they're staying off the dirt. Yep. And that's really giving them a chance to, to keep pulling out just a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. The cars in the back are hanging out a little bit more. And you see them putting a wheel off here and there. So, so, Brian, I was talking a little bit earlier about uh, Michael Borden and his trip out of South Bend yesterday and picking up a couple brake markers. Well, apparently, eight, and there is some debris, there is the debris actually coming down the roller coaster and poof there. It looks like it's uh, maybe the fender, fender liner for one of those cars. Correct. So Aiden Coleman uh, trying, to, uh, trying to follow the lead of uh, Michael Borden goes off at South Bend today. He's got two brake markers across the nose of his <laughs> car right now. We'll see if uh, he can make it the additional, the remaining six laps or so uh, without having to bring that car in due to temperature issues. All right, now your lead two cars of Tennis and Harmon, they start to pull away just a little bit from Ethan Jacobs. But Jacobs pulls right up on the back bumpers going into turn one. And just like that, Pascarella pulls back up next to them as well. And don't look now, but the fifth place car of uh, Pan Panizia also coming in to start to catch those front four cars. Yeah, he is definitely closing things down. That last time by was almost four tenths of a second faster than the pack in front. And that flat out motorsports car continues uh, a pretty blistering pace uh, here now only about four car lengths off that I would think, Brian, that uh, by the time they get up to South, or, uh, not to South Bend, but at least to Oak Tree, Pasco, uh, pardon me, Pananizia should be right in the thick of that battle. Greg, if this is a four or five car battle going into the final couple of laps, I'm going to have to pop another blood pressure pill here because <laughs> I don't know that I can handle the excitement that we're about that. to see coming up here. <laughs> Tennis doing a good job of keeping Harbin, Jacobs, and Pascarella behind him. And Panizia doing a good job of working his way back up to the rear bumper of that fourth place car. Now those front three cars pulling away just a little bit. It's it's a very accordion type effect, Greg. You look like they're pulling away, and then a half a lap later, it looks like they're right back together again. So certainly the front cars are handling certain parts of the racetrack a little bit better than the, the cars in fourth and uh, uh, fourth and fifth. You know, Burn, I don't know if it's, the, it's that they're handling it as you know better or worse. I think it's more a question of handling it differently. I think what we're seeing, wow. um, not so not so much from Panicchio, who's still trying to catch up, but from uh, uh, certainly with Pascarella, I think he's getting into the brakes a little bit softer, a little bit earlier, trying to carry more exit speed down the roller coaster to get back up to the rear of these cars rather than trying to push a little bit deeper into the braking zone. So we'll, we'll continue to watch that because you see that, uh, that that car, the 195 machine, he's right back there uh, to the back of the cars just ahead. And frankly, Panizia, he is there as well. Now we might want to watch Will Robinson in the 115 car. He is in that, uh, that bridge uh, between uh, 
between Panicia, then Gruber, Borden, and Austin Hill. As, uh, Borden has gotten around the Hill car as well. And we can see here are those three cars, uh, Gruber, Borden, and Hill, they're all getting very loose through some of the uh, the tighter sections of this track. Uh, we may see uh, we may see Eric Grimm with a good advantage here as we're still watching this debris up uh, coming out of 14 and the 15 at the roller coaster. And it appears as we're taking a look here, there's uh, actually another piece of plastic or something there in the roller coaster uh, beyond and different from that fender liner that we saw earlier. So we'll keep watching that. Just saw some debris fly off over on the outside of South Bend. So uh, pieces, parts are a fly in here, Brian, at VIR. That's right. Now that Panizzi has caught Pasquarella, he does not want to sit back there in fifth place. He knows time is running out. If he is quicker, or at least as quick as the cars up front, he's got no chance to get them if he doesn't get around those three cars of Pasquarella and Jacob. So he's going to be all over that opportunity if it does if it does present itself. Oh, and, and we've there got he a, goes. Yep. And a change there at the back, Brian, as they come up. As uh, as we have Pascarella losing a position to Marcelo Paniccia, the uh, Flat Out Motorsports car now moving up into uh, fourth position, move Pascarella back to fifth at the back of the train. That's right. That makes Panacea's now his next target is Ethan Jacobs. If he wants a podium position, that's who he has to get. And it's been a great run for Panizia here in the middle portion of this race. Four laps to go now to get to the checkered flag. Yeah, that six car is absolutely, someone in the chat said that six car is on a mission and it certainly looks to be the case. those five cars going through four heading towards turn five you know it's and they've made all these moves of absolutely clean and respectful racing here through the first 10 laps of this race all of these drivers doing just a fantastic job of, of basically leading the way here Little wheel off there, going through the climbing S's, but no harm, no foul. They keep pushing on through here. We'll see if Panizia tries to make a move here going into Oak Tree. This is an area where he stuck his nose in last time. Not close enough this time. It doesn't look like it. Oh, and running oh, wide, Michael Tennis into the off. dirt. Is that tennis? Out of, that was Tennis coming out of turn 11, drops oh. a wheel. He now falls back. He's side by side with Panizia in the in the battle for fourth position, that's going to move the one of Noah Harmon back into the lead. It's going to move Ethan Jacobs up to second. Yeah, and th that does keep uh, that does keep Tennis in the right spot going up here into this left-hander. If he can hold on, he might be able to continue to stay in that third-place position. But now the Carpenici is in the right spot coming into the right-hander, and I believe that's Tennis going off there on the left. That is tennis that went off, and that is also the 195. And we have a number of drivers going off there, Brian. I think we've got some some fluid or something. Is many many oh, cars lots are of spinning cars off. going yes. off right now? Boy, this is and there is this is the oil of... on the track. And oddly, I think the only driver to make it through there safely was Aiden Coleman with the uh, the nose of his car all covered up. But lots of fluid well, that, down on the track is the call for the quarter station at the top of the roller coaster. Well, and all of those cars except for one looks like they've been able to continue. We'll see if that other car is able to get going. And it is now continuing as well. But we have more cars sliding off the racetrack there. They just don't have an idea that the oil is there or how much is there. This is certainly reminiscent of turn six during the runoffs at Road Atlanta back in the 80s. All right, Brian, let's jump back for now as we've got a local caution and debris flag up at 14 at the uh, as we are still green around the rest of the course. Our leaders coming through Snake with Harmon, Jacobs, and Panicia, your top three. And then Rocco Pascarella in the white number 195 car, a long distance back as he went for a ride through the grass. He is now sitting at very distant fourth. 
Now the big question, Greg, will Harmon, Jacobs, and Panizia be able to get through that section of racetrack cleanly? Who is going to be able to negotiate that best? That is going to be a big decision-making process, a big part of how we figure out who wins this race. This time by is going to be three laps or two laps to go. Right now it's Harmon, Jacobs, and Panizia. Here we come up the hill now. They should be hitting into 13, 14 just in a couple of seconds. And this is getting into that section. Oh, a pass for the lead here. That is Jacobs trying to get around Harmon. Let's see if they get through safely. And all no, three, all three, three of them go of off, the Brian. cars go off. All That's going to open the door for uh, Pascarella, Pascarella, possibly. If he can get that car woe down, there's Pascarella still on course. And our leaders, there is the 199 of Jacobs. He rejoins. Noah Harmon rejoins as well. And that is now going to move. That is going to move then Panizia over to third as we are now going to not only a full course caution, but a black flag, Brian, black flag. So they're going to bring all of the cars down the pit lane, but we are under full course caution now here at VIR. Full course caution and the black flag, which means they're going to probably get them on the pit lane, try to clean that up and maybe give us a restart so that we can have one more last lap dash to the finish in Spec oh MX-5. Wow, that's gonna be <laughs> that's gonna be fun and a little bit crazy, is my guess. Well, I'll tell you, the number 60 car, he's he's going about 10 miles an hour down the uh, the, the pit lane, and that still isn't enough to get those brake markers off the front of his machine huh. uh, as uh, uh, as he comes to a stop. And oh, yep, there we go. The uh, And we're looking to see if the pit workers are allowed to pull it off under black flag conditions. Technically, nobody's allowed to work on the cars. So uh, they actually are leaving it on the front of the car as it's stuck there and wedged in. It can't come off. But uh, the rest of our drivers now coming down the pit lane. Brian, why don't we quickly reset the field here? And, you know, Because the other part of this is it's going to take a little bit of time, I think, for our pit lane workers to probably regrid, not regrid, but reorder uh, the drivers as they're here on the pit lane. Uh, it's Ethan Jacobs out of Oshkosh, Wisconsin. He is your current leader. He was your pole sitter today. He took the win yesterday. Noah Harmon currently running second. Marcelo Panizia, who started this race in 10th position. He is currently in, in third. Rocco Pascarella, he is in fourth. Michael Borden, fifth. Austin Hill, sixth. Camden Gruber, who started off on the front row today. He is in seventh. Aiden Coleman who is the, the first car in the line here on the pit lane. He's the one, as we said, with that uh, board in the nose. He is eighth. Aaron Wilhelm, ninth. Will Lucas is currently sitting 10th. All right, so they're going to bring them down to pit lane, get them stopped, clean up this oil. Or whatever it could be coolant too and that would actually probably be the best uh the best problem to have because that's a little easier to clean up right well and well, there really shouldn't be any coolant actually all these cars should be just running, running water, water right correct maybe yeah. a little water wetter in it yeah that's i mean that's a tiny little essentially dish soap and usually right. only a it's couple of, and usually only a couple of ounces at most uh, in the uh, the cooling system of some of these cars in order to keep the temperatures down uh, on the cars. But yes, uh, when you race in the SCCA, you should not be using the regular antifreeze, you know, or 50-50 mix. You should be running straight water uh, in these cars. So again, we've got all of our racers now coming down the pit lane, and we are getting word. It, it sounds, Brian, as if uh, it sounds as though we are probably going to be checkering this race Okay. Yeah, checkered flag is going to be displayed on the starter stand. And, of course, since we had a black flag, we would roll back to the last completed lap. And which I believe what we are showing on our timing and scoring right now should be correct. Well, if that is the case, and this is how it's going to end... 
That's going to put Ethan Jacobs, Noah Harmon, and Marcello Panizia as your first three cars. That would mean Ethan Jacobs is going to take his second win of the weekend if that's how it pans out here. Rocco Pascarella sitting in fourth at the moment. Michael Borden, fifth. Austin Hill, sixth. Camden Gruber, who was in second place yesterday, is now in uh, seventh place at the moment. And there you see the entire field heading into pit lane or heading into the paddock. That is as clear an indication as we're going to get that this race is over. Of course, the results that I just said are provisional. They may uh, find uh, they may go back and adjust at some point in time. But uh, so that would be the provisional rundown at this point in time, Greg. That is, I think, the way things are going to uh, end up. Now, Brian, let's do this. Uh, and I know we haven't brought this schedule up all weekend long. <laughs> let's bring up the schedule so our viewers know when we are next on the air here on the SEC official ch YouTube channel. And uh, there we go. Next up, it is, what, two weeks from today, or, well, two yep. weeks from yesterday, going to be heading right. to beautiful Hallett Motor Racing Circuit uh, in Jennings, Oklahoma, a beautiful, I think, one of the quintessential club tracks in America. It's yes. about two miles, ten turns, and uh, it, the racing there is always so amazing. And then, of course, once we get into May, uh, next couple of events, Portland International Raceway and the Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course before we wrap things up with Watkins Glen and the Chicago region WeatherTech June Sprints at Road America. I had no idea what to expect last year, Greg, when I went to Hallett. It was my first time there, and it is just a ton of fun. The people there, fantastic to work with. Some of the best uh, trackside food you'll get at a racetrack. Love the family that runs the, the concession stand there. Just a whole lot of club racing fun there at Hallett. All right. So for everybody here, hey, Brian, why don't, we, why don't we go run down? Of course, we want to thank our uh, great hosts here uh, at the track, the North Carolina region of the SCCA. We want to thank, uh, of course, Ryan Bauer, our director. We want to thank Brendan Kazmarek, our producer from Driver's Eye Live. And uh, we want to thank... Uh, the many folks here from the Sports Car Club of America that help us put on these events and these broadcasts for you. And uh, we can't wait to see you in just a couple weeks. You know what? We should also thank all of our families who let us go yes. away and do these races. It's a lot of time away from home. Yeah. And uh, for and, and even though you and I split the races, you know, we, we, we got to have the cooperation of all the people who, who love us to let us do what we love right. to do. So I, I don't know. Some people want to kick me out of the house every couple of weeks anyhow. So it works out actually pretty well for <laughs> on this end. And, and, Brian, let's not forget our associate producers. Now, I know we did not mention, Brian, um, who are – how, who our associate producer of the week is. Yeah. Um, let me go through it. I, do you have any suggestions? Because there's uh, been a bunch of good ones in there, here this There weekend. have been a huge number of them here this weekend. And I would... Uh, I'm I thinking would, Nicole Cooper? Yeah, I, I was going to say I would uh, I would look to Nicole Cooper Cephalo. Although, you know, I don't yep. know. You know, uh, and heck, we could actually give the prize to Mark Suffalo before he ever leaves the track here this weekend. But yes, I think the Cole Cooper <laughs> Suffalo uh, would be a very worthy recipient of our award this week. We'll uh, we'll hook up with her and Mark and uh, get them their award. Absolutely. All right. Anything else before we we say goodbye, Greg? Hey, I you know every time you say that, I think of singing with the Mickey Mouse song at the end. Uh, but uh, no, <laughs> let's uh, let's wrap Be things up. Be real soon. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> let's wrap things up here, Brian, and we'll see everybody in just a couple weeks from Jennings, Oklahoma, and Hallett Motor Racing Circuit. Thank you for joining us this weekend, and we'll see you soon.